All right, guys, let's get this party started here. Uh, we got. Hey, listen, it's it's never it's never a good month unless we get an Ethan video drop. <laughs> <laughs> we're at a little bit of a lull. We actually just uh, got through the fresh and fit stuff. That was funny. But like, you know what? Now it's a little bit of a lull day. Uh, we're going to do this um, documentary from King of Nothing, exposing Ethan Klein, the biggest fraud on YouTube. I'm going to be real with you. I don't know what else is there's left to expose. I mean, like, you know, we're all flawed individuals. You know, we've all we've all have flaws. Ethan, of course, as well. Uh, I feel like, but like, you know what? I'm always down for a reminder. Why not? You know, it is interesting, I will say. Sometimes it could probably be very frustrating as a, a very large content creator. Um, where, like, all the all your old deeds of the past keep getting re-brought up over and over and over and over again. It's a little interesting. <clears throat> I know I've made some mistakes and I'd probably be, like, I'd be rolling my eyes. But you know what? Let's have some fun. This beat is sick. I want to take a ride on this disco stick. Thank you so much, Darky Sharky, for the $2. Our tribal chief lost on Sunday at WrestleMania. Yeah, because Roman Reigns sucks. Okay, let's go. You've probably already. Chances are, you've probably already seen tons of YouTubers calling Ethan out over the. Oh, am I in there? Years. I'm sure you've seen people calling him a hypocrite, hypocrite. A liar, a liar, a manipulator, etc. But to be honest, I don't think many YouTubers, if anyone, have ever fully encapsulated the sheer quantities of toxicity, hate, and hypocrisy that I'm about to show you. Dude, um, you are literally based alert. Empty inside. You are. Dude, you're the ugliest dude I've ever seen. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. I'm not Damn. Is that Ethan or is that Tipster? Want to believe you should transition to someone that doesn't look so fucking ugly. That's what a loser you are. You're so unappealing, disgusting, inside out, most vile, disgusting person you've probably ever walked this earth. I mean, with all due respect, uh, you're gonna die alone. Dude, you're gonna die. It depends on who he's talking about. Here's my thing. I like to think I'm a nice guy, and I don't like to make fun of people unless they're bad people. <laughs> unless they're bad people. Um, and like you, your pearls, whose entire content centralizes around bullying women. Then I feel like I could I could be a little toxic, you know. So it depends on who he's referring to. You know? I alone with job and family. I mean, that's sad, bro. One of the most embarrassing human beings uh, ever. You are the most unfuckable, repulsive creature. Sad. You are a vile slime of a human that nobody will ever want you. Oh, my. Sheesh. Is that Kermit the Frog? And despite this blatantly vindictive and mm -hmm. at times egregious behavior mm -hmm. that he records himself doing, Ethan often tries to claim that he's a completely different person than how he acts. I'm, I'm constantly uh, maturing and growing and trying to do better. It I mean, that's probably generally true. You know, I'm still a little immature sometimes, but I'm I'm trying I'm constantly trying to grow and be better. You know, maybe you think that he hasn't. That's fine, but okay. You know, but I've been quite patient with this guy, and to be honest, the man is only getting worse and worse uh -huh. as time goes on. You see, over the years, Ethan I feel like he's getting a little better. I feel like he he got worse, and then he's starting to get a little better. I feel like, especially after the Hassan arc, I'm not saying everything's perfect. He still has this weird thing with Mr. Beast and Abba and Preach. I don't like that, but outside of that, I don't know. Sometimes I enjoy him. I'm not gonna lie. You know, has somehow managed to go from one of the most well respected creators on. Hey, thank you so much, Jonathan. Parentheses, Jonathan, for the small gut. Thank you. On the entire platform to subjective internet bad guy to a straight up scam artist. Gambling is such a fucking venomous, it's just scam such a toxic, poisonous activity. What's the scam artist thing? Today's episode is sponsored by DraftKings. Thank you to them. He put out the NFT as all scammers and cons have been doing lately. So it's I don't know why people put NFTs. I just took a picture of them and I own them. The Vape God token and the Vape Nation uh, NFT one of one. Bro, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. As you could probably tell, Ethan is not exactly a man of principle. He's a man of profit and personal <clears throat> gain, and he'll do and say just about anything to get what he wants. It's hard to explain just what a existential threat this guy is to people he hates. Okay. And that's why I talk about him so much is because he thrives on bullying people. And who is he talking about? And like destroying people's lives. But I'd argue because I mean, he might. I mean, depending on who it is, he might be right. You that the real scam is in the way that he acts. Uh. For example, Ethan has been pretending to be a left-wing political commentator since 2016. Yet when he was recently asked to list one good thing that Obama did in office, Ethan immediately drone strikes. Drone strikes. Forgot how to speak English. Personally, I think Obama was a great president. What do you think no, about you're that? You're playing. <laughs> this conversation was wild. No, he did a lot of great things. He and talk about hope. He gave people lots of hope. What did he do that was great? I say Obamacare. It was rough. Let me tell you, it was rough. But I think it was a step in the right direction. You know, you you, you never you never uh, you never bet a thousand. I don't even know what that is. I don't like baseball. I'm, I'm a, I don't have a father. But you know, you never you're never like instantaneously uh, <clears throat> get it right. Okay, so I give him a little break on a little breaky poo. Uh, some would say. On that what one. do you do those? <laughs> he was chill.
So although Ethan tries to present- I don't think that that shows that he was- <laughs> I don't think that that shows that he's like dishonest or anything. I think that just shows he has- <laughs> he's just saying Obama good. Um, because he was a progressive, maybe, but I, okay. Oh. himself as authentic. The reality is actually quite different. <laughs> I've never actually, been more this. honest. Mm -hmm. I've never been more authentic. I yeah, buddy, and I'm a billionaire. Less, uh, He's actually less. never been less honest and less authentic. I mean, just think of everything that your least favorite YouTuber has done and multiply that by 10, and we have Jeez. Ethan Klein. From exploiting his own friends for Maybe. financial gain and social credit to making fun of others for the loss of their loved ones to starting a political po what the hell? podcast with the second biggest fraud in all of American politics. Pretty based on that one, pretty based on that one. Only beyond himself, of course, to running one of the most unethical businesses on all of YouTube, to scamming his fans, Damn. and criticizing others for all of the exact same things. Some big claims, man. I'm excited for this video. He does. I could go on for days here. Because I got a f***ing files on top of files. To put it frankly, oh, Ethan shit. has become a problem. A problem that I now have to deal with. Ready? Oh, shit. Run from it. Destiny arrives all the same. This guy's a hero. This guy's the hero of his own story. I'm ready for it. It's time for me to step in. Oh, no, it's here. Oh, wait. What should I say? I am. I am come. What we do here is go back, 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 back. I am come. The old H3, baby. In order for us to fully understand Ethan's fall from grace, we have to first understand who Ethan is, or more importantly, who he was. Okay. Yes, we live in Israel. Uh, yes, we're Jewish, you fucking bigots. We're not religious people, okay? We're not political people. We're just some dudes who, you know, want to make funny videos, man. In early 2013, Ethan and Hila started posting videos to their YouTube channel, H3H3 Productions. Initially focused- Oh, because it's like laughing. Hee <laughs> hee. Thing on YouTube poop style videos. Mm. Cover all 9,000 face butt. Aerate it. Warm it up. Dip. Grab it up. Dip. Dip that taco. That cream. Nice. Syrup vanilla. Nice. Dip. 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 Obviously, that wasn't exactly the most sustainable type of content to produce. So in 2014, yeah, you got to go through those content experimenting, ex experimenting, ex damn it, experiment phases. Okay, I feel stupid. They started making their signature reaction videos. And while I understand reaction channels get a bad rap nowadays, Ethan and Hila weren't just regular reaction YouTubers. Hey, listen, I'm a conversational reactor, okay? I, 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 all right, guys, all right. I'm not just a bad reactor. Their videos were unique, with Ela behind the camera and Ethan as the on-screen talent. And together as a team, it almost seemed like these two were unstoppable. Women, you know, do feel the cold more than men. And That's true. Women do feel cold more than men. That's why women are annoying. Because women always want things to be a little colder than guys. You know, guys are just warm-blooded. Maybe women should get some more testosterone. Maybe I should stop dating women and just date a fucking dude. Maybe I should do that. Kidding, right? Uh, come on, this isn't on the news, really, right? I mean, this she's not she's not serious, right? This is happening. That women, you know, do feel oh, cold really more than men. Really really I mean, I feel like women really do feel cold more than men. Like women are colder than guys. I think that the average temperature in an office for a woman is like sixty nine degrees, <coughs> and then the average for a man is like seventy two degrees. No, it's the other way around. Men like it a little colder. Is my point because we can handle the cold a little better. Fact. And most importantly, fact. Ethan was Sorry. rational, nice, Idiot. and humble. I want to support you both directly. Start Patreon, please. Thank you so much, Dakota. Appreciate you. We, we're, just, we're so mixed feelings on Patreon because I don't even describe it. We just, like, we're not poor. I feel like starting a Patreon is insinuates some way that we're poor. And so I, I, we would rather you guys support other people who aren't. Like, we're making way less money than we used to, but still, we're not poor. So I would find other YouTube channels that are struggling to make ends meet. And, and so oh, that must have been through the apocalypse or something. Them. It feels selfish to open a Patreon. What I mean. And by 2016, they had surpassed a million subscribers, and Ethan established himself uh, as a voice of reason within billion. the YouTube community. From exposing uh, CSGO Lotto for the absolute scam that it was, uh, to raising money for Humongous' cancer diagnosis, to giving Ken Bone a platform to share his story, to the- Humongous, baby. Fucking crazy times. Matt Hoss lawsuit where they certified fair use as a matter of law in the US. Ethan did a lot for the commentary community back in the day. And people in general Ethan Ethan walked so I could still walk because I'm obese. Loved him for it. Let's be fair. No one likes so Antoni on the internet. And H3H3 seems to be this demigod that's descended from the heavens sharing his fupa with everyone. So everyone praise the fupa, please. Even when it came to politics, Ethan had this incredible ability to stay calm, cool, and collected about extremely divisive issues. Stop thinking about everyone as the devil, okay? The person on the left side from you, they are the devil. And on the right side, they're just as human as you are. I promise. That's not true. Hassan told me that's not true. They that's have not true. a reason. That's not true for thinking and feeling the way they do. Maybe. That's probably true, for the most part. I like to think that most of the time when people disagree with me, which means that they're wrong, because I'm always right and you're stupid. 
uh, that it's just that we all just come from a different place. You know what I mean? We all come from a different background and different understanding. Words mean different things to people. That's why when I say the N-word, it's okay, because I don't mean it in a bad way. I'm just kidding. Baby, put down <laughs> your fucking pitchfork, okay? Lower your emotional shield. Damn. Don't get triggered and listen to them. But obviously bro. no one's perfect, and over time, the public's perception of Ethan started to deteriorate for reasons that almost no one could have predicted. In March of 2016, Ethan released the infamous Leafy Rant, which Ethan made in response to growing concerns within the YouTube community about content that was seen as bullying or exploitative of vulnerable individuals. I'm pretty sure that Leafy was a rare case that was exceptionally worse than Ethan. So even if there was some hypocrisies and like some of the ways that Ethan does stuff, like it's not going to be anywhere near Leafy. And Ethan had positioned himself as the voice of reason on on YouTube. So who better to make a video on Leafy than Ethan, right? So what happened? Leafy made a video about a guy like he usually does, calling him a fucking asshole, cringy, weirdo, you know, whatever, whatever, all the stuff he usually does. And it turns out that this guy is actually autistic and has a YouTube channel. He's based. The YouTuber. So essentially, he has made fun of someone who actually has a mental disability. And I mean, if you look at Leafy's channel, all he does is make fun of kids and like vulnerable people, like Joey's World Tour. There's no, there's no sport making fun of these people. They're just, it's just sad. I would assume most people didn't have any problem with the substance of the video itself, defending children and people. I have no idea, because with autism should be a um pretty clear-cut issue no it's not like even today it's not people give me shit because like there are people with intellectual and developmental disabilities on the internet a lot of lol cows which are not really good people let's just be real that engage poorly but they relentlessly bully these people to the point where like they get removed from their supports like people get upset when i talk about daniel larson i don't think he's a particularly good person this is a, a, a like a pretty high support needed individual with autism and schizophrenia that should be in a group home Will a group home setting be perfect for him? No. I understand that there's a lot of flaws in the, in the system because I understand the system uh, decently well. And my wife works in the system, right? But right now he's sitting here. He's walking around. He's harassing people. Um, and he's like harassing Grace Vanderwall, some girl he's obsessed with on the internet. And people bully him so much and they make him feel like think he's like they feed into his delusions. Like he thinks he's dating this girl. He thinks he's in like sc online school right now. You know, he went to an Olive Garden because he was told that she was going to meet him there and ended up harassing workers. And when you give pushback against like you shouldn't be doing that because it's just harming other people. They're like, oh, no, no, no. You're just defending a pedophile. It's like, OK, I don't know what to tell you. Like my, my take on him is that he needs to be taken off the street, put in a facility. Whether it's a group home setting or something more restrictive, but like people don't listen to that. And there's like an entire lol cow network of people who like, you know, go in on this. So like, no, it's not like fairly obvious you shouldn't bully people with like autism. It's actually, you know, um, it's just not. People have no underst like, understanding of these like issues in any real capacity. It's mostly young kids um, that want to like feel justified in bullying somebody. They don't really care about what like, the behavior that's going on. So, yeah. But the problem. Yeah, my wife works in the system. That's where we met, bro. The problem was the fact that Ethan was not exactly the right guy to be delivering that message. Oh, all he does is make fun of kids. Uh, okay, Ethan, you sure you want to make this point? Uh, you really the same in this matter? You really not a hypocrite with this? Clean cut. I wouldn't exactly call it clean cut. He's got the hair of a fucking six-year-old dude with a goddamn shitty toupee. To be fair to Ethan, that is a Lego haircut if I've ever seen one, and I can say that now that he's an adult, but that kid was like 14 when Ethan made fun of him for seven minutes straight in front of seven million people. And that kid, Timmy, actually ended up deleting that video after Ethan's video absolutely roasting him came out. Damn, that's fucked up, Ethan. It's fucked up, brother. Oh, so this wasn't exactly a good look for Ethan. And on top of that, Ethan also clearly stated that he and the person that he was currently criticizing at the time were friends. I'm actually friends with these guys, so it's awkward. It's uncomfortable. And that made him look even worse. Damn, you're friends with that guy? What the fuck? Worse in the eyes of the general public than he already did. Now, Ethan did later correct the record, and he said they were more friendly versus friends. Ethan, but we spoke privately. I told you privately, like, as this was happening. I was like, I seen it as a backstab. You literally called this dude his friends, and you said, well, we weren't really friends. We were friendly, but that's not what you said in your video. That's not what you publicly said. Uh, and you know, when Leafy says, when Leafy says, we are friends, we talk all the time, and he did this to me, you know, who am I going to believe? Yeah, it's fine. I f***ed myself. That video was bad. It was, it was, in a way, it's, it's, I don't blame you for, for, for thinking that. I, I f***ed up. It probably I wasn't that bad. I don't know. I wasn't in there at the time, right? I don't really care. Um, but it was probably one of those things where Ethan was engaging in some of the same behaviors he was criticizing, but Leafy was doing it to such a drastically disproportionate degree, right? Like, you had your Overton window of bullying autistic people on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> which is ever, which is ever shifting, and he he was probably within the Overton window of bullying people with disabilities, right? Um, whereas Leafy clearly is not. I mean, the guy, the, the you know, 
It's just clearly not, <laughs> but a situation a lot. Obviously, we all make mistakes, but if you watch the video without knowing the additional context, you would have just thought Ethan made a video publicly calling out his own friend for being a bully instead of just reaching out to him directly. And regardless of whether or not they were, uh, or what would I have done if he reached him out to him directly? Do you think he would have actually changed his behavior? Leafy's not going to change his entire content strategy because Ethan's like, hey, you're kind of a bully. I think he already knows. Weren't friends. Just a month or so before Ethan made that video criticizing Leafy, he was messing messaging him directly and glazing him about how incredible he is. Really? Now that's fucking pathetic, if that's true. A month ago, he literally said this to me. Happy for you blowing up. You got a unique style and personality, man. Yeah. You worked hard to get where you are, and you deserve it. And yeah, I was making the same... Oh, Pyro is riding their coattails? That's funny. That's actually pretty bad. What, what made Ethan come to this massive revelation that his content was bad? Or did he just glaze him for shits and giggles? Oh, it's a content creator I want to have an association with. Let me glaze the fuck out of this guy. <laughs> Thank you so much to the Tyler Jelly or Tyler Jelly Witch for the upgraded membership to Medium Gut. I appreciate that. Thank you. Exact videos when he sent me that, as I do now today. Nothing. Great moves, uh, Leafy. Great job. Thing about Leafy changed at all in that one month time period between when Ethan was telling him in writing how much he loved his videos and how he was the cancer of YouTube. If you thought he was the cancer of YouTube when Ethan made that video, you also thought the same thing when Ethan was telling him how great he was. Yeah, I wonder what the, the turning moment is. I mean, what was it that got to him? Was he just glazing him because he was another content creator in the sphere and he was doing well and he wanted to have like a positive rapport but really thought his content was shit? Or um, did something change that made him go like, oh, you know what? This content isn't good. I mean, either way, it's, you know, it's kind of interesting that it took you. You would flip so quickly. I don't know. That's, uh, that's a little bit of inconsistency. And Ethan's streak of turning on his friends continued in February of 2017 Dang. when the incident happened. What a fucking. Oh, yeah. The. Uh, the ball. We call this one the Baltimore Bridge situation. Wait. Wait, hold on. I don't think we should call it that. Oof. We're not gonna call we're not gonna call this situation the Baltimore Bridge situation, guys. That is not that is insensitive. I'm sorry about that. Bye -bye. Jeez, oh my god, what the fuck? And unlike the Leafy situation, PewDiePie and Ethan were actually friends at the time. So Ethan's response to his friend saying the N-word one time was quite shocking, to say the least. I don't think Felix is a racist person, but be honest, I suspect Ethan didn't look too much at Leafy's content when he glazed. Probably, but that's his problem for us, his fault for doing that. God damn Too soon, dude? He really kind of just was really comfortable using that word. Damn, that same. really just kind of like you're reaching for all these words, right? You're like, oh, let me just like a little and bump for you. I mean, I know this is a point a lot of people say, but it certainly seems like it's not the first time he's used that word in that context. I think it's gross. Yeah, on a personal level, I think it's gross. It's irresponsible and it's it's not cool. I mean, he's okay. he's he's 27 years old. At this point, he should know better than than. And beyond that, he's freaking cute. He's the biggest YouTuber. He represents all of us. He needs to be more responsible, especially after we all stuck our necks out to defend mm -hmm. him. Disappointing. <laughs> it's so weird. I think it's fine to be like, yeah, you know, definitely, definitely shouldn't have been saying that, man. Bad stuff. I know he's he's better than that. He could have left it there. But uh, I know Ethan's I, has been very comfortable using that word too. You can't you can't be that aggressive about like, uh, people using slurs when you you've used them publicly. You know what I mean? That's why, like, I have never used them publicly. But I'm an edgy guy. I used to use slurs. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not proud of it. So when I see people do it and I go, that's not good. But I'm not like morally outraged because like, you know, I know I'm not a bad person. I think, well, I don't, I hope I'm not. So I'm like, damn, you shouldn't be doing that. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So how I would describe my feelings on that one. Now, I totally understand what Ethan was trying to say there. At the end of the day, if you're one of the biggest YouTubers yeah. of all time, there's just no positives that can- It's so interesting though, because this happened so long ago. It's like, it's interesting, because I know that this the video tells a story, like, look at all the bad things he did until then, and now look at him now, and it's like, damn, you know? Come out of saying- But like, I feel like a lot of us have probably done less than stellar things, especially smaller content creators who don't have like a lot of eyes on them, which I've had the uh, benefit of being for the past like a year now or so. You know, and when you don't have as many eyes on you, you don't have as many people collecting all the bad things that you've done. <laughs> and it makes it a little bit easier <laughs> to fucking breathe, you know? The N word. I edge, I goon, I do it all. It can only ever hurt you. I mean, who in their right mind would ever want to make a video like this? I'm making this video to talk about the most regretful and shameful thing that I've ever had to talk about publicly. There's wow. a video that's out that's a compilation of me saying the N word. Damn. Oh, shit. 
But just like the leafy know. video, it wasn't necessarily oh. that Ethan was objectively wrong. It was the fact that one, PewDiePie was literally his friend at the time, and I think it's more than fair to be a tad bit yeah. biased. Whatever happened to uh, Robot Jones? <laughs> Post Malone. How come they're not friends anymore? towards your own friend and defend them as long as you're still being reasonable and two of all people to be delivering this message ethan is literally is this him doing blackface or is this him doing italian tan face the second last person on the entire planet who can speak out against excessive usage of the n-word is it racist to refer to black people as blacks because to the best of my uh, <laughs> knowledge the only other massive okay. youtuber who it's so interesting because ethan seems to go back and forth between wanting to be like a comedian and wanting to be like very progressive which I get it. I mean, I like jokes and stuff. I enjoy jokes too. But it's, uh, you know, sometimes it, <laughs> it's a little, you gotta, you gotta balance better. Who said the N-word on video more than Ethan is his friend, iDubs. And at one point, even he Say had to call friends in Paris. Calm Ethan down from using the N-word too much. I love that I can just say <laughs> your f it though. Yeah. Like, I feel like you're, you're using a little liberally. I love <laughs> saying <laughs> your f it. It's so wonderful. Oh my it's like, you think I'll leave her without them Doritos, dog? Nah, fool. You ain't holding down shit. Nigga broke. You ashy as fuck. So to anyone who wasn't swayed by the leafy video, I think the PewDiePie situation clearly yeah, exemplified to everyone exactly how dishonest Ethan truly really so is low, because low. of how quickly he was willing to switch up on those that he knows for views and social credit. So he's a uh, maybe. I mean, it might be a dishonesty thing. It might be... Um... I don't... It could be. I'm not saying it's not. It also might just be like an idiot thing. Like, he might have gotten to the point where he's like, yeah, uh, that was bad. I wish I didn't do that. But I know I'm not a bad person. But then not connecting his behavior and the words he was saying in the past to the behavior of, like, his friends, which is extraordinarily emotionally unintelligent. Like, as somebody who uses bad words, you should be more empathetic to people who use them and be like, yeah, that doesn't instantly make you a bad person. I've done that before. Right? So that's really where I would... I mean, again, it's, it could be either of them. You know? Hey, cool. Now, these two situations... Ethan has said Post Malone's too busy to talk to him. It's more than that. There's a reason that they're not friends anymore. Uh, let's just be real. Actually ended up doing... Post Malone misses the old Ethan. He probably sits there and cries while he watches old Ethan videos. That's why Post Malone's like doing drugs or something now. He looks like he's fucked up. Severe damage to Ethan's reputation in the grand scheme of things. Because these events highlight a massive issue with Ethan's character. You see, Ethan has this incredible habit of pulling the ladder up behind him. He glazed Leafy in private, told him how great he was in writing, and then he turned okay. around and made a hit piece on the guy strictly because uh, he felt it would be profitable. It wasn't a hit piece but yeah but no, no you're right uh, yeah and socially acceptable to do so he befriended pewdiepie and collaborated with him and literally has made tens of thousands of dollars as a direct result of their friendship then the same second felix started getting pushback ethan was the first one to criticize him front runners meaning when things are going great we all in it when things are going bad they pull apart. The fact of the matter is, Ethan is a like self-serving, opportunistic man, and he has always been that way from day one. Damn, he looks at is this, an Chad, is this anti-Semitic? My fucking hairline anti-Semitic? Here's the river and here's the sea. This is all free right now, dude. Holy shit, dude, my fucking hairline's wild. Every situation only through the lens as to how he can use it to benefit himself rather than looking at things through the perspectives of others. And the signs have always been there. Ethan is the exact type of guy to say, it was okay for me to do X, Y, and Z at that time, but it's certainly not okay for you to do that exact same thing now. Women are in a nature setting, like, to be conquered. Incredible. Ethan was 32. It's a little rough. I, th I, th I think that women do tend to take more of a back seat, we'll say, in relationships. Um... You know, but they want to. You know, a woman wants to find a good man who can who can keep uh, that'll check in with her, make sure she's comfortable and happy, and, and uh, lead the way. But also, she doesn't want to get steamrolled, right? My wife—that's uh, a kind of dynamic I have with my wife. But she definitely lets me know when she's <laughs> unhappy. So that's the good thing you got to keep in mind. When that was reported, <clears throat> but I'm dominated. That's a little rough. 24 now, and if I said those exact same words on a podcast in the exact same tone, this is what Ethan would say. This is just misogynistic, just fucking trash. Yeah, true, but I, I mean, for that one specifically, he might show more context. For that one specifically, um, I mean, time has moved on in general. I think people's understandings of like that way, like, relationship dynamics are healthier and better. Him saying that doesn't mean that like he would do that. He was like, oh, women are meant to be conquered. But then, like, what was his relationship like with Etha, with um, with Hila? They, he was not fucking. He's not conquering Hila. Let's be real, okay? Ethan's a fucking pussy. So I think that was more of like that Overton window. Like that was like an acceptable thing to say, and uh, not a particularly intelligent thing to think. Um, but now I think we know a little better than that. 
just trash. A perfect example of Ethan pulling up the ladder behind him is his Hold relationship with Team Star. Oh. I'm more than gay. I'm. I'm bestiality. Now, not, the, not exactly the best representation of uh, somebody on the internet there. I want to make this clear. These two were never friends or anything, but they were, in fact, peers. And in 2017, sure. Ethan brought him onto his show. As I one think he was very cordial, though. And then after the thing was over, he got pushed back from his audience. So he like had to feel he felt like he had to like man up on it, which was obviously wrong. Of his first guests ever. One of my questions for you is how do you can afford all this shit? What? Because you were driving like fucking fancy ass cars all the time. You got this big, beautiful house. I'm like, how oh, this motherfucking G-Fuel ass drink can afford all this shit? Like, I know G-Fuel doesn't pay that well. Goddamn. They, they take care. Me, they're good. <laughs> well, I never see what that, that G Fuel has. And it's a great energy drink. Check it out, Koki. <laughs> they had a reasonably normal conversation despite some disagreements, but the real issues began to arise after the podcast was released. I did the H3H3 H3 podcast. It was good. I mean, he was really nice in person. Like, I had a good time. Uh, I thought it was fing great. I had no problems whatsoever. And then when he uploaded the podcast today, he left this comment that said, I understand a lot of you do not like Keemstar, but that's why we had him on the show. It's good to have conflicting views and opinions. Hate him all you want. We do too, but he's an interesting character, and that's what this show is about. God bless. Yeah, if he had just if he had just left out the we do too, that probably would have been fine. You know, I think everything else was fine except for that because it comes like that's one thing is that it, it like that sensitivity to criticism of like uh, you know you're gonna instant, it seems like you'd instantly flip because people got upset with you. You know, that seems to be the problem. And, uh, you know, it might look good in the short run for you. Well, here's the problem. There's multiple problems with doing that. Number one, um, it probably it, it probably feels and looks good in the short run for you because you're like, oh, now people will stop breathing down my neck. But there's a couple problems with that. Problem number one is now you're telling your audience that you will fold any time that they criticize you. Um, and you just can't do that. Like, you really cannot do that. There's going to be times when you're wrong. There's times when I'm wrong. I don't admit it. Um not because, like, first of all, like, I'll take information in and then, like, I'll take time to, like, listen to it. And I don't change my mind until I actually feel like I'm wrong. But then when I do that, I don't make a big deal out of announcing it. I might be in another video and be like, yeah, I've uh, changed my mind on this thing. I don't make it a, vi a big spectacle. I don't make it a big response. I'm not responding to you. Your pressure didn't change my mind. I, I listened to what you had to say and then I changed my mind myself, right? So there's you have to you have to operate carefully when it comes to doing stuff like that. But then, too, like, you're obviously going to communicate to other creators, even people who don't like Keemstar. That you're not somebody um, who is like reliable when it comes to like talking to them. You know, you could show up and you don't really know what's going to happen. And then in the aftermath, you know, you might instantaneously be like, oh, fuck this guy. <clears throat> so for somebody who might be more controversial, they're going to be less comfortable coming on and having a conversation with you. Um, because they're going to feel like you're just going to kind of dumpster. You're going to be, you know, you're going to, you're going to be like, fuck you. The second that it ends, the energy of the podcast is going to shift dramatically after it's over. And like now you're going to be an asshole to the person. So, oh, you fucking, okay. Yeah, so. the whole. That's true though. I'm never wrong. That's true. We do too. Like they hate me. Like what the fuck? If you hate someone, you should not need to make a comment clarifying that you hate your guest. Well, if you hate somebody, then you shouldn't be acting like it's. You should act cordial on like a podcast setting, and you should act like respectful and mature. But like they sounded like the questions. Like, I mean, if you're gonna glaze the guy, it's not exactly what's happening, is it? Because you got. You seem to. You're communicating that you like the guy an ounce of pushback. You should tell them right to their uh, face and make it abundantly clear. Realistically, what was Keem gonna do? Punch him? No, it's a podcast meant for entertainment purposes. You're supposed to communicate with the other person. His fragile little clown heart was hurt when we did the podcast and then I said afterwards in a comment that I hated him. Yes, that's a totally reasonable thing to be upset about. So one thing is for certain, Ethan is a snake for this and so yet again, snake. he is 110% at fault here. And as a result of Ethan being so objectively wrong in this situation, uh. these two clowns then decided to to have a half a decade long internet beef, which ended up culminating in Ethan releasing the infamous content nuke yeah, on Keemstar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't and he try to go after his sponsors or something? In that video, he specifically made sure to mention Keemstar's sponsor, G Fuel, on more than five separate occasions. How would G Fuel still sponsor this guy, by the way? G Fuel brought to you by false pedophilia accusations. Ah, shut it, G Fuel. Get it now. Yeah, I don't really care about this. I don't really understand why people are like all up in arms about this. Um, you know, if your sponsor, uh, if somebody's sponsoring you, and they get wind of a behavior that you're still engaging in or, you know, or were, were, you know, you were engaging in and they decide to drop you. I don't really care. Maybe I just don't get it. I also like never have gotten sponsors really. So I don't really care about the sacred nature of sponsors. You know, that in general though, you know what I mean? Like if you have a company that likes trans people or something, let's say, and then they, they're sponsoring somebody, but it turns out that that person fucking hates trans people and they didn't want to sponsor them anymore. I don't see the issue there. Um, I guess it toes the line of like cancel culture and the idea of like weaponizing cancellations for somebody. I get that. 
I understand. Be like, oh, look, they like this thing. So like, oh, you know. But also as a business, like I would be pretty, uh, I'd want to make sure I was, you know, I wasn't uh, sponsoring somebody that had like views I didn't agree with. Oh, at G Fuel. But maybe, I mean, maybe I just don't get it, honestly. Uh, also sponsored by G Fuel. Use code GAMING for 10% off of your life. Expenses. The Ethan Law sponsors too. Yeah, good. You know, whatever. G Fuel apparently blah, blah, blah your whole history when they decided to sponsor you. Brought to you by Dr. Daniel Keepstein. Sponsored by Daniel G Fuel. Ethan is one of the what biggest. Say? Whole history when they decided to sponsor you. Brought to you by. Real talk, if you suffer from panic attacks and you're old enough to drink, the best way to stop a panic attack real quick is have a sip of beer. You only need three sips. Oh, okay. Whatever. I don't know. Maybe that's true. <laughs> I don't know. It seems like a little weird advice, but okay. By Dr. Daniel Keepstein. Sponsored by G Fuel. Ethan is one of the biggest YouTubers of all time, and by attacking Keem's sponsor in the very obvious way that he did, he single-handedly set the precedent that it's totally okay to attack the sponsors of any content creator as long as you're beefing with them. And because this is Ethan Klein we're talking about, he did that while simultaneously saying that he was against doing exactly what he was doing. Let me address this head on. I am not someone that supports going after somebody's sponsors to try to cancel them for something bad they've said. G Fuel is as much a part of Keemstar's identity as his beard. He has it on his head in every video. He's got it on the desk in every video. It's very much a part of his identity. How am I supposed to criticize Keemstar and not address the fact that, that G Fuel is on his desk at every time? In, in, in the hurricane of destruction, there's always G Fuel sitting there on his desk. How yeah, that seems like a, you know, it's one thing if he was just going to be like, no, nah, fuck it. I don't care. That would have been fine. But yeah, this seems like a... <laughs> It seems like he's trying to appeal. This is this is what it seems like because a lot of people get upset about this targeting of of, of uh, you know sponsorships and stuff in the community. And it sounds more than anything else like he's trying to appeal to the community too. He's like, no, no, I want to go after this guy's money and his sponsor, but I also want you in the community to feel okay with it. <laughs> so this one's different, guys. This one's different. It's not the same. Stop. I'm not you supposed know? to talk about that. How are you supposed to not talk about G Fuel? Well, that luckily, I don't think anyone can answer that question better than me. Well, you could just not talk about it. I've literally made a 45-minute video Damn. criticizing Keemstar extensively. And there That's fucking weird, dude. I'm there's kidding. not a single mention of G Fuel <laughs> in that video. I can tell you from first-hand experience, it's actually pretty easy to criticize someone and not mention their sponsors in a way that was clearly done with the intention of having your fans attack their sponsors. And Ethan's fans did attack. I even found this post from their subreddit. From that's, yeah, that's the truth too. It's one thing to point it out. It's another thing that you're, uh, you know, uh, indirectly telling your fans to go fucking nanny this person. Back then, and it specifically says it worked with G Fuel, so it'll probably work with Spotify. Everyone spam them. Yeah. Oh, what the fuck? What? <laughs> he says it worked with G Fuel, so it'll uh, probably work with Spotify. Everyone spam them. Oh, okay. I thought that was Ethan saying. It was that Ethan wasn't saying that? Right? It was like a yeah. fan, I guess. He says. That? Ethan's fans did attack. I even found this post from their subreddit from back then, and it specifically says it worked with G Fuel. Oh, it's just his fans that said it. Okay, I thought he said that for a second. So it'll probably work with Spotify. Everyone spam them. Yeah, Keemstar's done a ton of fucked up shit that definitely deserves consequences, but taking it into your hands is like the arbiter of justice to spam his advertisers to get him to drop them. You, you don't see how that could be used against you? When you're the guy who needs to attack other people's sponsors instead of simply just making good arguments, of course, you're going to at one point or another. Thank you for the $2, Michael Anderson. First time in the stream. Is that a new couch? Yeah, we just got it in today, man. That's why I'm streaming so late. Other, get a taste of your own medicine. Uh, today we are sponsored. We have no sponsors. No sponsors today. It's a sad day. It's a sad month. Damn, hey. I guess he learned that one the hard way, you know? Learned that one the hard way. Hey, podcast. We have no sponsors today, so we have no sponsors today. Because they're heartless. Today we have no sponsors because uh, I am an existential threat to uh, gay rights and all progress. So damn, he looks terrible there. Good, well, of course. good for him for losing some weight. Me too. But I'm I'm getting there. All right, we're off our insulin, baby. We're off our insulin. Our wonderful uh, fans have taken <coughs> themselves to our sponsors and uh, to have them uh, can't uh, not sponsor or not to uh, support us. So we'd have no sponsors. So we haven't sponsored in like two weeks. I know. I think oh, the left and the right are all blueing to make sure I have no sponsors now. I love and appreciate the member support. It's so helpful at this time when we're losing pretty much. I mean, we're, we probably lost like 80 sponsors. And it actually gets worse. Not only did G Fuel drop Keem, Keem then went on to replace his G Fuel sponsorship with a My Bookie sponsorship. So the hell's that? Like, um, poop? My Bookie. What is that? So at the end of the day, he's most likely now being paid more money than he was with G Fuel. Oh, is that gambling? Okay. And instead of selling energy drinks, he's now shilling gambling to his child audience on Snapchat. So yeah. Well, that would be Keemstar's fault, just to be clear. I don't know if that's true, uh, but that's not Ethan's fault. Forget. So, like, if you're critical of Ethan getting him to lose his sponsorship, that's fine and that's fair. But Keemstar taking, potentially, because I don't know, taking like a gambling thing and plugging it to his young audience is not on Ethan. It's on Keemstar for doing that. Okay. He's not in like such dire straits that he has to take that. He's not like a fucking drug addict one meal away from death. So he. Him taking that is not on Ethan, <laughs> just to be clear. Is it worth it to play WoW Classic? Yeah, I'm playing uh, Season of Discovery.
this isn't class. This is season of discovery, so it's uh, pretty robust and it's much more fun. Yet again, this is a perfect um, example a of Ethan being objectively and unequivocally in the wrong, and it ended with Ethan <clears throat> yet again being objectively and unequivocally wrong, pulling up the ladder behind him, and at the end of the day, it only ends up backfiring on himself. It's just a snake eating its own tail of people being mad on the internet. Right, that's Jesus. I got a little podcast, everyone to come through with a podcast. I got a new song plan. I'm talking now. Yeah, Wild Growth Alliance. It's a it's a seasonal server. It's we'll be under the seasonal tab. So my favorite cope by YouTubers like Ethan, who've lost hundreds of thousands of subscribers as a result of nothing but their own actions, is that they've somehow changed and grown and matured. And it's crazy though, because like he loses all these subscribers, but his views seem to be consistent. Like, I mean, it's kind of the, uh, I guess you'd say the epitome of empty followers at that point. Because some people just stop enjoying you and your content, maybe justifiable, well, maybe for because you suck, or maybe they just get older and they kind of move on. That happens a lot when you have a younger audience too, because they, you know, people change pretty big when they're young. Um, it's still, still pretty impressive. <laughs> it's been a long, painful, hard journey for myself. It's been a hard and tremendous growth for myself. I've matured uh, so much. It, it, it's it's actually incredible. Unfortunately, those are nothing but empty words. Well, not necessarily. Listen, man, here's here's the problem. Here's the thing, because I'm probably going to project a little bit of myself onto this a little bit. But I don't really think I'm a particularly good person or a man. And I know you guys think it's so fucking cringe, but I don't care. I love my wife, and my wife has made me a man that I'm almost proud of being, right? Getting a little gay here. Let's relax. So when I look back at my behavior years ago, I look back and go, like, wow, like that was, uh, you know, I wasn't a terrible, like horrible, like, oh, the worst person in the world. But I'm like, you know, there's a lot of things that I'm not particularly proud of or happy with, uh, whether it comes to being a content creator um, or otherwise, not just in the sense of being a content creator, but then just like some stuff in my like personal life, you know, no, nothing illegal, but I'm happier with who I am now. And so I, but I still don't think I'm there. You know, I'm probably not there. If I had the amount of views that Ethan had, I'd probably get some uh, pushback too. Um, and it probably is difficult to deal with, you know, because it's difficult to take in uh, criticism from other people on the internet because it's always disproportionate, even when there's levels of truth to it. And it can be difficult to like kind of scan it. And sometimes you just say all of it's wrong. So I would say that I've made some good growth too. I'm happier with who I am as a person, but I'm like not there yet. And so I'm thinking Ethan's probably in that boat, All right? Maybe that's me projecting. Uh, but yeah, should I get should I get emotes? Does somebody want to make me emotes and help me upload them or something? Sure, why not? When it comes to maturity, I will admit Ethan seems to know exactly good one those no, good ones though. No dog shit. Exactly what to say right. and when to say it, right, but pussies. he never seems to actually show anyone exactly how he's matured. He just verbally says it out loud. And in my opinion, if you have to constantly go out of your way to remind people that you've matured, you most definitely haven't. You and I don't say the n word. Dan, you like this? Yeah, yeah. You, bro, you, sexy. you like this, bro? Ooh, mama. Bro, you like this? Yeah, kids, bro. Yeah, Wait, there's nice. kids here? Yeah. Lap it up. Nice. Lap it up, everybody. But I think I... kids here. <laughs> I just think this is kind of stupid and silly. I don't think it's that big of a deal. Oh, I think I got banned already. What? Yeah, see ya. Man, he's sexually assaulting people inside the metaverse? What the fuck? Imagine if I, That's right, perfect. I consistently went out of my way to mention what a good person I am on my channel. Mm. You'd probably does he say he's a good person or does he say that he's grown? I don't think he said he's a good person unless I'm just fucking deaf because I'm diabetic or something. I think I was the exact opposite of that, right? I, I, I need you to tell me that I'm a good person. I know that I can be selfish, narcissistic, and self-destructive, but underneath all that deep down, I'm a good person, and I need you to tell me that I'm good, Diane. Tell me, please, Diane. Tell me that I'm good. Tell me, Dan. Am I a good person? That is exactly what Ethan does in terms of maturity. Fundamentally, we have to understand, okay. if you're a YouTuber and hundreds of thousands of your own fans who already know, like, and trust you are mass unsubscribing from uh, your channel, out, specifically a channel that you don't even post on anymore, that is an objective metric that clearly indicates that you've gotten worse in one way or another. Because uh, maybe, I mean, that you've changed. I'm not saying he's gotten better, I'm just saying, but yeah, sure. Because it's not like Ethan is making new sure, or sure, worse sure. content. There hasn't been any new content to not like on that channel. So in my opinion, this indicates a deep disapproval of his character. Well, what's probably happening is that his old videos are coming through their feed every once in a while, because I still have old videos from my archive channel, still going through people's feed, and then they're seeing it and be like, oh, I remember this guy, fuck him, and then they're unsubscribing from him, you know? Sure. I wonder how much money he makes from that old channel, like, you know? I wonder how much. I make a little bit from my uh, my old uh, main channel, the archive one still. A mass scale. Yeah. Everyone thought, wow, this guy's really changed. Yeah, he has changed, for the worse. 
the much, much worse. Because losing more than half a million subscribers isn't just numbers on a screen going down, those are all individual human beings who once resonated with Ethan enough to subscribe, now saying they want nothing to do with Ethan, okay. even for free. So it's actually uh -huh. the exact opposite of what Ethan claims. This is a time of peace for me. This is a time of uh, mature maturing. He hasn't matured. In fact, he's only lost- Well, again, those people unsubscribing don't mean that he's not maturing. I'm not saying it means he is maturing. I'm not making that statement. All I'm saying is that those people unsubscribing, it does not mean that, that he's not maturing. Again, it's a younger audience. There's some people who might be like, you know, a little, uh, there's probably a lot of justifiable reasons to unfollow him. <laughs> but people are generally growing into a different direction, right? Um, and, you know, he start, the, the maturing, I would imagine, is starting, you know, with uh, some of the shitty things that he has said, you know? some of the slurs and stuff. And maybe if you're somebody, I mean, if you are somebody that followed him for that, maybe that would be why you don't subscribe. But there's other people. Like I used to follow him too on his other channel. I followed him. I liked his uh, Vape Nation video. It was good. The Joey Salads one was pretty good. You know, stuff like that. Obviously his content's changed, but it doesn't necessarily mean he can't mature. Just saying that many of his own fans over time because of his abject failure to grow and mature as time goes on. For example, right around the time that he dropped the content nuke, Ethan had this custom puppet of Keemstar made. And I will admit, as a Keem hater, the puppet is absolutely incredible. He literally moved to LA from New York. He is such a libtard. Wow, he he is the definition of what happens when a libtard moves from New York to LA. Hypocrite. However, this same guy who goes around yapping about how he's matured so much got so angry at Keemstar at one point that he started attempting to go inside of the Keemstar puppet using a select body part in a now deleted video, which of course I saved. Keemstar, get in. Oh, isn't this like illegal or something? Not illegal, but on it. Come on, here, let's double team this. Okay. <laughs> I was about to say, hopefully you censor it. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is immature behavior, but I believe the maturity he's talking about is more of his like political values. Again, I don't really agree with, well, I mean, I agree with a lot of his values. I don't agree with him talking to fucking Hassan, that piece of shit, dog shit garbage, but uh, yeah. Keep your keep asking yourself. This is no, we're not crossing streams here. Okay, come on. This guy always crossing the line. Yeah, I think Keem is the one crossing the line in this situation. There's not a single person who could ever watch that full video uncensored and think any I mean, like here's my thing. When when it came to Ethan talking about like the Israel Palestine conflict, I felt like that was pretty mature in the way that he talked about it. You know what I mean? Like I felt like he he did it to express himself very well when it came to that. So anything other than what a cringy uh uh he's just em embarrassing human being. I mean he's he's older <laughs> than me, he's forty, almost forty. Damn. And he's trying to act like he's 18. You're how old are you? He's 40! I won't talk about it. <laughs> You're 40 years of age! On a more serious note, last year, one of Ethan's employees, AB, fought a creator named Dad, or Nathan Barnett, at Creator Clash 2. Now, Dad had That's previously gone on the H3 podcast before Creator Clash 1 to promote his first fight. And when he went I up remember this. I felt like, I, I, from what I saw, because I got like jumbled into this, like in the middle of it, it kind of just seems like this guy got really sensitive over nothing, and it seemed like kind of just stupid, but... On the podcast, he felt comfortable enough sharing his experience of when he, unfortunately, lost his girlfriend. I the love of my life passed away like, nine months ago. And, like, Who did? I, wait, what? I mean, yeah, I'm like, it's really, wait, 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 wait. Who passed away? The love of my life. Uh, <laughs> so I'm, like, I'm not trying to get into weird stuff, but like, I'm just... That's terrible, brother. I feel you on that one, dude. I'd be, I'd fucking, I'd be tragic. I don't think I would be alive anymore. Talking to you guys, I'm getting amped up right now, and I just, this is legitimately going to be the biggest day of my life, and I'm going to do it for her, so. And all the redemption for everything that's happened to me over 20 years. What happened to dad was... That's, I feel like that's a little trauma dump in there, but I also understand that, brother. That's a beautiful thing. I'd feel very awkward in that moment, though. Tragic. And it's, it's like, like, out of nowhere, you're like, yeah, my girlfriend, the, the love of my life died, and I'm just like... What do you say to that? You know, that's a lot of information. One of those things that literally every single mature adult would agree should be treated with nothing but respect. So before dad's fight at Creator Clash 2, Ethan went on to say this about dad. He came on our show to promote uh, his fight against Matt hmm. and he was just like, um, dude, this is terrible. Damn, he looks so much better now, man. He looks so unhealthy here. He's an animal. My life is a tragedy. I'm fighting for my dead girlfriend. I was like, mm. whoa, dude, I don't want to fuck that. Don't fuck yeah, you don't, want a, you don't want a dead girlfriend punch. No. no nobody wants a dead girlfriend know. punch to the no. face. No, but I would pity anyone who gets in the ring with him, dude. That would be a fucking disaster for anybody. Now, I'm no... Well, it kind of sounds like uh, Anthony Fantino is the one who dug in on that one. It sounded more like Ethan was just shocked that he said all that. And I think that from what I heard, and I could be wrong, was the tone was like, this guy's hurting inside. I wouldn't want to be fighting him because he because he'll probably go crazy maybe i'm hearing that wrong or he came on our show to promote uh, his fight against matt hmm. and okay. he was just like um 
He's an animal. My life is a tragedy. I'm fighting for my dead girlfriend. I was like, mm. whoa, dude, I don't want to. I don't want to. Yeah, you don't, want a, you don't want a dead girlfriend punch. No. Yeah, it sounds like the tone of, again, Anthony Fantino is the one who took it to like this weird spot, like kind of an asshole. But it's the tone of that sounds like, you know, this guy, like, you know how Mike Tyson, he talks about how he was afraid of the man he was when he used to box. <laughs> that's that's more the energy. I, got. I mean, not that he would ever be anywhere close to Mike Tyson, but that's just the energy that I got of that one. I don't know why Fantino needed to take it up a notch. Uh, what an asshole. No, no, he was a dead <laughs> girlfriend punch to the no, face. No, but I would pity anyone who gets in the ring with him, dude. That would be a fucking disaster for anybody. Now, I'm no expert in maturity. In fact, I'm actually quite immature. Yeah, I'm a But when I think hey, about... Hey, don't say that. <laughs> Maturity. The last thing that would ever come to my mind is a 40 year old man who openly mocks the death of other people's girlfriends who he personally um, knows. But like I, I feel like that's a little too much there. I don't think that I would say all that. You know, it's probably very jarring to hear this guy talk about this unprompted. It came out of nowhere. It's uncomfortable. And then Ethan was just like, damn, he drama dumped on me. And I'm like, I wouldn't want to fight this guy. And I guess that was before they announced AB was going to fight him. It's not really that. I don't think this one's that loaded. I don't think it's like that big of a deal, but like when you have Anthony Fantano, I could see why uh, Anthony Fantano, that guy, fucking Orange Fanta, that was that was over the line in my opinion. That was pretty fucked up. But uh, on the show, he's saying unless they were like friends, you know, if Anthony was friends with him, if Orange Fanta was friends with him, stuff like that has dead girlfriend energy. And he's referencing Siobhan, my girlfriend who, who, who did pass away. I was like, this is the joke. You're saying I have dead girlfriend energy, and he just kept saying it the way he said it. it was just throwing it out there. It was, it was very casual when he was saying it, and I felt it was kind of insensitive because, like, imagine this was Flip, and I said something, and something like this happened to him, and I said anything, like I would get torn apart on the internet. But like, it's just throwing. Now people would think you're based to talk about. Throwing it away like that, saying dead, calling her a dead girlfriend, and it was just, it was really sad to me. I've actually never. Yeah, seen I feel bad for the guy. I think he was in love, and that was something that he admitted that was very personal. I also think that was a bit of a boundary crosser. You really shouldn't be going out there trauma dumping on shit like that. But again, I don't think Ethan did anything. Uh... Uh, particularly bad. I think he was more of expressing shock and then Anthony Fantino took it up a notch. We should put more of blame onto that guy. Seen someone have a more valid <clears throat> concern about anything than dad saying, hey, maybe that was a little insensitive, yet this delusional and allegedly mature adult still went on to say... <laughs> Allegedly mature adults. Very funny to me. I've tried my best to avoid having to talk about this, and I'm not kidding. If I have to talk about this, dad is going to look like a fucking idiot. No, he's not actually. It's been a year, and still to this day, he definitely doesn't look like the idiot in this situation. Ethan does because he lacks maturity. We both used to be like edgy comedians, and we were a part of the larger commentary community. Mm -hmm. And as we've aged, we've realized that, uh, you know, you want to conduct yourself differently. You see, to Ethan. I don't know. I wouldn't consider myself a comedian. I think I'm funny sometimes. What the fuck? Heal me, you fat fuck. Sorry. I'd say that I'm funny at times, but uh, I think, again, that's one of the problems with Ethan is that he shifts between wanting to be um, like considered some form of a comedian versus, you know, wanting to be like progressive. And that's a, diff a bit of a difficult line to toe, I think. Like, you can do it. I do it so well. But it just comes, it's it's interesting. Because I feel like the energy there sometimes, he has like this weird energy with people. Like, Mr. he's going in on Mr. Beast about fucking, and I know I keep bringing that one up, but it was just so weird, like how he's going in on this guy because allegedly fucking he changed the results of a thing. And Ethan's like going, f of like a, a show or whatever, or one of his bits, his videos. And they have that girl on, and she, and he goes so weird in his energy. Then he's like making fun of him because he's the way he dates people. It's just so bizarre. It's his energy. Like when he talks about things, he's not in all in good fun. Like a lot of times he'll like really pile in on somebody. I think that's a big problem. So, then conducting yourself differently. Yeah, just, I'm playing season of Discovery. Which means being as cruel and inhumane as humanly possible. So, in that exact same podcast episode where he was bragging about how he conducts himself so well, he goes on to mock the YouTuber Dr. In the, in the content, it was in the, context it was uh, appropriate for him to talk about it oh how was it appropriate in the context of it mike for the loss of his mother i've been boxing for 10 years ever since my mom passed away and it's been such a you see he's fighting with the spirit of his dead mom you can have muscles but <laughs> okay be soft his mom I, died though and, ah the slap the shit out you nigga saying that stupid ass shit. i can't believe i even have to say this but true maturity and just basic human decency is treating those who are going through profound loss with the utmost respect and empathy i know yeah. for a well, fact i mean she was dead for 10 years i don't know if it's profound loss but i understand what you're saying it seems like it, it seems in insensitive again i think it would be fine if he was like consistent but he seems relatively inconsistent sometimes in, in the energy that he uh pushes out into people you know, one day he's sitting here trying to have like really nuanced conversations about like Israel, Palestine, fucking, you know, uh, systemic racism and all this. And 
I don't know. I don't know. It's just the energy, I think, is really what it boils down to. I don't even know if I can explain it. It's the energy. The energy in the way that he deals with different people. You know? Uh, some moments he'll morally chastise somebody. In other moments he'll like go in a little too hard for him. You know? I don't know. You know, I think that's where it comes for me. I can't really articulate it, but I think it's an energy thing. He seems to have like inconsistent energy depending on who he's engaging with, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Maybe that doesn't make sense. In fact, Ethan would be severely upset if I said the same words in the same tone about his dog Shredder, who... <laughs> it's a dog. Who gives a fuck? ...recently passed away. Who gives a shit? It's a fucking dog. They should have eaten it. I don't give a goddamn about dogs. There's no humanity in dogs. Fuck your dog, Ethan. Fuck your dog. I don't give a fuck about your dog, dude. In fact, he would most likely cry. Yet, he turns around and does exactly that to other people's moms and significant others? This is this is what growth is. This is what mm -hmm. maturing is. Yeah. This is yeah. what it looks like. Yeah. And sadly, yeah. 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 it's almost yeah. become a virtue today, at least in American culture, to not change. Ethan has to do this bizarre set... Uh, sorry guys, base alert. ...of mental gymnastics to make it seem like the entirety of today's culture just revolves around the fact that nobody wants anyone to change when literally everyone knows that's just not true. Ch Maybe? Oh, I don't know. Change is not a problem. Nobody is gatekeeping becoming a better person. Aside from the... Well, I mean, he might have been talking about like conservatives not wanting people to change, like society, which is the fundamental of being conservatives like that's i'm not even saying it's a bad thing but that's what you do conserve you're trying to you know conserve keep things the way that they are um, straw man arguments that ethan invents in his own mind growth is good maturation is good yeah, mm, yeah. nobody's gonna who can really yeah, tell me daddy. like oh you maturing means saying the n-word more mm, um probably me i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> like, like, who's going to make that argument? Literally, all it comes down to is the fact that people in general expect positive change and not change for the worse. Filthy Frank and PewDiePie have both changed for the better over time, and they've actually matured and become better versions of themselves as they've aged, unlike Ethan. And as a result of that, the general public, including their old fans, still respect them both for who they are today and also who they were in the past. The difference between them is that unlike Felix and Frank, Ethan has changed for the worse. A perfect example of Ethan and clearly changing for the worse was when the Twitch streamer Cutie Cinderella found out a certain website had been selling inappropriate fake videos of herself and other Twitch streamers. Oh man, we're gonna get we're gonna get in trouble here again, guys. We're gonna get in trouble. And she streamed her reaction to it, and as you would expect, Ethan had the most mature response possible. This is what it looks like. This is what the paid looks like. Okay. <laughs> Why? Why? It said that he's had a crew member play a song. And he's laughing. What is going Something, on with you? I'm sorry, don't, don't mind me. If you are able to <laughs> <laughs> you're not selling those better than Listen, here's the thing. Here's my thing. I am very tired of hyper disproportionate reactions on YouTube. Okay, I think a really good extreme one is like Katie Bugs. With her insane accusation against George is not found because they consensually cuddled when she was a an adult, and then later she decided that he sexually assaulted her. Okay, this is one of those. I think it's fair if you're like, yeah, I can see why that's kind of violating. Like somebody takes your face and puts it on another person's body when everybody knows it's somebody else. You're a large content creator, so everybody knows it's not you. You're not somebody that's like a like a nobody um, that could potentially be negatively impacted with like revenge porn. Like imagine you found somebody like, oh, my coworker, I'm going to go deep fake them into doing stuff and then I'm going to send it to their boss. Like I get why that would be like really distressful. None of that was here. And she's crying like she was violently assaulted. I don't feel bad for her in that way. Like if she was sitting here, it's like, dude, this sucks. Like this is bullshit. And she got like a little upset and like a little teary. I was like, this is really frustrating. You know what I mean? I would be like, okay, that's fair. But she's so disproportionate and we shouldn't like, it's okay to bully people. No, you shouldn't be bullying people, but it's, I think it's okay to call that out. And so if you're going to be like, you're going to make fun of her a little bit for being disproportionate. Like, I think that's fine because like it is disproportionate. You're doing too much. That's too much energy. It's not appropriate energy. You're crying like somebody who was like fucking who just who got the fuck beaten out of them or something. You're crying like one of those women in New York who just gets a fucking punched in the face for no reason. So like, yeah. You know? And maybe that's part of my woke fatigue, my empathy fatigue. Oh, this fucking medicine man over here. Maybe that's part of that, but like I just like, yeah, I don't care about that. I think that this is a fine brand of comedy when it comes down to it. He's making a joke. 
because she's being unreasonable. She's being unreasonable. So. Off of Why? Being seats, actually. <laughs> You're a monster, dude. <laughs> Jesus you guys are Christ. crazy. Why did you do that? Zach, what the fuck, bro? Remember, guys, Ethan oh Klein God. is a self proclaimed feminist who's apparently so passionate about feminism that at one point he even wore a shirt that says, Dad, husband, feminist. I'm, I'm assuming part of that is an, a jest a little bit. Thank you so much, Wyatt Smith, for the small guy. But yeah, male feminists are a red flag, guys, okay? There's no good male feminists. They're all just trying to be. I'm just trying to get close to you. He said you wanted to debate a feminist. Coward. But tell him I said he's a coward. Show him that shirt. Make sure he sees Take it. Take a picture of me and send him and say, Ethan says you're a coward. You want to debate a feminist. I'm serious. Dude, we, Take a picture. So yeah, I think this, this is part of like a bit, no? Right now. So he's more than happy to profit off of feminism, both monetarily and in terms of social credit. <laughs> yet, in a moment that clearly called for a little bit of basic human decency to a female, Ethan couldn't even pretend to be compassionate <laughs> towards cutie. He's just, just to be clear, I'm just wondering, did you actually feel bad for her? Like, in that moment? That's my question. Like, you're, 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 you're chastising him, but did you actually feel bad for her? Because I didn't. I, I mean, not, not that bad. Like, I would have felt bad again if she had a proportionate response. <laughs> Like, I think it would have been so much better to talk about, and maybe he does talk about it, like the Jordan Peterson thing. I thought it was shitty that they were, like, friendly, and instead of having him come on and talk to him about it, when Jordan said he'll have a conversation about it, he, like, said, all right, fuck that. Um, and he just pretty much, like, uh, decided not to associate with him anymore. And that one was, like, a better example of being a stinky little poopy boy, right? So... That's so. He's just hard. He did try to blame it on Zach until the crew called him out. I think he was kind of kidding, but sure, fine. To even imagine he's a real person, you know? <laughs> It's like, damn, there's a real person out there like that. It's wild. On another note, let's take a look at what the content creator, Brittany Broski, what had to fuck? say about her appearance on the H3 podcast. What's the nastiest I, thing you've seen on the internet? I recently went on fucking H3 and Ethan showed me a video of two prolapsed assholes rubbing against each other. <laughs> okay, interesting. <laughs> So that's actually really awesome that you asked Wait, okay. because I had an answer ready to go. Yeah. As you just heard there, Ethan has this really bizarre habit of asking his guests awkward relationship questions or showing them adult content live on his show. <laughs> okay, whatever. Who cares? <laughs> I have to keep this PG, but for example, Ethan brought this adult actor named Hunger FF. Uh, listen, if you're going to bring an adult actor on show, the show, you're going to get asked questions about being an adult actor. You know what I mean? I'm absolutely wondering how, much, how, how wide the diameter of your anus is, you know? Onto his show and have <clears> him show off some of his talents to his guest at the time, Howie Mandel. Just go ahead and do it right now. Yeah, just go ahead. <laughs> Everything okay. is a question. Now, Howie, let me take off my shirt. Howie. Oh my God. Pretty sure Ethan and Howie are friends. Like, Howie um, hosts some of Ethan's things. God. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> oh no. No. <laughs> this is fucking. This one is like a. I feel like this is. This part is such a miss. The beginning of the video was like a little bit better. But like, the, this is just stupid shit that he's doing. Everybody is. It's obviously consensual. Especially with Howie, they're friends. So, like, what does it really matter here? It's just like a fucking, it's goofing around. <laughs> I like that. This is soy baiting, dude. Oh. <laughs> it probably wasn't that disgusting. Come on, guys. I'd probably be pretty happy with it. Wait, wait. I, I made sure I had some hand sanitizer no. just, hand just in case. That was actually oh, really man. impressive. What did he do? He used hand sanitizer? Oh, my God. How is it unsanitary? He's probably done that exact same bit more than a dozen times at this point, okay. and the reason why he constantly does really weird stuff like that is because Ethan and his podcast are essentially just the dollar store version of the Howard Stern Show. Howard, will yeah, sure. The Ginger Janitor. Thank you so much for the five dollars. I swear it's a different uh, couch. Mind pop every stream. First time being in a live stream ever. Thank you, brother. Yeah, no, we just got a new couch. The other one was the uh, futon, my old futon. We moved that into another room. We're gonna make a guest bedroom. We're gonna get a mattress topper for that. So if somebody stays over. They can stay in the basement and never leave. It was like my inspiration for the show, not really podcast. Didn't Howie do that to the public? Yeah, that's a good point, too. My dream was to have more acts and more stuff going on, which I think we can build up to. He even paid tens of thousands of dollars in an attempt to copy Howard's set inch for inch at one point in his life. Damn. Oh, close the blind. Embarrassing. <laughs> and the problem with Ethan trying to be oh, a Howard Stern dark. clone is the fact that Howard got famous by being controversial and edgy. You ever listen to my show, Howard Stern Show? Yes. You do? You like it? Not particularly. No, what don't you like about it? You're rather crude. I'm rather crude? Yes. Oh, how, how do you mean? Give me an example. You're rather disgusting, and I don't care to give you an example. So Ethan- Kind of based from her. Ethan is trying to uphold himself as some paragon of moral virtue while simultaneously ripping off every aspect of someone who got famous for being an edgelord. And yeah, this one, this one I think is a good criticism because I, again, I think that you can, uh, oh, I don't want to fight that guy because it takes like an hour to kill. I think that you can, um, 
be somebody who's progressive and still make comedy, right? And, and do stuff like that. I mean, you look at like someone like Shane Gillis is probably an excellent example of somebody who does that successfully. So I think that you can um, pull that off. I think you can pull that off perfectly well, perfectly effectively, et cetera, et cetera. The problem is, though, is that the energy doesn't really match it. Like, there are times where he, it seems like he wants to be, um, like, very progressive. And sometimes he wants to be, uh, like, the comedy guy. And I'm not just saying on leftovers. It just seems to kind of shift back and forth. And you never really know what energy or, or, or which version of Ethan you're going to get. And it can be, like, a little bit jarring and frustrating, right? I understand that. I think that's a reasonable criticism to make. For sure. Oh, fuck. Unfortunately, Ethan isn't as witty, funny, or charismatic as Howard was Ooh, in his prime, so Ethan tries to copy him. Howard's early 2000s edgelord and it leads to some very epically old moments. Uh, uh, Liver cake. Now, do you have to have sex in a certain position? Because you're so big, and sometimes fat guys have a problem. They have to, they have to go into a certain position. <laughs> you probably shouldn't ask. Kind of yeah. I mean, you're massive, right? So, yeah. so, and also, I don't know how well endowed you are, but like, what's the situation with your, what, what position? Do you have to go in a position, or are you guys fully flexible? Because you're both very muscular. Yeah. Um, here's the thing. Um, I'm never talking about my wife in this context. Yeah, that's fair. And by adopting a style that's similar to... <laughs> it's like a wrong audience there, Ethan. Read the room there. Howard Stern's shock jock era, Ethan not only does things that are the exact opposite of maturity, but it's also genuinely hurtful in some cases. For example, Howard famously had his whack pack where he'd get people like Beetlejuice to be on his show so him and his fans could just laugh at them. Spanish, man. Yeah, I speak Spanish. Hey, Pete, you know. Hey, yell at him in Spanish. Yell at him. Yeah, you motherfucker. <laughs> and remember how he criticized the Leafy for making fun of that autistic man eight years ago? And I mean, if you look at Leafy's channel, all he does is make fun of kids and like vulnerable people, like Joey's World Tour. There's no, there's no sport in making fun of these people. They're just, it's just sad. They don't need to be made fun of. Ironically enough, Ethan now has his very own whack pack called the Goof Gang, and he now does exactly what he criticized Leafy for eight years ago, almost every week. We're gonna have to celebrate this beautiful man, uh, Gabe, the White Claw, Ooh. in the world, the one and only, shitting my nostrils and pooping it out of my ears. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I feel like, uh, listen, I didn't watch Howard Stern. I've never really seen too much, uh, listen, I don't ever, I never really watched Howard Stern, even though people say I sound just like him, right? But I feel like it's okay to have people on as long as you're respectful. Like, yeah, those individuals, like Gabe's a little weirdo, you know, he's a little peculiar. But if you're being fun and respectful about it, I don't really see an issue with it personally. You know, I again, I never watched Howard. I watched some of the Beetlejuice clips. He seems to be nice to Beetlejuice. I've never seen him be disrespectful to him. Then again, that might have just been, I don't know. But I feel like, uh, yeah, I feel like that's fine. You know, unless there's something specifically where he's getting him on there to bully him. I don't really care. You know, no one calls it the goof gang. I wouldn't know. You guys are, would know more than me. I don't have no fucking idea. How about this? How about this? Snorting shit and spitting it out of my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, snorting shit. <laughs> oh my god. And this isn't just about one clip or one isolated incident, but rather the consistent pattern of behavior. Ethan has made more than eight hours of content just making fun of Gabe, mocking him, and just straight up treating the guy like a circus clown. What? And it's not just Gabe. I feel like that's not true. I, I Listen, I don't watch a lot of the segments with Gabe or anything, but I've watched like a little bit, and it just seems like good fun. It literally just sounds like a dude talking to somebody <laughs> that's a little... Special, right? He did it with Shoe Nice. That might be true. If he shows the Shoe Nice thing, that might be true. Shoe Nice is a fucking is an interesting fellow. I don't say that. Um, Abe, he does this too. There's Jimmy Lee, Shoe Nice, Shirtless Eddie, and many more. Yeah, I don't. What Shirtless Eddie? I don't know. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I I don't know, man. You know, you have to show specific incidents because I don't. I'm not really. I'm not really sold on like the bullying thing with these guys specifically. <laughs> Like the shirtless Eddie was like Eddie. Shirtless Eddie's a meme. He it's a meme. He would go on. He would go shirtless, and he'd be like, "Oh, can you feel if I I thought my shirt on?" And it was like a fun little thing. Just because he's a little bit of a weird guy doesn't mean that Ethan's bullying him by having him on the show. I don't know, man. I feel like this is reaching pretty hard here. Some of this is a kind of a hard reach. It's gonna under. It's gonna end up like um. It's going to end up undercutting your other better points. Yet, when the Goof Gang gets compared to Howard's whack pack, Ethan has the audacity to get offended by that. I don't like the comparison. I'm not saying anything. I want to make it clear, though, because the whack pack's a Howard Stern thing. And I feel like the people that he brings on like that, he's way more, I want to say, judgmental and rude to. I, I hope that we have more of a mutual respect. Unlike Ethan, I am... Okay, I mean, if you could show that he doesn't have a mutual respect, then boom, you got him. But if you... 
don't reference that point that he made, then he's kind of got you, no? I'm not going to pretend like this is something that it's not. The interactions that Ethan has with his goof gang is just straight up implicit bullying, and there is no debate oh. to be had there. Yeah, just show me an instance of that. All of the proof is on video, and it's <laughs> undeniable. He's taking someone who he has 100% full control over due to his position as a large YouTuber and having them say and do things strictly because he's in the position of power, and Ethan and his crew Ooh. and his audience... A lot of buzzwords. A lot of buzzwords, brother. All sit there... <laughs> laughing at and not with the members this guy just to be clear my brother here then and his crew and his audience all sit there laughing my peanut brother butter brother brother here his whole shtick is taking peanut butter and like rub like being eating it weirdly and pretending to fuck it like i don't think that this guy is he you know taking himself as like the pinnacle of seriousness i at and not with the members of the goof gang have you ever gone down on a girl gabe uh stop stop no. Have you ever? Uh -uh. You haven't. Is that something you're looking to try? <laughs> yeah, someday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good. I practice someday. in front of the mirror. <laughs> oh my God! Can you do it right now? Pretend you're in front of the mirror. <laughs> okay. Is this, this is your smoking gun, brother? Stop! Stop telling me that I was on there. Stop telling me that that's me. <laughs> Stop telling me that that's me in the chat and that I was on Ethan's club. I'm not. I was. That's not me. Shut the fuck up. I feel like uh, this is not a good example. You got to show a little bit more than him being a little silly with the guy. Stop. <laughs> stop telling me it's me. Thank you so much for the $2 from Jack Esposito. Uh, Esposito. Hey, Papa. I'm on my lunch break right now. Goon 22. Very good, brother. A lot to learn. Keep practicing, yeah, there buddy. You there you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're ready to go, Gabe. You're going to make a girl very happy. And not only is this behavior absolutely reprehensible, but it also norm. I don't think so, man. I think that you're a little bit of a fucking... I think you're, too, I think you're just kind of a dirty libtard. I'm just kidding. <laughs> nah, but you're being like super pearl clutchy right now. You know, it's, it's a little it bizarre. Normalizes cruelty towards those who might be more susceptible to manipulation. Who's who's he being cruel to? For example, just a few months ago, Ethan brought a man named Seaman onto his show Seaman. and asked him for a picture of his regional area on numerous occasions. Can I ask your permission for something, Seaman? If you will permit us, can we tweet out the photo of your dad so the audience can see it and, and then we can get kind of the audience's opinion? Because there is a lot of... Maybe later. Listen, oh, we, yeah. we've got through the niceties. Let's cut to the, the meat here, the girth of it. Can I tweet the picture of your... <laughs> I mean, you Which are... Picture, so the, there's a picture, one public video that you made. It's you with two dudes and you all are having a good time. And you yeah. pan down to your real fast. So that's the photo. I'm going to ask for your permission if I could post it to Twitter so that the fans can share their opinion on the size of it. They want to share the opinion. That's fine. I don't okay. mind. You can do it. You would have thought. I mean, is this, this guy, is this guy the porn star that has a huge dick? I was just looking into a little bit. Apparently he's like, that's one of the things he does. I don't know. It seems weird. Um, I don't know if he's bullying the guy. You could probably say that maybe he should have been a little better with boundaries there. Thought that maturity would mean understanding that if someone says I've never heard of old love of seaman lore no or is clearly uncomfortable with what you're asking you drop it but he sure. actually managed to do the exact opposite right there he pushed and pressured it's possible like this might be a good point i don't know because like the tone of this video so far has been like kind of hit and miss when it comes to like representation of different things so if i watched the full thing we could see that he's being like too pushy and that could be something to criticize him for absolutely or we could just find out that you're like virtue signaling about see, it. man which like what you did with like the last segment here that was like a bit of a virtue signal about these other people so i don't know to send him a photo of his private like he's kind of he's guys kind of like rotted his credibility enough where you look at some of the things he says and goes like okay i have to take that with a grain of salt you know area on a live stream in front of forty thousand people just so he could tweet out the photo for millions to see all as an attempt at humor now i see why the guy needs his fans to make his jokes yes. for him i want your guys to stop same thing same here you guys same here some of your jokes in the chat then i'll read them and take them Help me be funnier. I'm yes. not funny. I don't have the time to make segments. You make segments for us. And guess what? It <laughs> okay. Actually gets worse. Seaman <laughs> then went on the H3 subreddit and stuck up for himself and essentially said he didn't feel good about what had okay. happened. Worse. Seaman then. Let's see. Uh, he originally said maybe later, which is not a yes. And then I feel like super silly asking. I was honestly more comfortable about him asking him over and over again. Agreed. Where's Seaman? I did not want to and was a bit off put by that when i come on there will be no more talk of my personal then we on the h3 okay, subreddit and stuck then. up for himself if this is actually him oh yeah all the stuff will age like milk ethan will pay the pipe okay this i don't care what this person say uh, he will get what's coming to him okay i guess he affirms that message <laughs> okay it sounds like he was uncomfortable with it okay there we go that sounds like confirmation then essentially said he didn't feel good about what had happened on the show 
Why a straight man want to discuss my love machine is so odd and sick. It's interesting that he calls it his love machine, but God bless your brother. Show, and of course, Ethan and their crew then immediately permanently banned him from the H. I got banned from H3 Reddit. Oh no, why do you know why? I don't know. Okay, damn. Damn, man. They didn't even let him express his, his, his struggles, brother. Three subreddit, and they haven't had him. Uh, C-Man said he had a 12-incher, and then when it came out, he did not have a 12-incher. Oh, so they're exposing him. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Interesting. On the show since. Mm. Like, it's a fucking cult. Like, he actually yeah. cuts people off. As another okay. example, last year, they brought a man named... Hey, Shirtless Eddie. We're mutuals on TikTok. Shirtless Eddie on, and as soon as he got there, they did an hour and a half long bit where Ethan pretended to go to the bathroom, but in reality, they just left Eddie in the studio live all by himself for 45 minutes. Okay, I'll be right back, and then we'll hop into the okay. next segment. Thanks. Let's do this. Yeah. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? This is a weird bit. <laughs> oh no. You're a fan of the show. I trust Eddie. The fact of the matter is, Ethan is a bully who. Whoa. I have no idea what to think about that moment. I couldn't. I don't know. Okay, that was interesting. An interesting bit to do for sure. Who only selectively targets those who he perceives as weak and vulnerable, like C Man or Gabe. Then he implicitly uh... clowns on them and makes them the butt of every joke. I don't think you're winning on the Gabe one. The Seaman one, maybe, but I don't think that Seaman so, doesn't seem like somebody like I. So I could be wrong. Gabe seems like, you know, seems like a nice guy. Maybe he uh, could be on the show, love on the spectrum. I don't know. Seaman does not seem like he's got an issue. It sounds like Ethan was pushing boundaries. Problem. Problematic, sure. But I don't see what, what's. I don't really see the like he's targeting a vulnerable person argument. And then Eddie is just a gay dude. He's just a nice gay dude. He lost a lot of weight and he was taking, taking a shirt off. I don't really understand. I mean, it was weird, the segment. I don't understand. I feel like we're pearl clutching. And I find this bullying to be hilarious coming from Ethan, of all people, because the last time someone exposed Ethan for the absolute lol cow okay. that he is, he immediately retreated and adopted the position of understanding and acceptance like the little weasel that he truly is. What have people been saying about me recently? That I'm a hypocrite? that I prioritize money over everything else, that I've thrown friends Please. under the bus, that I'm ignorant and poorly informed, and spread misinformation, that I'm arrogant, that I cannot handle criticism, and that I've used people. Uh yeah, Eddie's gay. I'm pretty sure Eddie's gay. Yeah. Pretty sure. I, like, I see some of his TikToks sometimes. I think he's a gay dude. Yeah, maybe I'm wrong about that. I'm pretty sure he's gay, though. Um, and let me just say this, okay, for the record that I am guilty of all of those things. The guy was actually so scared of Gokunaru that it took him two full years just to react to his YouTube video. Uh, I don't know if it's scared. Again, again because uh, Gokunaru is a pretty good... He seems like a nice young man. <laughs> I'm getting old, brothers. But uh, he makes good content. It's a little out of my style. I'm a little older. A little more simple and boomerish, but... You know... Again, I've been in a place where like I'm not receptive to criticism for a while, so I don't know if it's a fear thing or if it's just like a fuck that. It's one of the problems, like as a content creator that gets like a lot of heat on you, um, is that you will. <sighs> the problem is, is that you'll get criticism. There will, it will always be disproportionate, even when there's good things that are like reasonable uh, things in there. And then you won't take the criticism particularly well because you end up kind of brushing it all off as like the same, like, oh, this isn't true. So none of it's true. So, yeah, if it took him two years, like, okay, I mean, yeah, okay. I mean, if somebody changed instantaneously, I'd think that that's a kind of a red flag because that means that you're not really stand for anything. Although Ethan has done that uh, occasionally, right? specifically i guess when it came to like this this flip on keemstar but yeah okay about it so he's more than happy to bully others but when he gets a uh i like ukunara i thought they were both pretty respectful in the interaction they both admitted points and defended others okay and then let it go oh yeah makes sense literated in front of millions suddenly the guy can't even engage with the yeah, he was so he was so scared he watched the whole video in full and then addressed it very behavior that he has spent years perpetrating a little rat a little weasel a little hard man in groups i've met many of them through my years a man who grows in numbers but on, on his own and when confronted in a similar situation cowers away oh and of course there's a hypocritical aspect to the goof gang he's also extensively criticized david dobrik for participating in relationships with unfair power imbalances of course seth never <laughs> okay i'm not getting into david dobrik i don't really give a shit 
about the lore. David seems like an immature person, and then he seems to you know with other immature people. Power dynamics are real. They exist everywhere. Abuse of power dynamic is the actual issue, right? Power dynamic existing doesn't really matter. There are some people who are capable of defending themselves, and they decide not to in some instances. There's a lot of complicated shit going on that I don't really give a fuck about the David Dobrik situation. Right, like I'm, I don't really care. But to compare that to like fucking Gabe and shit is dumb. I mean, didn't this guy have somebody swing on a fucking uh, crane? Seems a little, or something like that, or a bulldozer. Seems a little bit different than uh, having a little fun. But okay, about the clout, just like this guy Jonah and Big Nick, is because people only get as much clout as David wants them to, mm-hmm. because he portrays Seth and Jonah and Big Nick as Big Nick's a fucking weirdo. The punching bags as the jokes, and of course they're not going to be respected by the fan base. Mm-hmm. So of course they're never going to get their own fans because people who do follow them probably don't respect them to begin with because they're coming from David. And last but certainly not least, okay. the number one thing that definitively and irrefutably proves Ethan's blatant lack of maturity and growth as a person is the fact that he had to pay twenty thousand dollars for a button to cut out the garbage that he says when he's live, so he doesn't get canceled every other episode. We're getting uh, what? a very expensive piece of hardware that they use in like the NBA and it allows you to erase part of a live stream. It's very interesting. It's high tech stuff. It's not high tech. Wow, interesting. It all takes since the 70s. Oh, come on, bro. I'm trying to, <laughs> it's expensive. Yeah, it's everybody's familiar with it on a level. I mean, it's a dump switch. It's, it's what it's what prevents people if they curse on broadcast television or something so that they don't get banned or uh, fined by the FCC. Isn't the dump switch just like, hey, we we run the broadcast with a 20 second delay. Uh, so if you press that button, it'll pause it for a little bit. You know, isn't that all it is? Yeah, so we're going to implement that. Yeah, most of us just use the free version of that. It's called pausing for a second to think. The reality is, if Uh, Ethan had actually matured... Where did the $20,000... Why would he say $20,000? There's no way that that costs $20,000 or change for the better like he claims he wouldn't say so much messed up stuff that he even needs a button in the first place um i guess that's my dad right i like to at least defend my dad by saying he didn't abandon me right you know, in a gift basket to uh you know the neighborhood uh, orphanage there's a lot of sadness there I mean, he, he's an orphan i don't think that's an insult it's just a statement yeah. that is that, that's a lot to deal with i don't understand why he's saying why is he saying it's twenty thousand dollars i think like you know, that, that brings a lot of, of, of damage i wish i could make fun of his dad i just don't know who he is sadly, it's a bit yeah i think the guy believed that it was 20 grand there's no way it cost that much <laughs> I mean, I think because he's an orphan, he has like deep abandonment issues. I'm just, I'm just making educated guess here. He was literally an orphan, and I'm not saying that to be insulting. Yes, you are. It's just, no, it's just a statement of fact. Like he ended up an orphan. His mom clearly didn't want him. And you know, if abortion was, I don't know where you're going at this point. I don't think you're making a point. If, if abortion what was, what are you even talking about? Do they say? Mank. The reality is, if Ethan had actually matured or changed for the better, like he claims, he wouldn't say so much messed up stuff that he even needs a button in the first place. I don't attack my dad, right? I like to at least defend my dad by saying he didn't abandon me. Right. You know, in a gift basket to a, uh, you know, the neighborhood uh, orphanage. There's a lot of sadness there. I mean, he, he's an orphan. I don't think that's insulting. Who is he talking about? Is an orphan? Did, did, did this guy ever? Make- you say? Oh, it's just a statement of yeah. fact. That is, that's, that's a lot to deal with. I think, like, you know, that, that brings a lot of, of, of damage. I wish I could make fun of his dad. I just don't know who he is. I'm sadly neither to see. I mean, he's I think because he's an orphan, he has like deep abandonment issues. I'm just... Who's the orphan Ethan's referring to? Again, like, if you're being this much of a dick, I have to know who it's about because maybe it's justifiable. I don't know. I'm just making educated guess here. He was literally an orphan, and I'm not saying that to be insulting. Yes, you are. It's just, no, it's just a statement of fact. Like, he ended up an orphan. His mom clearly didn't want him. And, you know, if abortion was. I don't know where you're going at this point. I don't think you're making a point. You. If, if abortion was. Right. And it's not, it's not Kim's fault. It's his dad's fault being a deadbeat. Obviously, every- Oh, Keemstar. Okay. Well, uh... <laughs> Everyone is going to make mistakes, especially okay. when they've been making content for as long as Ethan has. But these situations aren't all just mistakes or coincidences. These are intentionally bad things that he does and says as a fully conscious, sober, fully... This one was funny. I don't care what you say. ...grown adults. An actual mistake was what Ethan criticized his friend PewDiePie for. In 2017, he said the N-word one time, apologized, and to the best of my knowledge, he hasn't said it again. In Ethan's case, what I've presented here is a clear pattern of behavior where oh. Ethan verbally claims to be mature and his fans eat it up like hotcakes because they have parasocial relationships with him and that ends up feeding his a lot of buzzwords in this video ego through confirmation bias so he thinks he's actually matured and then he turns around and acts like prime leafy when he was 19 except ethan's not 19 he's 38 i don't think he goes anywhere near leafy at all <laughs> leafy was pretty bad from what i've seen I'm just saying if you're gonna up. shut up anything mm. don't mm. make it mm. cu- Ethan is edgy and shocking, which is a really cool thing for a 50 year old guy to be. <laughs> Isn't it cool? Yeah, I remember that that statement. I defended it a little bit. I think it was fine that YouTube um, banned him for that. But that was in like there was this, I believe it was the Uvalde shooting right in Texas. And then like in within that month, there was an NRA meeting in Texas and it was like really shitty. Um, it was it was very hurtful to a lot of people, and a lot of people were upset because like you know Ethan has kids, and a bunch of kids were shot and killed. And it's like, why are you know after this huge gun problem? Well, we're we'll say police problem as well because these police were fucking dog shit worthless. Um, yeah, he said what he said. You know what I mean? So like, I'm not really gonna sit here and fucking virtue signal about how horrible it is. Is it ideal? No. Should YouTube have banned it? Probably. 
But um, like, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that like we're fucking like it's not this huge, horrible thing to do. At the end of the day, maybe the real maturity is in recognizing when to laugh, when to reflect, and when to call out nonsense. If you give no effort, if you got no money, then I got a cheap method. Crack it open, throw it in a pan, and let it cook, bitch. Now that's a real education. Fuck books. Even isn't that isn't this what um Willie Mac does in between his transitions? Klein has been scamming his fans for years now, and I find that to be quite ironic, uh, given the fact that he's been simultaneously calling other YouTubers out that entire time for every- What the hell is he doing to scam people? What the fuck? Every single type of scam that he's ever personally done. David Dobrik has fallen off so hard. This man is running a- he's involved in a crypto scam called Board Bunny NFT. Down bad. Of course, if you want- It seems like a lot of these crypto things are scams. I don't know too much about them, though. I call out scumbags like David for scamming their fans. Did Ethan do a, an NFT or something? I'm on your side. But if you're gonna call someone out for doing something indefensible like that, you can't just turn around and do the exact same thing that you just called someone else out for. Oh, it's like getting slapped in the face. And, and and because it's so obvious, you you feel that they it's so disingenuous. So the first scam I want to cover is the H3 NFT collection, which Ethan seems to have really gotten away with. Because I've never seen anyone calling him out for this. And I think okay. the main reason why Ethan got away with this is- I think it's, uh, well, I think it's because uh, NFTs aren't like inherently a scam, but you see a lot of content. And I don't know the David Dobrik situation, I'm not gonna talk about it, but but there you see people like, it seems like with the Pauls, one of the Paul brothers, they will, um, they'll do like a pump and dump scheme, right? So- is because he pitched this to his audience as some sort of a joke, so he could make it seem like he was selling them ironically. We have a lot to talk about here. Hey, hey, we got some fucking tokens up at this bitch. I'm on, I'm on the, I feel like I'm on the, um, I'm on the BitConnect side of selling. I'm gonna make so much money right now from you fucking suckers. BitConnect! <laughs> I'm gonna just be straight up, BitConnect! Unfortunately, this just wasn't a joke at all. Jokes are typically okay. free. What Ethan did with his H3 NFT collection is the ex I mean. I don't think comedy's free, but okay. Exact same thing that Logan Paul did with his dink doink scam. I, didn't he do like a pump and dump? Is it the exact same thing? Or did he just have like an NFT? Where he pretended like he was shilling dink doink as a joke. You suck, you suck my dink, bro. I'm pretty sure it was a little more than that with, uh, there's a re not for nothing. Here's the thing, right? This might seem lazy, but if there was actually something here, CoffeeZilla would have torn into Ethan Klein like a fucking... Like Jared tears into Subway sandwiches, if you understand what I'm saying, okay? I and we would all be here laughing at him. That would be the fucking content of the goddamn century. We'd be, we'd be laughing at Ethan. This would be it. We'd be fucking dumpster in this guy. I kind of doubt that it is anywhere near Logan Paul. If there was like no response, dink. Dink. Oh my god. <laughs> He's dig doing shit talking about. Yeah. Wasn't he like pretending that he wasn't actually involved in it or something? I feel like there was a lot more to it. So meme coin and uh, it's fucking, it's hilarious. It's fucking hilarious. It's a coin, not an NFT. Okay, yeah, I'm not super educated on this type of stuff, but I don't think it's comparable. Of course, Ethan absolutely lambasted Logan for. So although the marketing could potentially be considered a joke. Yeah, but for why? What? Joke in both cases. I don't know. The part which I don't really trust this guy with this one. Involves exchanging money wasn't a joke at all because Ethan and the crew sold about a hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of these NFTs. So where is the joke? I'm looking for the punchline, but for some reason I just can't seem to find it. Can somebody okay. tell me how Ethan Klein isn't a straight scam artist? Looking at this chart, literally rug pulled okay. immediately. How? How did Ethan rug pull? <laughs> Did, uh, did Ethan engage in rug pulling? What like, whatever the fuck? That, I think that's when everybody just like dumps all their money out like in a day, right? Did he do that, or I don't understand? Guys, can we talk about how Ethan Klein is literally a scammer? There is no punchline. No one has bought one of these NFTs in three years. That doesn't matter. Did Ethan rug pull it? Like that's the question. Like that, uh, I don't think he did. We would have known about this. Um. Okay. So these investments, which he sold to his fans for thousands of dollars each, are now worth zero dollars. Well, there's a difference between it just like not working out versus somebody g dumping it and taking everybody's money and like dipping out, like destroying the coin. And you can't, oh, and you can't even, apparently you can't even rug pull an NFT. <laughs> I, listen, I'm uneducated, but you can't rug pull an NFT. It's basically just like an item on the internet, right? <coughs> Swallowed that wrong. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's just some item on the internet. It's like a picture. <coughs> Fuck. 
leave that in. Right. It's not the same thing as a coin that's comparable to a stock. I'm pretty sure I'm right about that. NFTs are just dumb internet pictures that you sell for value for some reason, and you get to say you own it. Um, and then um, that's an NFT, and then a coin is like some kind of a very volatile stock, right? And now that these NFTs are down 100%, Ethan has completely stopped talking about this NFT project, and he also- Wasn't that like a whole thing where somebody else was doing an NFT project and they approached people like Destiny? I think that's a little bit different, but okay. Hasn't refunded a single person who he scammed. But he didn't scam anybody. This guy's actually a weirdo. This guy's video is so weird. As a joke. You're fans. You're all. He didn't scam anybody though. Audience that trusts you got scammed. And instead of taking accountability for his actions, he's just moved on by instead criticizing other influencers <clears throat> for also scamming their fans through NFT projects. Yeah. What? You no, know, launch it. Launch an NFT, girl. That's what everyone's doing. That's what all the shady f pieces of shit are doing. Let's get you on the crypto. Now, of course, it's not like the issue of scamming your fans is exclusive to just Ethan. If you guys didn't know, Jake Paul also created an NFT project himself. And I'm not gonna lie, it's actually one of my favorite NFT projects of all time. What up, you dicks? The community, I'm sorry, violation. The community has grown like crazy over the past 24 hours. Uh, we're almost at 10,000 spermatosa on the Discord community, and we're just getting started. Predictably, stick dicks are now down 100%, just like the H3 NFT. And I'm bringing this up to ask this one question. Looking at these two charts, how in the world is Ethan Ethan any different from Jake Paul in this case scenario. But I don't think that this is what Ethan ever criticized. It was never whatever the fuck this is. It was the the pump and dump scan from the coins, and I'm pretty sure Coffeezilla like destroyed the guy over it. <clears throat> what are you? What the fuck is this guy talking about? He isn't. They did the exact same thing. They both created NFT projects with zero utility, which everyone knows you can just scream. It doesn't matter if it has no utility. What the issue is is if you. Uh, propose some kind of like a false promise who cares about the utility of it yeah everybody knows that there's no utility and that they're still buying it they're making an informed decision to buy a picture on the internet that anybody can screenshot <clears throat> there's no like rug pulling what screenshot and own for free but they both sold out of them because they were sold to their fans as investment opportunities okay and investments are not always perfect so and as a result of them both consciously deciding to take advantage of their fans, they both made a ton of money, and their fans ended up losing 100% of their money on that investment. So who, who cares? Who gives a shit? None of this matters. This is dumb. So just to make this as clear <clears throat> as possible, when it comes to exploiting fan loyalty for monetary gain, what? Ethan Klein is the exact same thing as Logan and Jake Paul. Ru wow, this guy... This guy killed his credibility. Oh, this guy pretty much assassinated his credibility uh, at this point. Um, <laughs> okay, guys, pretty sure that's a bit different, but you know what? Gotcha. Ruthless, cutthroat, morally bankrupt, and all around <clears throat> a haircut that makes you wonder Yikes. if their barbers are also in on the scam. Maybe, maybe say your okay. joke again, and we can all remember to laugh. Say it one more time. We can just all laugh afterwards, just so you feel good about yourself. Say it one more time for us. And all rocking a hair. We just shut the fuck up. <laughs> After the NFT debacle, Ethan then decided to funnel his fans' money what into an even bigger scam, Kraken okay. Crypto, which is a crypto trading platform which allows okay. users to buy and sell crypto. And the CEO of Kraken, Jesse Powell, actually ended up buying one of the H3 NFTs, so Ethan went out of his way to have Jesse on his podcast so he could promote Kraken. Okay. Interesting. Kraken. You really think it's yeah. still early? I think so. I think really? Bitcoin is, is, is going to be $500,000 oh, oh. Stop it. within a, the next few years. Huh. Yeah, well, look at how much money printing is going on. Hmm. Yeah, so, easily. Okay, easily, look, we're going to get we... to a million dollars in Bitcoin. And not only did Ethan bring the okay. CEO of Kraken onto his show, he then went on to accept Kraken Crypto as an official sponsor for the podcast, and Ethan started shilling Kraken like his life depended on it. You know Kraken Exchange, home by our best friend of the show, keep the man, Jesse Powell, the man from Kraken Exchange. Okay. Thank you, Kraken, so much. We love Kraken. So here's my thing. I think that crypto is um, it's a volatile market. It, my understanding is it's like stocks, but different, right? I'm not super educated on it. I don't think that the existence of crypto is the problem, though. I think it's when um, people will like, legitimately <clears throat> get a bunch of money into their crypto project, and then they will bail out once their piece, their basically their crypto stock is worth more money, which completely deflates the value of the crypto, and then people are basically get fucked over. That's my limited understanding. I don't really care that he plugged crypto unless he engaged in like a pump and dump scheme himself. <clears throat> 
Um, so I don't. Okay. I don't know if this guy. I don't know if this guy's being malicious towards Ethan. And again, I'm not saying Ethan's like this amazing good person, but I don't know if he's malicious towards Ethan or if he's just dumb and doesn't understand what he's saying and how these things are different. I don't know. <clears throat> it's kind of hard to tell because these arguments are silly. Jesse Powell, friend of the show, is the owner of Kraken. This guy is a solid, awesome dude, friend of the show. I would not hesitate to send everyone over to Kraken.com slash H3. Go to the Kraken app. With Kraken, you can buy and sell over 50 of the most popular cryptos like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and Ethereum. Guys, friend of the show, we love Kraken. So if you're interested in crypto, please consider go to Kraken.com slash H3. What's the, what's the, what's the um, state of Kraken right now? Of our most beautiful sponsor, Kraken, friend of the show, trusted partners. We love the Kraken. Guys, I'm going to emphasize Kraken, friend of the show. Jesse Powell's on the show. He's a great parent. He's a great guy. And Kraken's one of the most trusted companies in the game. So if you're interested in crypto or exchanges or whatever, please use Kraken. I just want to reemphasize, according to Ethan's own words, Kraken is a friend of the show. He highly recommends using Kraken, and it's the best option to buy crypto. <laughs> <coughs> Obviously, none of that is true. Kraken is one of the shadiest crypto exchanges out there, and that is proven definitively by by their 1.48 out of 5 Better Business Bureau rating. And oh, okay, that sounds pretty bad. In addition to being horrendously rated by their own customers, Kraken was fined $400,000 for violating U.S. sanctions against Iran. In February of 2023, Kraken also settled a $30 million lawsuit with the SEC because they failed to register the offer and sale <coughs> of their crypto asset staking as a service program, where investors would transfer crypto assets to Kraken for staking in exchange for advertised annual investment returns as high as 21%, which would literally break the entire world's economy if that was actually possible. I'm just, well, first of all, like, yeah, that doesn't sound good if anything it's not even it says it's not even rated by the better business bureau where did you get your rating I'm so confused <clears throat> how come you, this one that doesn't this is this isn't better business bureau rated these are customer ratings wait what who gives does that mean anything uh okay <laughs> Um, okay, I mean, like, it sounds like it was a shitty business to take money from, at worst. I don't, it's not the same thing as him engaging in a pump and dump, uh, so, okay. Like, I will generally agree that you shouldn't take sponsors from people unless, you know, you, I personally, like, wouldn't really want to take a sponsor unless I enjoyed the product. Um, and he probably, so he probably didn't, but also I don't care if he takes the sponsor, it doesn't seem like I don't. I don't. Okay, I don't know. A little irresponsible. It doesn't. Okay. And poor <clears throat> record keeping practices, which could potentially lead to losses for Ethan's fans and Kraken's <sighs> customers. Okay. It's also alleged that they commingled their customer funds with their own, which is essentially what Sam Bakeman Fried is in jail for right this second. So okay. Ethan basically promoted FTX. I might have just. Okay. Well, it's an allegation. I don't know if you'd like to run with allegations of their fact, but yeah, gotcha, buddy. Read a bunch of misinformation fuck it see if that's true <laughs> we made this one up it's a total fabrication in all seriousness where was ethan's due diligence into this company before accepting kraken as a sponsor because from the outside looking in that's a fine criticism but you're making it seem like he's the same as somebody who engages in legitimate pump and dump schemes looks like he took the money jesse threw at his nfts and immediately started unconditionally promoting kraken without even thinking about it twice and once again he's done and said absolutely nothing to write his fans that he's wronged yo this guy <laughs> ethan klein is so such a freaking did scammer. people did people get wronged by this cracking crypto specifically i mean there are bad reviews right that sucks but that doesn't mean that the entire service is so bad that people are like getting dumpstered on their investments i'm just saying like these are you'd have to show that more than just a bad rating on there you'd have to show i mean it sounds like they're involved in some shady lawsuit shit i get that but like what is the overall customer experience on there I hope this guy goes to jail. By promoting volatile investments like crypto without transparent disclosure of risks to his millions of followers, e I feel like if you're doing crypto, you should. It's kind of on you. You should know the risks yourself, but okay. Ethan has not only personally capitalized on his audience's trust in him, but he also led certain members of his audience to literally invest into Ponzi schemes, even by his own admission. Outside of like Bitcoin and Ethereum <clears throat> and like a few other ones that are really reputable and have like, I would just, dude, I feel like these are all Ponzi schemes where people are just trying to trick oh. someone else to buy so they are, they can sell it higher. Ethan's pro oh, Does he not take the, the, that, and I could be wrong. That insinuates to me that he no longer takes money from this Kraken thing and that he no longer, um, you know, validates it as a sponsor. And that's why he didn't include it in one of the reputable things. What?
Promotion of Kraken <coughs> wasn't just the endorsement of one singular crypto scam like Aiden Ross did with MILF token or his friend Tana Mon. But it wasn't a scam. Goose did with tits coin. The promotion of Kraken was a direct endorsement for his fans to buy and sell not just one specific crypto. Right, like but he's not actually engaging in the scam. <laughs> he was endorsed a bad crypto, whatever the fuck it is. So it's a little bit different. Like Bitcoin or Ethereum, it was him producing income directly off of his fans buying <laughs> and selling. This is a bit of a reach, whatever. All cryptocurrencies, which is a major contradiction to Ethan's words about crypto when he's not being bought and paid for by our guy Jesse. And I or maybe. Okay, whatever. I don't just even... love this thing Ethan does okay. where he intentionally positions himself as the good guy because he's lost out on sponsors as a result of them not working with crypto companies anymore. I'm still crying over all the Bitcoin sponsorships we've lost, though. All the crypto sponsorships we've lost as a result of changing our stance. Yeah. Sponsors love this thing Ethan does where he intentionally positions himself as the good guy because he's lost out on sponsors as a result of them not working with crypto companies anymore. I'm still crying over all the Bitcoin sponsorships we've lost, though. All the crypto sponsorships we've lost as a result of changing our stance. Yeah. Okay, so here's what I'm hearing is that they used to do crypto um, because they thought that there could be good versions of crypto and then they stopped doing it because they feel like they think it's too volatile. And now he's like, damn, I wish I was still doing it because it made a lot of money, but it is what it is. I'd take a stance against it. That doesn't really seem that bad. I don't under I don't really get the criticism there, but okay, cool stuff, man. <coughs> well, did your bank account change its stance back to the level it was at before the crypto scams, or did you first pocket hundreds of thousands okay. of dollars before just verbally changing your stance? I am this guy's so weird. This guy's like, a, this is a weird video. I am a YouTuber. I get offered to scam my fans. There's he's being sarcastic. Even if he's not being sarcastic, if I was taking a sponsorship that was giving me lots of money, and then I was like, yeah, I'm morally against that, and I was making less money, I would be like, damn, man, it is what it is, though. You know, that's just... Holding to your values, I guess. Always a crypto casino or crypto project or gambling. It's fine to say that he doesn't vet his sponsors and that he's irresponsible. That's fine. But this video is trying to make it seem like he's scamming his audience. <laughs> That's way different. Gambling website emailing me. <coughs> I never respond. And it's certainly not because I'm a good person. In fact, I am horrendous. I'm the guy who consistently team kills my teammates in Fortnite. <laughs> Yet, despite me being so awful, I still cannot bring okay. myself to stoop so low for money that I have the urge to financially ruin the lives of the people who are the only reason why I even have a career for personal gain, unlike <laughs> Ethan. Okay. If you don't give a fuck how you make your money then if you're an influencer you know crypto is a great spot look it's one thing to scam your fans but it's a whole other level of psychopathy to then turn around and criticize others for the exact same thing that you know for a fact you've already done i was talking about how crypto and nfts are pretty much scams and i'm over working with them or i mean i i've come to the real it's been a slow coming realization i mean obviously there's been like shit coins like safe moon i mean we sold nfts here on the show Right, that was just like an experiment. Oh, okay, guys. It was I just don't really understand. I mean, he just sounds like he's saying we used to sell it, and now it's been a long process of understanding that's really dog shit. Um, and I was my naive, naive to think that like they would be better. I mean, it seems like there are some good ones, but. <clears throat> I don't I don't really see what the dunk here is. It's an experiment. So according to Ethan, stealing about $150,000 oh and railing your fans with an NFT that's now down 100% and promoting boring. Ponzi schemes for money is totally fine okay. as long as it's just an experiment. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> How can one individual live for such an extended period of time and somehow manage to Jeez. actually become successful uh, in that period of time, yet lack self-awareness to this degree? This. He unironically awesome. just hit us with the, it's Wait, just a prank, bro, as if he wasn't one of the people who literally popularized <sighs> making fun of prank channels <clears throat> who say it's just a prank, bro. You have to love and appreciate that that he dropped a, it's just a prank, bro. <laughs> and if the crypto scams weren't enough, we also have the fact that Ethan has promoted gambling on his channel in the past, which of course he now explicitly speaks out against. So just to be clear, somebody doing something at one point and then stopping and saying it's bad is not something that makes them like morally reprehensible. <laughs> it's not really, if anything, you're kind of almost proving that he's made some positive growth. That doesn't mean that he is mature, but like you've kind of proving that he's matured at least in some capacity. So gambling is such a fucking venomous, Act, it's just such a toxic, poisonous activity. I know that Aiden specifically is very young. He's going to turn a blind eye to hooking kids to gambling, which is <coughs> extremely, extremely dangerous, damaging advice I learned the other day from Sonic. It's the worst of all, but exactly, they call it the deadliest advice because the most amount of people commit suicide from, yep. from getting addicted to gambling. I agree with him 100%, but as you probably know by now, the guy just can't handle having a good take without being a hypocrite. And if you have not tried DraftKings yet, head to the app. Sorry, I'm uh, fucking... Oh, it's just spitting up all my... I swallowed wrong before. Store now. How about no? <laughs> like, no? 
Now, Ethan didn't promote DraftKings extensively like he did with Kraken, which is definitely still bad because of the hypocrisy, but it's not the worst thing in the world like XQC or Trainwrecks who promote it constantly. However, my issue with his promotion of DraftKings is the fact that he completely lied when he tried to defend himself from people criticizing him for this hypocrisy. Oh yeah, and I did one DraftKings ad, like, must have been like six years ago. We did one DraftKings ad for fantasy football. On the podcast? Yeah, we did one DraftKings ad a long time ago, and the thing was it was for a fantasy, a fantasy football league. I didn't know, or I had clarified, is this sports gambling or is this just fantasy? And I I think they, I was under the impression it was just fantasy. We did one ad with them and never worked with them again. Almost every single word in that statement is verifiably false. First of all, they didn't do one DraftKings ad, they did two. And DraftKings, the leader, one day fan- Oh man, you got him on the, on two. Who would have, who would have, I can't believe you would have forgot that he did two after six years. What an asshole. Huh? Fantasy sports is putting you back into poverty. Lying on video like this is egregious. He's speaking into a microphone, looking directly into a camera lens, and just lying through his teeth. He might be lying, or maybe it's six years ago, and it was really, <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. There's so many other things to criticize this guy for. These are the most pedantic fucking criticisms. Then, posting the proof of him lying to the internet, knowing for a fact that one day someone like me would debunk it. It's yeah, like, just lie, 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 yeah. lie. Well, Whatever it is that you just he, lie about it. Thank you. Okay. He's a real psychopath. This is like really psychopathic behavior. Yeah, I agree. That is psychotic. Ethan also okay. claimed that he didn't know DraftKings was gambling. He thought it was just fantasy football, which I have- Well, I think he said he thought it was fantasy football gambling and not sports gambling. That's what I heard him say. Am I, was I wrong? A really, really <clears throat> hard time believing. One the leader one day fan looking to the internet yeah. Yeah. Well, whatever he, it is that you need just he, lie about it thank you he's a real cycle he didn't know DraftKings was gambling uh, tuned direct or football league I didn't know or I guess yeah we did one drafting ad a long time ago and the thing was it was for a fantasy a fantasy football league I didn't know or I, I had clarified is this sports gambling or is this just fantasy and I think that I was under the pressure I, th I think he's talking about fantasy gambling could be wrong Classic behavior just fantasy football which I have a really really thank you so much for the uh, nine month small gut from uh, Rissa God Am I saying that right? I'm convinced this video is satire. Maybe. Really hard time believing. One quick Google search proves that DraftKings has been in the sports gambling business since 2018. So either he's admitting that he doesn't do even an ounce of due diligence before um, he accepts a sponsor. That could be it. Again, I think I think what he was trying to say, he thought it was just um, he thought it was fantasy gambling, like fantasy sports. That's a thing. People make up their own teams and gamble. Maybe he's just, I don't care. This whole thing, there's so much of this is just so fucking stupid pearl clutching. He had a meltdown because Ethan sold NFTs <clears throat> and then he compared it to Jake Paul's like fucking or whatever, whatever Paul's like, like crypto scams. It's not even close to the same thing. Sir, or he's lying. Either way, not a good look. Okay. Next, Ethan <clears throat> says the ad was like six years ago, which again is a lie. Oh, that shit. clip what is from 2023. Oh, and the shit. Well, that actually is pretty bad. Of him promoting draft games <clears throat> are both from 2020. In oh, so it was three years ago. I thought you meant he said that in 2020. Okay, whatever. I guess that's. Uh, this is kind of bad, I guess. Okay, three years ago. Gotcha. In what world <coughs> could a three-year difference be considered like six years ago? He could have potentially right, forgotten small details. At the end of the day, he's human. But notice how every single thing he just so happened to misremember benefits himself. He, he's actually wrong about everything he's saying. It's incredible. You could just say anything you want. And people just, for some reason... Listen. Ethan and Hila's next quest to milk Peace. their fans out of <clears throat> their hard-earned money is their merch company, Teddy Fresh. And in my opinion, it is by far the worst, most manipulative, dishonest YouTube merch company ever created. I Why? What does it make it so bad? It's just fucking YouTube merch. What? Even go as far as calling it a scam, <clears throat> but first, let's set the ground. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm so confused. I feel like, okay, let's see. The biggest scam. <clears throat> work and like, I know that they had an issue where there were some people, like, taking patterns. Um, and I think that they fired those people and they moved on. Like, not good. Hey, that shouldn't happen. But, you know, they apologized and they fired the person responsible. And they should vet better. I'm imagining that they do. And we live and learn. Am I right? <clears throat> And take a look at exactly what the problems with Teddy Fresh are. First Dude, things first, so much farther. you basically Two, need to have one. a parasocial relationship with Ugh. Ethan and Hila to ever buy one of their merch items. If You're so, this is such a dumb baby video. Are you fucking kidding me with this? Please need to have a parasocial relation problems with Teddy Fresh are. First things first, we have the fact that you basically need to have a parasocial relationship with Ethan and Hila to ever buy one of their merch items. If what, what's the point of listening to this person anymore? That's how all YouTubers work. Nobody's going to buy Papa Gut merch unless you have a... Well, you don't have to have a parasocial relationship, just to be clear. Hold on a second. <coughs> Parasocial relationship isn't like, oh, I like somebody. It's like thinking that you know them even though you don't. There's a difference. Like, you don't have to have a parasocial relationship with Ethan to like his stuff. Uh, 
Yeah, so parasocial is uh, a dating relationship characterized by a one-sided, unreciprocated sense of intimacy felt by a viewer, fan, or follower, or for a, a well-known or prominent figure. Par- this guy is this guy is like buzzword canon, bro. This is so pathetic. Like, just stop. Like, you don't like the guy. It's fair that you don't like the guy, but you're sitting here and you're talking about oh, if the parasocial relationship to have a, to, to buy his merch. No, you don't. You just have to be a fan of him. Not every fan is somebody who's parasocial. So. <clears throat> what are you? Why are you saying it's so weird? It's very bizarre that he's doing this. You don't have to be parasocial to buy his stuff. I miss my fucking thing list. Damn. You don't have to be parasocial to buy his stuff. You just have to be a fan. So that's just a stupid statement to make in the first place. If we take a look at their website, there is not a single reasonably priced piece of clothing on the entire website. Yes, yeah, because my understanding is they do like a lot of it in America. <clears throat> so it's going to be more expensive. Okay, whatever. Ranging from also, I don't care if you're willing to pay that much money for Teddy Fresh stuff. Like, who cares? This one hundred and forty-five dollar Magic the Gathering jacket, whatever the okay. hell this is, for hundred and twenty dollars, or this okay. Fursona hoodie with <clears throat> bear ears that they're selling for only hundred and five dollars. Who cares? Just don't buy it then. Ugh. Brother, ugh. <clears throat> what's that? What's that, brother? Brother, I can't even begin to tell you what that is. These are so bad and so overpriced, Ethan and Hila owe both you and me money for even having the audacity to make us look at this garbage for free. So this is where the parasocial relationship aspect starts to come in. You see, where? Ethan makes well over 10 hours of content a week, and he doesn't okay. do that because he's so passionate about podcasting. That he does it because he makes money. Yeah, no shit. Nobody does videos on YouTube because they're passionate. I'm sure, well, ex exclusively because of that. Like the big factors, money always. What? Guy is lazier <coughs> than my dad on a Sunday night. That's one of my big problems, frankly, is I have a crushing disease of just being lazy. I just Same, bro. That's been Same. the obstacle my whole life. Just right. Persistent, aggressive laziness. So it's not okay. because he has some insane work ethic. Making the amount of content that they make is a calculated move that they've made in order to deepen those parasocial bonds with their audience. And what? what the fuck are you talking about? What? I think he does it so that he has three podcasts. That's why they make that content. What are you the fuck is this guy talking about? I'm so confused. When someone develops a parasocial relationship with their favorite creator, they start to develop things like the illusion of friendship with the creator. And I'm sorry. You made a claim that he does nine hours or ten hours of content a week to develop his parasocial relationships. Can you explain that to me? You can't make a claim without substantiating it. What the fuck is this guy talking about? And that leads to people being more inclined to doing <clears throat> irrational things, like buying a $150 hoodie or two, or maybe even an NFT. And Ethan and Hila know this to be true, so they really try hard to lean into the parasocial aspect as much as humanly possible. For example, some of the show's employees were literally just fans of the show before they were hired, like who cares? AB, who Ethan only knows because he made a video <clears throat> defending Ethan from Gokunaru. Who are you? Who are you supposed to hire? People that don't like your content? That's just dumb. <clears throat> you really should only be hired. It makes perfect sense to hire people who enjoy your content <laughs> because they'll have a better idea of like how to help represent you. Like you don't want somebody completely uninvested in you. You know, you don't want somebody obsessed with you, but you definitely want somebody that's like, oh, I like your content. Oh, cool. You, you'll be able to help me make better content. Not exactly the hottest take of the fucking century here, guys. 2018. And that leads fans to believe that they could potentially get hired there, too. Ethan also okay. refers to his fans as family. 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 Okay. Family. Family. I don't think it's that big of a deal when YouTubers have, like, a name for their group or whatever. I don't care. Stop! <laughs> <coughs> We're like a weird cult. <laughs> oh, they must have been being serious, guys. They're a cult. Friendliest of cults. Absolutely. Which I find to be hilarious because the last people on earth I would ever want to scam or promote gambling to would be members of my family. Okay. But I, I, I this, uh, there's like multiple moments in this video where this guy's like so weirdly like full of himself. He's like fucking humble bragging constantly. This is like the third time I picked up on it. I haven't said anything about the other ones, but like it's getting kind of annoying. <laughs> I would never do that to my family, my friends. All right, Vin Diesel, relax. It's not that fucking deep. Yes, Ethan disagrees. <clears throat> he also consistently reads the chat while they're doing the podcast live. He checks the comments. Apparently reading the chat is now feeding into parasocial behavior. Oh, fuck. Guys, get off my screen. <laughs> yeah, I'll read the chat too. I glanced over at it too. That's just being a content creator. 
comments on their subreddit on the show live, and that leads to posts like this. Did they order food today? I'm trying to decide on dinner, and I'll probably get whatever they order today while watching the episode, which should be a crime. Almost every other week, there's a new post which claims that this person who consistently takes time out of their day to post comments and make posts on Reddit. Them being parasocial is not the same thing as everyone being parasocial. There are some fucking weirdos out there that get too attached to you. Like, that's not... <laughs> they, okay. What the fuck? Who cares? Like, that's just those people need better boundaries. And they're probably satisfying some kind of fucking missing hole in their life anyway. But what the hell is happening here? <laughs> went on a date, which is obviously inherently impossible. And then they almost always mention how their date didn't like Ethan and how that's a deal breaker for them. Yeah, those are that's on those people. Which is just insane to me. Imagine going on a date and the first thing your date brings up is this cringe podcast they listen to. I don't, don't glance over enough. Yeah, true. Maybe. Yeah. Sorry, brother. <clears throat> for 20 hours a week. Yeah, that's on them, man. They're a fucking weirdo. Okay. That is crazy. We all know that real Riz involves nothing but repeating Alex Jones quotes word for word. See, okay. my superpower is being honest. I'll eat your ass. I will. And speak I'm a fan. speaking of insane, how could we forget the greatest H3H3 production subreddit post of all time? <sighs> this is like, this video is so, it, it's funny because like it starts off okay. It starts off decent. And by the, like, not even the middle, but by the middle, it's just dog shit. I think that it's intentional. I think it starts with some of the more reasonable criticisms, and then it gets into some of the most ridiculous criticisms. <clears throat> I think most people, <laughs> this video is terrible. I got Ethan tattooed, which I am absolutely not going to be making fun of this person for. I'm not okay, upset with I would. It's a little cringe, but whatever. Y'all, because I know you're mentally ill, which is why one day I'm going to open up a hospital for mentally ill. So Ethan and Hila intentionally do things to ensure that they build parasocial relationships with as many of their audience <laughs> members as humanly possible. Just to be clear, the things that they apparently do is make 10 hours of content a week res and respond, read the chat during their live streams. <clears throat> This video is psychotic. Um, I, this video is psychotic. I don't under I don't understand. I, this video is so stupid. Then they exploit those parasocial relationships for profit through excessive amounts of content creation and high prices for their garbage merchandise. That, that is their business model. Like I, I, this person probably just very disconnected or something. People like watching podcast ish type of people. That's why like I have any level of like relevancy. People are looking for like a person that they can identify with that is talking about topics and issues. That's literally it. This is like kind of the new way that it's going. I make a lot of content too, guys. Am I a predator? Like what's happening? It is unethical, manipulative, and anti-consumer. And while I understand building a community is central to content creation, you clearly don't. Exploiting those who support you through irrefutably overpriced merch is scummy, no matter. They how could just not buy it. I don't. Who cares? Just who gives a shit? How you cut it? Yeah, I agree. 100%, yeah. 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 Another major issue with Teddy Fresh is the fact that the company is inherently hypocritical. Which, of course, it is. It's co-owned by Ethan uh. Klein. But Ethan and Hila both do this act where they pretend to be against what's called fast fashion. Do not shop at Fashion Nova. It's bullshit. It's fast fashion. They make it in it's China. Horrible. It's disposable. If you can't afford it, I'm pretty sure that Ethan makes his stuff here. I think he might buy stuff from China, like a lot of some materials, I guess, but. <laughs> Fast fashion is literally the most polluting, one of the biggest polluters no, in the whole planet. Can afford seventy dollars jeans. Fashion Nova offers them for twelve dollars. Just buy one instead Up of size twenty. Bro, you also good point, Trisha. When it's cheaper, it's easier to buy. No, when you're buying jeans for. All right, so fast fashion uh, describes low price but stylish clothing that moves quickly from design to retail store to meet trends. Okay, I don't really see an issue with fast fashion to be honest with you. It sounds like it's good for the consumer. But... Twelve dollars, it's somebody <clears> dying. Fast fashion is essentially companies who emphasize speed and low cost to deliver frequent new collections, which often leads to significant waste and exploitation of labor. Which sounds like a pretty noble thing to be against. However, Wait, what significant waste? Wait. Companies who emphasize speed and low okay. cost to deliver frequent new collections, which often leads to significant waste and exploitation of labor. Sure. Which sounds like a pretty noble thing to be against. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, that's where, like, obviously, if you're exploiting labor, things are is going to be cheaper. However, <clears throat> despite the selective outrage, Teddy Fresh is literally a fast fashion brand. Hila, it seems like TF is turning into a fast fashion brand. Huh? And I was like, that's why I wasn't listening to you, because I was like, what? And it's the, <laughs> with the pace at which you guys are coming out with new stuff, is it even fair trade and environment friendly? Same as the toy. Is it the yeah, I mean, my understanding is that they work with, like, reasonably um, <clears throat> credible, like, f fucking, what is it called? Uh, I guess, like, infrastructure, whatever, fucking, that monitor that kind of stuff.
to try to make sure that they reduce harm as much as possible. Like, okay, whatever. Same as it always <coughs> been, and it's the same as any other fashion company. We work at them getting a lot of con uh, stuff out doesn't mean that it's like fast fashion. It sounds like you know they pay their workers well. You're ahead. Fast fashion is bad. Okay, my wife is telling me that. Okay, so now I agree. No, I, I get it. The exploitation of labor. I mean, I was just talking about from the consumer. It seems like it may not be terrible. And I mean, <coughs> it's nowhere near fast. No. Nice try. I don't know what you're even talking about. Unfortunately, pretending to be confused by a straightforward and reasonable statement like that just isn't a valid defense. Fast fashion doesn't literally mean it's designed fast. It's the concept of constantly shoving new products in the consumer's face and convincing them that they need this new style or trend. And because most normal... No, it's not. Fast fashion is... The, the issue with the fast fashion is that it doesn't pay people and it's just apparently very wasteful for the environment. <clears throat> That's... What is this guy talking about? It's not about getting a lot of stuff out. It's just about being wasteful. What the fuck is this guy on about? Normal people who don't live in $10 million mansions have limited amounts of closet space. Some people don't buy it. People end up buying new clothes and throwing out the old clothes that they have. And sometimes those clothes end up in landfills and okay. on a mass scale. Donate them to homeless people. I guess. That contributes significantly to environmental pollution. Fast fashion is not just about how quickly the clothes are made, but how the behaviors of the fast fashion companies negatively impact the environment. Also, keep in mind, this is the same company that sells shirts like this that says, our planet is dying, the ocean is rising, the air is poison, and I can't find a date. Now, the end is obviously a joke, but the shirt in general oh God, is an stuck. attempt to profit off of virtue signaling about how we need to save the environment. However, this is such a dumb argument. as we can clearly see here, this is the entire hire H3 crew on a private charter jet, which is inarguably one of the worst possible things for the environment. Yes, I agree that like that is a problem, right? Like it, I get it. Like, oh, you're taking a private jet. Like, if you're sure about the environment, you shouldn't be doing that. But I'm more, I don't care about that as much as like in the moment, what are the business practices? It seems like they work with like decent accreditation, accreditations, whatever it's called, accreditations, whatever. Uh, decent facilities or I can't remember the fucking word, but anyway, that will like monetize or excuse me, that will uh, engage in good business practice practices that reduce uh, taking advantage of labor. Right. And environmental waste. That's my understanding because we've, we've gone through this argument before. Um, so like, what's the real criticism here? Like, now, obviously it's their money. They earned it and they can do whatever they want with it. But what you can't do is hop on a charter jet under any possible circumstance. That's not an absolute last minute emergency. Then turn around and sell merch that insinuates you and your company care about the environment, either care about the environment and ride in a regular plane with the rest of us peasants. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to fucking get a private jet boy. No, I'm not going to do a private jet, but I would definitely do a... I definitely do like first class. Or get on a charter jet whenever you want and just don't say a word about the environment or try and profit off of environmental virtue signaling. It's really not that hard. Teddy Fresh's decision to manufacture their clothing in China also raises some significant ethics. Uh okay, right. They might manufacture China, I think, but they they absolutely they have some kind of a thing where apparently it's supposed Do they manufacture wait, hold on. Does Teddy Fresh manufacture in China? Uh, is that true? Ethical questions about the company. Now, obviously, just because something... Wait, does Teddy Fresh manufacture in China? ...is made in China does not in any way... Aut Thinking ethical questions about the company. Now, obviously, just because something is made in China does not in any way automatically mean that the clothes are bad quality, nor does it mean that they're definitively using slave or child labor. To no, they're most likely using like bad labor practices over there, and they're pretty brutal. Um, manufacture their products, unless you ask Ethan, of course. Trust me, that shit is made by children slaves in China. Don't sue me, please. Peace and love. Stop the Asian hate. <laughs> But their choice to manufacture their clothing in China does tell us a lot about the brand's lack of integrity. The primary issue with Chinese manufacturing is the fact that the Chinese government exerts full control over labor unions, which severely limits the... That's my understanding is that they source the product and then they manufacture in the States. Is, am I wrong about that? I guess I have to look into that. ...ability for workers to form independent unions and effectively advocate for better conditions and rights. And that is a real problem with Chinese manufacturing that Ethan and Gila will conveniently never even begin to acknowledge because it's the... App yeah, this is one of the major eyebrow raisers for Teddy Fresh. It's manufactured in China. PewDiePie manufactures stuff in China, uh, Canada. That's possible to be completely ethical. Oh, we openly miss it. Okay, then this is a good point. I thought, I for some reason, I thought that they manufactured in America, but they got the resources from China. <coughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Apparently, I'm wrong about that. Why did I think that they weren't made in China? Oh. 
absolute truth. And My understanding is they still work with some kind of um, company that's supposed to make sure that they actually do make sure that they get their uh, that there is no like you know negative labor being used. But okay. There is no valid argument that you can make to defend that. And as a couple which pretends to espouse progressive values, I'm not going to lie. I would have thought they would at least place an ounce of emphasis on the importance of pretty simple things like workers' rights, fair wages, etc. for the people that they produce income off of. If e Well, I'm pretty, um, again, I know that he works with like like these weird, uh, f I can't remember the goddamn name of the fucking agencies. I don't remember what video we looked at it in, but he works with like a business that engages... <sighs> In making sure that they like fucking utilize, like, get the product well or something like that. Ethan and Gila truly cared about the values that they pretend to preach. The U.S. has plenty of manufacturers that can ethically produce their significantly overpriced clothing. My favorite socialist and Ethan's former podcast co-host Hassan Packer has a Packer. totally not capitalistic merch brand where they manufacture all of their clothing in the U.S. and uh, their prices are still significantly lower video? than Teddy Fresh. So I have to give credit where credit is this due. Is although the guy is definitely a red-blooded American capitalist. Hassan Hassan's merch line same somehow manages to fit the vision of Teddy Fresh a thousand times better than Teddy Fresh itself does. And now that we have undeniable now, evidence guys... that you can ethically oh. produce merch in the US and still produce income off of it. Oh wait, wasn't it this guy that brought this up last time? Yeah, he made a whole thing about Teddy Fresh, didn't he? Isn't he the one? Your account, which is a... Oh, interesting website which allows people to see reviews from people who work there, it's not looking too good for the clients. 3.3 out of 5 is an objectively <clears throat> horrific score, and given how much income this company produces and how much Ethan and CLA make, uh, and okay, we're rich. They're most likely paying these people well. It's obvious that these people actually hate working there so much, they're choosing to leave bad reviews on their account. And we have to keep in mind, these are just the people who took time out of their day to write these reviews. It doesn't paint the whole picture. I can imagine what's going on behind closed doors is far worse. And I also find it very hypocritical that as much as Ethan pretends to care about social Teddy Trash to PewDiePie and his wife's merch brand, Tazuki, I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly, but they have an entire page on their website that explains exactly how and why their clothing is ethically sourced. And that's great. Me personally, couldn't care less. To the best of my knowledge, I've never bought any ethically sourced clothing once in my life. Wait, so, he, wait, how come he didn't add this into his thing? Is this going to be brought up in a second? Well, none of it is. If we compare Teddy Trash to PewDiePie and his wife's merch brand, to Isn't there, like, some kind of ethical sourcing that they engage in? I could have swore he brought it up. What exactly is stopping Ethan and Gila from at least trying to work with a union shop in a country know. where we could come as close as possible? Yeah, to you know, this is a fine criticism. I, I don't really care too much about the um, about their clothing line, but sure. My understanding is that they work with something to try to make sure that they reduce like harm, but you know what? Maybe this is a good criticism. They should work in like America exclusively. Ensuring safe and regulated working <clears throat> conditions for those who work for them. In China, they do. Oh, it was Keffels? Keffels. Oh, shit. Stuff that like you can't get done here. Was it? Right? And I they're 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 great at it. They're the best at it. The conditions are good. And if you try to do what you do in China here, if people think clothing is expensive, try making it in America. I mean, like a hoodie like this, if you made it in America, first of all, I just gotta say, I mean, I can tell you right now, I, I work with uh, unionized domestic manufacturers, and uh, finding like garment production with those standards has been probably the most difficult part of the process. You may not be able to, and if you do, the hoodie like this is gonna run. Hundreds. Oh, okay, so that's what's stopping them. Lies. Because according to Ethan Klein, a man who's been in the merch business since 2017, by the way, a U.S. manufactured hoodie will run you hundreds. So I was wrong. Hassan's merch brand is actually a socialist organization. They spend $350 making these hoodies and sell them for $35 at a 90% loss. I'm a capitalist, bro. I love capitalism, dude. It's my, it's my favorite thing. It's like a kink, really. In all seriousness, Ethan... Okay, this is the video I'm referring to, apparently. Nerds as such a luxury clothing brand owned by Yila. They uses your platform as a vehicle for selling merchandise. If you go to the ethics and sustainability section of their website, it says, At Teddy Fresh, it is essential that all our production partners pass stringent audits to ensure our facilities are abiding by and surpassing the global standards for ethical labor practices. These third-party auditors include RAP, Smeta, and Amphory BSCI, who certify there is no child labor or unfair labor practices. Now on the surface, it seems fine, but... Okay, yeah, that's what I saw. Yeah, that doesn't seem like that big of a deal. Does that mean everything is perfect and great? No, but that seems like decent. I don't care. Um, should he do it in American stuff? Sure, yeah, I guess. Or, you know, but uh, also that seems Let's fine. Um... Let's take a deeper look because nothing is as it seems. RAP stands for Worldwide Responsible Accredited Production. And then she goes on to talk about how... Um some of these businesses have or some of these accreditation accreditations have had an issue before or one of them has had an issue before uh so okay cool yeah that's what i was looking for got it i mean i have this i'll link my video i guess in the description i'll try to remember but okay Gila's profit margins would go down if they stopped working with their current Chinese manufacturers, so they're just not going to do that. What's going to happen is Ethan will continue sitting on his high horse, and he's going to continue criticizing others for the exact same things that he consciously okay. chooses to do. The most obvious signs would include use of words associated with unions or union-led movements like living wage or steward. 
<laughs> living wage. If anyone mentions living wage, report them. Grievance. Living wage. What the f***? That's not a union word. That's someone who wants a living wage. Okay, moving on to the next uh, crime here. Stealing designs from a smaller oh, designer. Our favorite. Yeah, we're very familiar with this. You heard it. <laughs> here first, ladies and gentlemen. According to Ethan and Hila themselves, uh, they're very familiar with stealing designs. And, of course, Ethan okay. has criticized other clothing brands for stealing Yeah, I think that they've talked about it before. They talked about how they had some people coming up with similar designs and that they um, fired the individuals doing that. And, yeah, so... Designs, and he's also pointed out that one indicator of a fast fashion brand is the fact that they often steal designs to increase turnaround time. So these fast fashion companies, they literally do like what James Charles did, but even worse. They just mass produce, they rip off the time. Now, I allege that Teddy Fresh steals designs in my last video on Ethan, but despite the evidence that I provided, there was still some room for it to potentially be debatable. This time oh, around, I'm going to fun. provide undeniable, irrefutable evidence that Teddy Fresh steals designs. Here's the deal, I'm the best there is, plain and simple. I mean, I wake up in the morning, I see it's excellence. And nobody can hang with my stuff. Uh, you know, I'm just a, just a big, hairy American winning machine. First things first, I found the alleged H3H3 Productions Pinterest account. You can find... But didn't they already admit this, though? I don't understand. They've addressed... They've said they've admitted this before, didn't they? That's they've like, yeah, we had this problem. Fucked up. <laughs> that just, okay. And this by just Googling H3H3 Productions Pinterest. As we can see here, it was linked to their Google Plus account. And this picture here is a screenshot of what I believe I think to it be was Ethan's a Instagram. It was a mixture between two things. One thing was that they had some people like taking designs and they fired them. And so another thing is that they buy some of these like patterns or material so that, like they can use some of the designs or something that's so whatever gram feed because as you can see here this was his old profile picture also if you look through some of these glass door reviews one of the former employees who allegedly worked there directly claimed that they steal designs off of pinterest way before the pinterest account became public knowledge now none of that <sighs> There is no real creative direction coming from the top either, other than some hand-drawn illustrations. Most of the major direction will come from Pinterest boards, samples from other brands, or vintage samples. Okay, interesting. Um, why is this sentence copied twice? Okay. That they steal designs <coughs> off of Pinterest way before the Pinterest account became public knowledge. Now, none of that is 100% definitive, but on this Pinterest account, we can also see that they saved this design from Prada. And as you can see here, they then went on to create almost the exact same product and sold it as their own. Coincidence? I think not! But let's be charitable and just say the Pinterest account isn't actually theirs. Regardless, they absolutely, positively, still to this day, steal designs from other companies. For example, Steela Klein recently posted this picture in denim teddy theft overalls. And as you can see here, this is almost the exact same product that Tommy Hilfiger was selling in the 90s. Okay, I feel like this, who cares about this? It's a, it's a fucking... It's a pair of fucking overalls and a shirt. I, I don't think that you can... I don't think that this is really constitute a design. This is a general design. In ge okay. All right. Okay. Uh, I feel like this one... This isn't like a... This isn't like the picture of the bear they stole from a video game or something. This is a little different. I feel like... It's a little different, but okay. Almost 30 years ago. Then we have these pants, which are just outright hideous, which they also most likely stole the design of, and that's verified by the fact that the branding is in almost the exact same location in these nearly identical pants. Then we have this one, which is Got him, guys. obviously a Teddy very, theft, very baby. simple design, but it's also an undeniable inch-for-inch inch copy of Supreme Hoodies and Beanies. I don't care. It's just putting their logo. Okay, sure. You know, I don't care. I, I... The box okay. logo branding is in almost... Uh, sue them, guys. Get them. Sue them for that. Supreme, I'm sure you never saw this before, so go get them. Almost the exact same spot, and they copied the colorways exactly. Here, I think they stole this design from Philip Pline. They changed the head of the teddy bear a little bit, but if you look at the shoulders, you can see that they're the exact same shape. Got them. Proving we got them, guys. Bring them to jail. The alleged Bring them to justice, baby. I could go on for days here, but I'm sure you get the point by now. Now, Bring just to, to clarify justice. this, when you're doing a Kill creative them. job like creating clothes or making a video Sorry. or starting a podcast, there is absolutely no problem uh... with taking inspiration from something or someone. Everyone does that. However, there is a massive difference between between inspiration and theft. What Teddy Fresh does is theft. Then they turn around and accuse others of stealing designs from them. So here's a hoodie, and then here's our hoodie. It's the same sleeve color, Hi, teal and purple. 
the same body color. It's just a little- Yeah, and then they, so then they lost that case, and it was okay for what James Charles did. So they maybe they decided like, okay, if the bar is on the floor for some of these things, like why not? Like we, as long as they're operating with, I don't really care as long as they're operating within the law. That's where I come from. They probably are. I don't really care too much. That's probably what happened to them. A little lighter, really. Same color. Even the hood and the drawstring are yellow. <clears throat> the sleeves are yellow. I, I mean, it's 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 literally yeah. exactly the same. Now, James absolutely did copy Teddy Fresh. The colors are the exact same. That's undeniable, and he should be called out for that. But the reason why I'm bringing this up is well, yeah, he did, but nobody cared, so it was like legally fine. That was the issue, right? So because Ethan and Hila <clears throat> like to use the argument of blaming everything on their employees whenever the company that they own gets called out oh, for stealing yeah. designs. Okay, Teddy Fresh, we have designers, right? And it's a big, we have a fairly large company. This is a common problem. That's also true. We don't know if they licensed it if they, when they called them out. That's, pro that's possible. I don't know if it's true, but... In all streetwear, we've had designers who, who have pretty much close to stole designs. We fired people over it, and every time it comes up, we have company meetings and say, "Guys, this is unacceptable. If we've, you're caught doing this, mm -hmm. you will be fired." And we've made a strict guideline, and it doesn't happen anymore. What have it you hasn't done? What have you done yeah. to prevent it? However, they must have forgotten that they made this exact opposite argument on video against James. But I love that he thinks that if he personally <sighs> didn't know about the hoodie, then it's yeah, you're right. A bit hypocritical. Sure. It's fine. Okay. It's like no, you run a company. Your employees maybe stole the design, and you didn't know, but. It well, I guess the difference here would be that Ethan, they apparently fired the people rather than just be like, oh, you know, so. It's still your product. I'm still going to talk to you. I'm not going to go talk to one of your employees. So I would give them the benefit of the doubt here, but they unfortunately just mm. haven't offered that same charitability level, to bro. others. By the standards that they held James to, Ethan and Hila are just as guilty as James. And when Ethan debated XQ Cucks on how he steals content, he accused them of stealing designs. And when he said that, they had the audacity to claim that their stealing is defensible. Holy shit, I'm going to come at you guys for stealing some designs. Jesus Christ, bro. <laughs> defending XQC, I like XQC, but defending him here is fucking hilarious. You're being pretty silly but ours is defensible yours is not or at least we've made it's not defensible but anyway thank you know what i mean i don't see oh, this conversation going much. guys guys it is defensible thievery guys they no, no I, it, I i i it's I, stealing in the right yeah, way no I, I i i retracted that as soon as i said it right what you heard i said we, we we've corrected the error uh, an understandable yes. error uh in my opinion although ethan okay did verbally retract i mean i i do commentary uh like reaction i guess you'd say but the xcc doesn't provide anything significant to a video you just fucking and i still like xcc i don't care by the way so but okay whatever that <clears> almost <throat> immediately the problem is they haven't actually corrected this oh, at all do, as of me writing this this blatantly excuse. stolen design from tommy hilfiger is still up for sale on their website Who? i don't give a shit it's a fucking it's a fucking it's a pair of overalls dude like you're always gonna see similarities like oh oh these two people made pairs of jeans this isn't really a design. I don't, who gives a shit? Like, this is such a fucking pearl clutchy video. It's a pair of overalls. There are uh, overalls all look very similarly. All right. This doesn't, who cares? Overalls at a fucking tube top. Like, this doesn't matter. This is, I guarantee you that this falls under, like, this is all legal. And then the comparison that they made where they had, like, the fucking overalls in the tube top, I'm sure was all legal. I don't care as long as they're doing it legally, which they obviously most likely are. So this whole thing is like, who gives a fuck about like most of this shit's like, fucking crazy. The core issue here is the fact that the owners of this company are clearly 100% complicit in the fact that their here. company steals designs, which is why I could make a whole separate 30 minute deep dive video into uh, all of the designs that Teddy Fresh has plagiarized over the years. But because I'm a nice guy, I will show some restraint uh, and not do that. And just to clarify this, there are licensing agreements that are done behind the scenes for certain designs in the clothing industry. And they like to hide behind that fact because those licensing agreements do not need to be publicly disclosed How okay or maybe they're telling the truth i don't know however teddy fresh stole this design from this man named gary kennedy's knitting book which is just inexcusable i genuinely can't imagine being so creatively uninspired that i have to steal directly from a knitting book but they did admit to stealing the design from that book and then they decided to release a collaboration with gary kennedy the man that they stole from i will Oh, that sounds good. I'll admit that it's great that they corrected the error, but if you're a multi-millionaire selling $70 t-shirts, you absolutely have the money and profit margins to pay designers to produce original clothing. So so just to be clear, it's not like your only actual real like criticism with this is probably that you could say uh, it's possible that they created such a toxic work environment where they had such high expectations of getting um, different clothes out that it drove people to start copying designs that's probably your best argument to be made right <laughs> i don't really care about that argument um 
But that's probably your best argument to be made. It's inexcusable to still be stealing designs till this day, and it's even more inexcusable for Ethan to ever criticize any other fashion or merch brand. I, like I'm work. against fa fast fashion. It's very bad for the world. And usually they steal their designs too from other people. I think I'm just saying. Fresh has been accused of stealing some designs from. Really? Like, mm, I don't I think so. So regardless of whether or not they even steal designs, Teddy Fresh is a complete scam in my opinion. Every single aspect about this business, from the way they get customers in the door to the way that the clothes are produced to the products themselves to the blatant hypocrisy of the owners, is absolutely atrocious. And most importantly, their pricing goes to show exactly how delusional and disconnected from reality Ethan and Gila are nowadays. I think part of the appeal of these two back in the day. Was was how normal they appeared to be, and now Ela Klein is busy shilling $120 sweaters. They stole the design, then offered the artist a hundred, uh, a whole collab that was 100% paid for this time. Yeah, okay. And telling people 35 is too cheap for a T-shirt. Is this really, from your perspective? I'm gonna ask you seriously. I, is this good merch? It's very good. 35 is too cheap. 35 is too cheap. Okay. It's too cheap? Yeah. Yo, is this person fucking rich? Yes. If you're comfortable publicly saying 35 is too cheap for a t-shirt that's been made in China, you're no longer living in the same reality as the rest of us. Oh, oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That is so no, delusional. And speaking of delusional, Ethan tries to do this straw man argument where he pretends like people only call him greedy because of his identity. I feel like people make that characterization against me because I'm Jewish. Let me explain. If you compare me to any other creator, I'm just as money driven as any of them. But for some reason, I get this label as like money driven and greedy and all this, even though I'm doing literally the same thing as everybody else. He's acting like it's impossible for those who dislike him to separate individual behavior from vague stereotypes. Yeah, I mean, I disagree generally. Like what he said, I think he's being silly there and he's being a little, he's just like using his identity as a shield there. Sure, that's a good criticism, fine types which define millions of individual human beings. I obviously can't speak for everyone, but when people call Ethan greedy, I would assume it's because he's publicly done things which only a greedy person would do. For example, I haven't even mentioned the H3 Ball Rider app, which was nothing but a microtransaction filled cash grab. And when you combine that with the DraftKings, with the NFTs, with the Kraken Crypto, with the overpriced partially stolen design clothing that's made in China, with the channel memberships, with the I fucking, I'm creatively uninspired by this video, dude. I can't believe we saw like fucking 50 minutes of this left. The ad revenue, with the sponsors, with the real estate. Oh of course, at a certain point, it's totally reasonable to call someone greedy without being anti-Semitic. Every time okay. we do anything and make any money, it's all about, oh, I'm Jewish and I'm greedy. Come on, man. No. I don't know. Maybe some people have made that argument. I haven't really seen it. I don't really give a shit. It's not. There is a lot of anti-Semitism uh, anti online, so it has high, uh, riled up with the whole Israel-Palestine situation going on. So it's Obviously, there are real cases of anti-Semitism, and that should be condemned to the highest degree. I am the least anti-Semitic person that you've ever seen in your entire life. I love you, Trump. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I honestly don't believe that Ethan gets called greedy because he's Jewish in most cases. Uh, some people probably do. But yeah, most cases, sure. I think there's plenty Fine. of evidence here which proves that he probably gets called greedy because he's just as greedy as every other mm. influencer. The Save the Kid coin was like a legitimate like pump and dump scam. I don't know what you're talking about. Who also publicly scammed <coughs> their fans. How much money do you need to... I mean, Ethan has not... So just to be clear, Ethan's never scammed his fans. He had an issue where he was selling um, some unlicensed merch, which is a problem that they seem to have rectified and addressed. Definitely a problem. Definitely worth criticizing. Um, and like they did do like the whole uh, Bitcoin thing where they, so what was it? They sold Bitcoin Kraken or whatever. Then he later said like, this is wrong. He took a sponsorship for gambling, which he later turned around and said, this is wrong. Like, that's just, like, personal growth. I'm not even trying to sit here and defend the guy. It's not like, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't jerk off to the concept of defending Ethan Klein. But when he's right, he's right. So I don't really, yeah, I mean, it's just, okay. All right. To me. Why yeah. do you need to scam people for an extra billion? Your bank is already worth trillions of dollars. What? I don't understand that level of greed. Like wealth is useful to an extent. If you have a billion dollars, what what is an additional dollar worth to you? And just as my annual PSA to the YouTube community, when influencers like Ethan publicly scam their fans, they do make money and a lot of it at that. But they also get placed at the top of my list. I will look for you. I will find you. <laughs> top of my list. I'm gonna get them. And I, will keep and I just will not stop until I have extensively documented these scams for everyone to know just how scummy some of 
these YouTubers like Ethan are. Because I'm gonna jack them's cock off too. Once the people know that, long term, these con artists actually end up losing money in most cases because we work in an industry that is 100% based on the people. Well, it's not shady. He said, yeah, it probably shouldn't be priced as high if it's made in China, not scam. It's just shady. Um, so one thing, it wouldn't be shady. It would be greedy. That's fine to say it's greedy. If they are ethically sourcing it, um, it's possible that the prices are reasonable if they're paying people like a good amount of money. I don't know how like the pipeline or infrastructure works. If they're paying the Chinese labor decent money, um, you know, then maybe it's not so bad. I don't really know. I'm not, I don't really care too much. That would be uh, probably impossible to like really prove. Um, but yeah, sure. And on a mass scale, the people will not continuously support creators like Ethan, who they know Where for a the fact would have stolen every dollar Too from them slavery. if they could have. Don't tell me you're innocent. What? Because it insults my intelligence. It makes me very angry. I'm gonna watch everything you do for 20 years and uh, don't find anything you've ever done bad in your whole life. I'm gonna try to ruin your life. I'm gonna follow you everywhere. I just despise this stupid little skin. Yeah, he's such a grifter. You cannot change your mind. If you ever change your mind, you are wrong. And you're a phony, actually. You creep. You filth. You're castrated by your political well, ideology. When it comes to... I think... Uh, okay. I think... Uh, I don't think he was saying that, like, and as if you believe that. Just to be clear, that's the insinuation from this video, but okay. Politics, Ethan... Sound like he was criticizing somebody else. Klein is one of the biggest frauds in all of America, and I think that's quite ironic because he often uses the term grift. I, it's, it's very difficult to say that Ethan Klein is a fraud politically. Um, I, I'm not saying he's the most intelligent person, but like after his Israel Palestine take, like if he was trying to just grift for attention, I, I do think he's very susceptible to his audience. I'm not saying that he's not. I think he's very susceptible to audience capture. <clears throat> but like he doubled down on the Israel Palestine take, even though people were like screaming at him and saying that he was like, like wants uh, Palestine needs to be genocided, which is obviously not true and ridiculous. So, as an insult to the people that he doesn't like. People hate me. He's a he's a total grifter. I think she's actually a grifter like the true sense. A grifter pseudo guru Russell Brand. Okay, let's just be clear. We're gonna go through these. To the people that he doesn't like. Tim Pool hates me. He's a uh, Tim Pool. I don't really watch enough Tim Pool. He like when it comes to his trans shit, he's obviously fucking dumb as shit. Uh, he's a total grifter. I think she's actually. Uh, Pearl is legitimately a grifter. Pearl is an actual obnoxious grifter. She's a, a worthless person. So. Grifter like the true sense. And grifter pseudo. Uh, Russell Brand. I don't know if he's a grifter. He's an interesting person. <laughs> I don't know too much about him. Guru Russell Brand, being a right-wing grifter is one of the best things in the world, but I feel like he's such a grifter. You fucking grifter, scam artist, openly racist, a loser. This is what really makes me think Charlie Kirk is a straight-up grifter that doesn't even believe that he says. And what makes Ethan such a grifter in terms of politics is the fact that a big part of his come-up on YouTube was making content that could be classified as anti-SJW, where he would essentially just clown on irrational people for being irrational. You have to understand, yeah. in 2016, things were very, very different than they are now, and making anti-SJW content was by far the most profitable back in the day. So, Ethan being the man of principle that he is, decided to hop on the trend i feel like oh so now you're wait hold on a second now what are you saying that i thought his old i thought you guys liked his old content now you're saying it was all a grift from the start this this video perfectly encapsulates how crazy the social justice warrior has gotten how sensitive these people are you want my name yeah sure it's humongous okay humongous humongous what humongous what humongous what humongous humongous what Humongous. I feel, <laughs> you imagine he was going to say something else? Humongous cock. And even if he had said humongous cock, it would have still been funny. This person just, sex, just, just spoke to me in a sexually harassing oh, way. I did not. Yeah, he did. He, he was going to. I think he might have. Looking at it now, he was probably going to say some shit. <laughs> humongous balls. That's what I would have said. And that would have been funny. Uh, he said, do you know what my name is? And I, I said, what? And he said, humongous. What? <laughs> humongous. <laughs> humongous balls. Yeah, yeah. This person just sexually harassed me. Oh and here's the craziest goodness. twist. She's the one who uploaded this video. And what made those videos stand out back in the day was the fact that Ethan wasn't hateful at all when he made those videos. It wasn't humongous wiener some attack on the left or liberalism, he made jokes about insane people. Nowadays, I am 100% comfortable labeling him a far left extremist, just like the people he used to make fun of. Impossible. He literally cannot be a far left extremist. 
If he was a far left extremist, he would be fucking calling for the death of his own people. This guy has no idea what the fuck he's talking about. For example, he is one of the biggest advocates of cancel culture on the entire internet. As I mentioned earlier, he unconditionally supports attacking people's sponsors, he and he even celebrates when those who he subjectively man. dislikes get deplatformed. So anyway, he got banned, so we'd love to see it. Yeah, good. You should celebrate Sneeko's ban. Sneeko's a fucking idiot who didn't have to get banned, but he didn't listen. People around him were telling him, you gotta chill the fuck out. He was like, he did the, they fucking, Nick is not going to talk about how he simulated sexual assault. It was ridiculous. But he was like sexually harassing that Chad, Chad girl by like talk, like being very like intense about it. If you ever did that at work, you'd get fired. Um, he kept being like hyperbolic and ridiculous. And then he, after he got a ban, he ban evaded by posting on his other account. Like, okay, like he got banned and he, I mean, he deserves it. There are people saying similar things to him. That exist. You have the whatever podcast, Red Pill Idiot podcast, not demonetized, and that's fine. I don't. Want, I don't think they should just be demonetized. Okay. You have like the Daily Wire people, not demonetized on YouTube. They're all saying like you know more conservative things. Sneeko is trying to be provocative for attention because there's nothing else that he has other than to be provocative. So if, like I, I find one of the things that's interesting about this video is that um, it refuses to take a stance on bad people. Like you, and then shames and criticizes Ethan for taking a, bit, a stance on bad people, right? Like, what's your opinion on Dick Ustro Pearl before? Just probably things. This is somebody who's made an entire career out of, like, literally grifting um, and just insulting women, despite the fact that she looks like the most effective scarecrow in a fucking cornfield. And it's like, you know, what's your opinion on this person? You're like, oh, he's such a bad person for celebrating this person. Yeah, she's a, she's a disrespectful piece of shit. Like, okay, yeah, it's funny that she got demonetized. And she got demonetized because she, without a, she recorded a 15-year-old girl's uh, shit without her consent, posted on the internet when she was asked to take it down. She didn't, so YouTube demonetized her. Okay, cool. Like, See you, partners. See you, partner. <laughs> Count fan of the year 2020. The winner, by a very close margin, is Leafy... Yeah, Leafy makes ex and very extreme content. Like now, on what was he doing on Rumble? Just like being openly like saying like wild shit to trans trans people, like transphobic shit. And by the way, it's fine if you don't think that trans people are valid. Whatever, I don't give a shit. I mean, I obviously disagree with you. But he was going out of his way to be intentionally disrespectful for attention, and it just didn't work out. People are like, oh, this is just kind of cringe. Like it's just low brow humor. It's like boring. Like okay. Leafy, who lost it all, he was banned on YouTube and Twitch. So that's his livelihood. That's he's what pretty about? much yeah. He's pretty much off. He's like Alex Jones, like, see ya. In addition to that, he also consistently okay. wishes death upon those who disagree with his personal political opinion. <laughs> consistently, huh? Opinions. I was just going to say, if there's another <laughs> some people start oh, rounding up the Jews. So just to be clear with that Ben Shapiro thing, I don't think it was right, but our Ethan's argument uh, is that he's uh, working with people who are basically like fucking Nazi sympathizers, which I don't think is true. But if another Holocaust came, that he would hope that it was him that would go next as like some kind of like poetic, you know, whatever. It's not right. He got banned for it. It's not good. Um, but sure. Okay. This. I just say, if we they start rounding up the Jews again, I hope Ben gets first. Or last. If anybody is going to round up the Jews, though, it's going to be conservative. So let's just be real. Okay, just be clear. Well, actually, that might not be true anymore. I mean, now, fucking Jesus Christ, progressives are going crazy. About there at the NRA meeting that's today in Texas. Yeah, in this NRA meeting, again, I don't really like emotionally, I don't care that he said what he said. I don't really think it's that big of a deal. Again, there was a Uvalde shooting. Like, I think it was 19 kids and, and two teachers were murdered, and the police didn't go in there or show up. And then. Um, what within the same month there was a an NRA meeting in Texas. It was incredibly insensitive. Again, he deserved a ban for that. I understand that. Um, but like, I'm not gonna sit here and be like, oh wow, terrible. Like, if you had kids and they were shot, you would be sympathetic to this. So, like, with the context, it's not perfect, but I don't think it's this morally horrible thing that he's saying. So much of that building. Mm -hmm. Is it bad advice to say like go outside Ted Cruz's house and just air? Yes. 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 Oh. Those are. I think he just said shoot guns in the air, and that was related to the Uvalde shooting too. Some of the most hateful and atrocious clips I have ever seen. And the fact that he hasn't faced significant repercussions for- He got banned for a week for both of those things. This behavior Seems is a massive better. problem in my opinion. Disgusting. Okay. Absolutely disgusting. disgusting. Now, I know that some of Ethan's fans would argue that anything Ethan ever says can be Ooh, written off as an was... innocent joke. What the but fuck? using Ethan's own words, we can immediately. It's not an innocent joke. I just understand that, like, not everything needs to be met with like, the most extreme consequences in existence. Immediately disprove that false narrative. Extremists, uh, it's a well known tactic where they, yeah, they mask really extremist things as jokes to probe the limit of what they can get away with saying. So sure, and that's exactly what he was doing. And that's why he got banned for it. No. Okay. Oh, Ethan, are you masking your extremism with jokes or? Yes. 
Yes, like that. He was extremely upset over children getting shot, and then he uh, made a bad joke he shouldn't have made, and he got banned. Or is the audience only expected to recognize your <clears throat> genuine stances when it aligns with your interests? Okay. That's the, the joke defense doesn't work, ever. Keep in mind, this is yeah, the- that's the thing. It's like, some things are just jokes, but there are jokes have intentions. Some of them are to make you laugh. Some of them are to be disrespectful and try to, like, demean another group of people. And if you're doing the second thing, then you should face some kind of consequence, no? Same guy who- Maybe just, like, a social con. Like, people should at least be able to be aware of it. Like, hey, do you don't let this, like, the point of this joke is to be, like, uh, destructive to a community. You know what I mean? So people are like, oh, wow, that's shitty. You know, because they're like some people look at edgy jokes and they're and I like edgy jokes. I, I'm not saying they're all bad. Like I think Shane Gillis does edgy jokes really well. But some people look at them like, oh, it's just a joke. Other people look at them like, oh, this is a dog whistle, right? Previously went out of his way to criticize Leafy for making a joke that was exactly like the type of jokes that he makes nowadays. Bye bye, Pokemon. Ha ha. Someone says someone needs to Pokemon, and it has 1,400 likes. That doesn't seem very funny. That that to me seems like extraordinarily dumb. And yeah. Leafy responded, HDR recon. I'm not going to, uh, that's a little bit, I don't like Pokemon, but that's different than making a joke about the um, NRA meeting. Again, especially considering um, what happened in Texas. But On scope. Okay. I don't know. When I saw this, I was, does anyone really think this is funny or cool? I mean, it's kind of horrifically uh, irresponsible and disgusting. So according to Ethan, when Leafy makes jokes that involve the death of those that he doesn't like, it's irresponsible and disgusting. But how is that any worse than Ethan saying to millions of people to go erase an entire convention center with thousands of real human beings inside yeah. of it? It's not. It's not. I just find it interesting that you're intentionally not explaining the context of it. Again, it's still wrong, and it's good that he got banned, but it's more understandable than Leafy just not liking Pokemon and deciding to say that people should kill her. Like, she's annoying. I think people should, people should ignore her. But, like, you know, there's more understandable, especially since the NRA, like, funnels money into doing as much as it can to do as little as it has to do. Like, it's one, it's a, it's a problem. that or, or lobbies in general. It's okay that lobby ex exists in America because it's. I think that businesses should have a say. But um, they have disproportionate representation. Um, and there needs to be, like, better gun laws. Not, gun, not, like, don't ban guns in America. But there needs to be better, more restrictive gun laws, like common sense gun control and things like that. So it's almost the exact same joke. Death of person I don't like equals funny. But yeah, Ethan did say it was just a joke right after he said it. Yes, but apparently it's only an innocent joke when Ethan does it. Once again, the biggest fucking f hypocrite. Just uh, I mean, it's beyond hypocrisy. It's just Damn, it's videos like these that make me start to like Ethan. That's crazy plain sociopathy it's pure he, st he stands for literally nothing and what shocks me the most about ethan's far left grift that he does nowadays is that as i, I don't think it's a grift man i think he believes it uh, mentioned earlier ethan actually like i can see why he says pearl's grifting because there's no way that she believes anything that she says she's just a deeply insecure person that hates her mother um and is just like grifting so i understand why you'd say that but you know i don't think the tim pool's a grifter i disagree with his stance i think he's kind of fucking dumb sometimes but um yeah i think he's overusing the word like progressives will overuse the word grift in my opinion so, but I don't think he's a grifter. He used to be someone that the YouTube community could trust for reasonable takes on divisive issues. We're all Americans, and wanting Trump to do a bad job is like being on an airplane with a bunch of people you dislike and hoping the pilot does a bad job so it crashes and kills everyone on board. And even Based. Based, dude. Even though I didn't personally vote for Trump, I... I'm rooting for him. Being a normal person when it came to politics actually became a part of his brand to a certain extent. Like in 2016, when Casey Neistat made a video about how every YouTuber needed to tell their fans to vote for a particular candidate, Ethan was the first one to make a rebuttal. Vote for Vermin Supreme. So if your favorite YouTuber says things like, I don't like to talk politics on my channel, or I'm not going to reveal who I'm voting for, call them out. I think. Yeah, don't call them out, by the way. I don't think it's weird that you want your YouTuber that you have no fucking, like, why are you expecting your, like, your favorite YouTuber to understand politics in some way that you want their guidance? So, like, oh, you know what I mean? Like, it's weird. Kind of the opposite of what he's saying. Don't fucking listen to me. Hey, guys, bully Mikhaila Nagurgugadin until she talks about Israel, Palestine. It's like, okay, why? What the fuck is the, pro what, what is that? What the fuck does that mean? Just, I'm just a YouTuber. How does that qualify me to tell you who to vote for? Who to fucking elect as president? But vote Schmingelbang for president. Ethan has gone from being nuanced, open-minded, and rational to a walking NPC who just parrots the opinions of a team for monetary gain, which adds no value to actual <coughs> political discourse. I want to make this clear: being a partisan. Right, let's see the. Let's see the. Um, let's see the argument. And hack right or left takes no skill, no courage, and it is the perfect formula to fall into what's called audience. And it's gay. It's gay. Capture here. Is a message from our subreddit with peace and love. Attention, men and some women. 
of the H3 subreddit. Stop referring to women as females. Now, yeah, I thought this is stupid. I feel like this is unproductive and dumb. There, this is the thing when it comes to the female argument. Um, is that like I think it's stupid to to like bring up this point, but the concept is that there are a lot of people who will refer to women as females in like a derogatory tone, and that's the. You know, that's what that is referring to. Oh, I had never, I for some, I don't know what, for whatever reason, I, I guess I'm guilty of saying females up until recently I stopped. I started saying women. Ethan is so audience captured that he would make Mussolini proud. Obviously, the word female is not in any way derogatory. I didn't have to censor it. No, it's not. Again, there are people who will refer to women as females to be negative, mostly people in the red pill sphere. Um, Yeah, that's what that's referring to. So just so you know. For a reason, just like any other word, it depends on how you use it. So you say you're a man. Yeah. You identify yeah. as a man. I do identify as a man. Why are you dressed as a female? It's like my character. It's my job. It's like it's like a drag queen. Like man dresses. Yeah, Trisha's not, not isn't like trans in any capacity. Trisha, I think, has such a negative relationship with the fact that she does OnlyFans that she feels dysphoric in like herself. I think that she sexualizes herself so much as a, a femininely that she hates that version of herself. And, and I also think that a part of it's just like a grift. I don't know. Trisha's a fucking head case, so drag because i appreciate you're drag aesthetic. you're a man in drag that's how i look at it but despite this fact being irrefutably true ethan finds himself constantly walking on eggshells for his audience which is a clear-cut case of audience capture at work and because he's gotten so lost in the sauce in this audience capture i think he's forgotten the key to happiness in life literally the key to happiness in life is stop caring what short-haired fat bitches is jerking off <laughs> i promise you your life will be happier and uh, there's nothing wrong with caring about what your audience thinks and being, trying to be sensitive to them, but obviously you can get to a disproportionate degree. I think he demonstrated that pretty well, though, again, in his defense of like the Israel-Palestine conflict that he talked about. Better. If the second a girl with short hair who's overweight says anything at all, you just block it out. If they tweet, you should have your hair length and weight on your Twitter, and then you should be able to mute based on hair length and weight. I don't know what's and so you funny. you so gospel happy in your life if you stop thinking because that's the opinions that drive you crazy why would you say that <laughs> how could you have that opinion your opinion is problematic you get my haircut we got the same if we got the same haircut you don't need to say nothing to me in all seriousness the problem with being audience captured is the fact that over time you when people call that guy out a lot for being like a sensitive pussy like shane gillis fucking <laughs> dumpster him you lose who you truly <laughs> are internally look at this from ethan's perspective his okay. audience dictates a change that he needs to make and he complies not Dang. out of personal conviction but Let's in order to avoid here. alienating his audience and now imagine doing What's that with the female thing? Oh, I, okay. That same cycle consistently over the course of five years. Honestly, so, when I see stuff like this, I, what I see is someone who honestly is trying really hard to appease and entertain an mm -hmm. audience that just wants them to be more and more extreme. Mm -hmm. That like, they don't even realize how fucked up the things that they're doing is, a, are I, anymore. I see it as a feedback loop. Yeah. The audience yeah. demands him to get more extreme yeah. and he can never walk anything back or they'll turn on them. Yeah. Uh, So it's like they get worse. Yeah. demands him to get more extreme yeah. and he can never walk. Please not take these political conversations. So personally being called a class traitor a thousand times because I'm uh, I only I'm only a social democrat and not a full socialist makes me. But like you you putting this on the screen though. I remember that controversy. Ethan didn't concede in that controversy. That was a controversy where he talked about how he thinks capitalism is fine. They just need more social mes metrics and people were calling him a class traitor and he like he doubled down and disagreed with them. You can't show that instance and then be like, oh, he's, he just, he holds audience capture. This is like the worst example of that. Anything back or they'll turn on them. Yeah. So it's like they get worse and worse it's and worse. It's a bad spiral. cycle, dude. Oh, the irony. A perfect example. But that one's not ironic. Example of Ethan being audience captured would be his reluctance to correct his very obvious homophobia while also pretending to be an ally to the LGBTQ community. Yeah, but you, you just showed an instance where he didn't, uh, he didn't cave to audience capture. <laughs> Holy shit. I remember that. He had the conversation with Hassan. He like fucking owned Hassan. It was funny. What are you talking about? You just showed an instance where he didn't cave. What the fuck? For example, in 2022, Ethan started making fun of James Charles for allegedly wearing a diaper. He has some ankle leaking. Yeah, because his booty hole was stretched out. That's what happens when you get fucked in the ass. Well, now, we were saying, well, if he's getting... The issue with this topic here, and again, like, the issue with this topic here is specifically, it wasn't the joke that he made about James Charles' booty hole. It was the fact that a gay guy called up and was like, hey, I don't like what you said, which is fine for him to set that boundary and say that. And then Ethan's like, oh, do you take it up the ass? Like, that's what he, he's like, are you about him? That's what that question is. And the guy's like, I don't want to answer that. And Ethan kept pushing. That's the problem. But making the joke in the first place isn't the problem. Being blasted in the ass hard enough, potentially, <laughs> oh, no. you may need to wear a diaper. And a lot of you will say, like, okay, we've had a debate. Like, I don't think vaginas increase in size from sex, but assholes actually do. You could stretch a cooter, but usually it'll go back to, uh, it'll go back. 
But if you stretch it out enough, it's not going to go back, guys. Okay, let's just be clear here. If you have a lot of anal sex, That's you can true. actually blast open your anal. Did that exact same joke for like 15 minutes, by the way. It's really not that funny, but Ethan's audience gave him a lot of pushback for those jokes about James, and one of his fans even uh, really not that funny, but Ethan's audience. See something. Gave him a lot of pushback for those jokes okay. about James, cool. and one of his fans even called in to confront him for his homophobia. You can't really tell like who's talking about. Do you find it offensive if I say by being like, oh, he's, he's probably bottom? Is that the problem? Like, absolutely, it's offensive. Um, because it is. Based on the bottom particular, I think it's probably a bit of because it kind of it starts to kind of the game already. You have to you have to go assumptions about femininity and masculinity. I mean, I'm not sure you understand that. I, I'm not wrong. I mean, it's funny though. I just I, I think the problem is that the term power bottom is very funny to me, and sometimes and sometimes you know these these alpha men give power bottom. Yeah, power bottom, bro. Power bottom, like you're a dominant bottom, bro. Yeah, the joke is that being a bottom is a bad or funny thing. And I don't think the joke is that it's a bad thing. I think it's... <laughs> what are you talking about? What? And the main issue here is the fact that the type of person who makes these jokes isn't woke like Ethan pretends to be. Ethan is acting like someone who he truly... I'm not, I'm not understanding. The whole point of this was to show that he was engaged in audience capture. And then so far you've showed two instances where he didn't um, fold when his audience was criticizing him. I'm pretty sure Ethan kind of maintains that homophobia joke. Uh, I think he. I think his take is that like he didn't care about the joke, but he wished that he didn't like uh, push on that one gay guy who said he was a bottom and kept asking him if he was a bottom or something like that, or they kept asking that one gay guy who called in if he was a bottom because that was like a personal question isn't and as a result of that he's attracting people to his audience that are not anything like him then he has the audacity to get offended by the fact that he's knowingly attracted people to his audience who get easily offended y'all really need some lgb i'm so confused what, what do we get off audience capture and we moved on to something else Team why what did i say staff. wrong uh shut up what what did i say wrong shut up colin if you have a problem with my character you got it right i mean you you I literally got it right power bottom one yeah Shut up. I think some of y'all are just too sensitive. I feel like, you know, if you're watching... This is a good thing. He's setting a boundary with his audience. If anything, this is something that you should like appreciate at some degree, no? ...watching this show and you're perpetually offended by things I'm saying, you may want to just stop watching, like genuinely. Chris Stefano. That's reasonable. ...is an actual comedian unlike Ethan, and he makes similar types of jokes. And you will never in a million years see his audience calling him out or getting offended by those jokes. Because this is this i don't even understand the point anymore like i said before ethan seems to teeter back and forth between wanting to be like a comedian and then doing um progressive commentary in a way that feel there's an energy there right so he does pull in an audience that doesn't necessarily go into a line with him absolutely understandable right um and he has issues with audience, ca audience capture sometimes right i think that was more of an issue back in the day more where like the jordan peterson area where he broke ties with him but what the fuck is a criticism here? That he's setting a hard boundary with them and saying, like, listen, I'm going to make these jokes, and if you don't like it, like, you can unsubscribe, and that's okay? Like, what's the issue? Because Chris set the expectation for what people are going to get from him, and he <sighs> follows through with that expectation. I have nothing against the gay community at all. Nothing against well, I support and like the gays. Well, but I am not gay. Okay. I'm not gay. Okay. I do, but I'm not gay, but I am a Democrat, so I don't know. But you're because a Democrat. Because they're mostly gay. Democrats? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. What do you think the percentage of Democrats that are gay? I, I thought 100%. Oh, all right. Like, somebody, somebody. Bobby's a Dem. What? Bob's a dem. Yeah, but Bob's gay. He told me he's gay. <laughs> there is not a single true fan of Chris's on this planet that was offended by that joke. And yeah. also, Chris doesn't joke police anyone else, so there's no valid reason to joke police him. Ethan, on the other hand, joke polices others and sets the expectation that he runs a PC podcast. Then he turns around and laughs at gay people for being... Who does he joke police? Uh, I, did they show a person he joke police? Who are you talking about? Being gay. My then wife decided that she didn't want to be married anymore. Yeah. Oh, that's because this guy's fucking like a lot of these concerns. Like I, I remember seeing like weird fucking shit from uh from him, um from fucking louder with chowder over here. That's kind of uh, gay. I remember like he would put his balls on people's face. Like he's fucking gay, and a lot of these conservatives that are super anti-gay are fucking gay, and they're just trying to hide it. So yeah, dude, you fucking suck. <laughs> <laughs> Who's surprised, man? You suck. You're a douche. You're an asshole. You're hateful. You're a bigot. Yeah, and. You probably think about dudes when they, you have sex with her, and so you go soft when you have sex with your wife. You can't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Perform for her because you're not attracted to women, which is cool, but you are also homophobic, which is what's ironic about that. He is weaponizing the fact that Steven Crowder is gay in this hypothetical case scenario sure. and using that as an insult against him, and he justifies it in his mind. No, what he's saying is that there are conservatives who hate gay people, 
Um, and then when you call them gay, they get upset. That's the joke. It's like, oh, you don't, you're gay and you don't like gay people. And also Crowder's a closeted homosexual. Let's just be real. Or at least bisexual. Because Stephen is a conservative. The thing is, if you're an ally like Ethan pretends to be, <sighs> you would never in a million years weaponize someone's sexuality as an insult against them. I don't even, listen, man, I'm not like an ally or anything, but I'm pretty sure gay people uh, think you're gay. Like this is, you're super pearl clutching here with this shit. It's fucking weird as hell. Like, it's really not that deep here, okay? Crowder it doesn't like gay people, and then, like, calling him gay, exposing him for being gay. Um, because that dude's fucking gay, bro. Come on. All right? No, no man looks that good. <gasps> Am I gay? <laughs> Even in a hypothetical scenario. Okay. That is the definition <clears throat> of homophobic. And as the real you fans it, of the buddy. channel know, I play both sides, so I always come out on top. Uh, and no one joke. can play the self-righteous liberal douchebag better than I can. I am so far left, I'm spinning in circles, you this is just a theory, but I think part of what motivated Ethan to get into his far left grift is that when he started frenemies with Trisha Paytas, he gained an entirely new audience. Yeah, there's probably a level of truth there. He gained a very progressive audience and then he ended up engaging in a little audience capture. Uh, it starts like slow. It's like, oh, somebody like I said this, but people didn't like it. OK, I'll try to be more sensitive. And then you kind of get caught in this loop of trying to be sensitive. And then the, the expectations increase more and more and more of like how you're supposed to act. And then like it can be a little bit frustrating. It can be difficult to parse through like a new, uh, like a new emerging new audience. That's one of the things that like I've tried to held to is like, you know, you don't want to get a new audience very quickly um, because that's what ends up happening. You know, if you get a lot of people at once, it's usually a lot of people from a lot of different places. It could be overwhelming. It could end up having like a shape on you and changing you a little bit, especially if you're not prepared for it. For sure. There's definitely criticism to make there. Absolutely. I think that's part of it. I think another part of it too is that he just wants to be a nice guy. I don't think anybody like tries to be a piece of shit. So you're probably hearing all these people say this, that, and he's like, oh, okay, okay, okay. You know, especially during like 2020, 20, oh, the 2022, shit got a little fucking crazy with, uh, with our politics. You know, and I think part, another factor too is that like, people are hitting empathy fatigue. You know, we're on woke burnout here. That's where I'm at. Like I was, I, you know, I'm still am, uh, very progressive. You know, but um, I've hit empathy fatigue too. We've been told to care about every single thing for the past multiple years, and I just can't do it anymore. I don't have it in me. I don't have any anything left in the tank. Okay, I think it's a, a combination of those different factors that like influences him. I don't think that Ethan's like a grifter. I think that he's wrong about things. I think that he sometimes he uh, plays too much to his audience because he tries to be nice and he goes a little too far and doesn't set a positive boundary with them. But it seems like he's been trying to crack that. <coughs> it's kind of crazy. I never expected it, but like it's predominant. It's predominantly a uh, woman. Yeah, it's sixty percent women, forty percent men. But before we were ninety percent men. Yeah. And so we lost a lot of our of our the male viewers. And if you notice, he only started pretending to care about the LGBTQ community around the same time that Frenemies came out. In fact, you, you think that he pretend he's pretending to care? Why? In fact, he actually used to be pretty explicitly transphobic to Trisha after she came out as transgender. And because Trisha's not trans, and saying that it's transphobic to be. To question that on Trisha is transphobic to actual trans people. Trisha is not tra trans in any capacity. Trish came out as being a fucking chicken nugget. This, this, the first time she came out as trans is like she came out as like a fucking chicken nugget or something. So Tr Trish is transphobic. Then she came out of it like for an aesthetic. That's why she's dropped the bit. And if she does have some kind of frustration with her femininity, it's because she does OnlyFans and she hates that part of herself. All right, she's not trans. It's demeaning to even insinuate that she might be trans to actual trans people. So just stop. You're pretending like Trish is not trans. Get the fuck out of here. In 2019, I wanted to basically apologize to Trisha Paytas, who is such a sweet, genuine person, and I just really like. I wanted to first of all apologize for saying that she looked like she was at an open casket funeral, like she was the corpse inside of a casket. And that's not true. That's just what I meant. At all you're so beautiful, you're such a queen. And I also want to apologize for saying that you have like a five to ten inch engorged. It's bigger than my dick. I mean, there, I mean that's uh, that would basically make you a guy. That would basically mean you had a and, well, I guess I'm kind of confused because you said you're trans. But I don't know. I just I'm sorry. I don't know that. I'm sorry for saying that you're not trans. God, man. You know you have like cup F jugs that are always on display and not that make you absolutely i mean it's an actual conversation to have about like if you are trans then what does that mean to you if you're trans but you're still expressing your, if you're a trans man and you're like a biological woman right and you're expressing yourself as a woman then what is your what does your transness mean to you right because we have like obviously gen we have sex that's your biology then we have gender uh, we have pronouns and we have gender expression and we have pronouns um gender expression identity and pronouns something like that fuck Anyway, if you're a biological woman, but you're saying you're a gender man, that's fine, but you're doing absolutely nothing to express that, then what does it mean to you to be trans? It's a real question. It's not an unreasonable question to ask. To me, considering uh, Trisha's history of lying about things, I'm not saying that like we should morally chastise her now, you know, but it seems like it was really just a, it was really just a thing she did for attention, no? 
don't know what gender's all in the mind anyway. I shouldn't. He's, he's obviously transphobic, you know, and um, but after Frenemies came out, okay. he suddenly started pretending to be an ally, which is so good. That is so, so good. Right. I'm an ally. Champion. I am an ally. He's not, though, and most people can clearly see through how okay. fake his political positions are, which is exactly why even most liberals can see right through the guy. This person says, I feel like people in the sub seem to think the only, the only ultra conservative Alfred Pierce and fanboys that don't like Ethan. I'll tell you, I have very liberal friends who is a fallen fan despite having completely liberal political views. Some people just don't like Ethan. Yeah, I don't follow the guy. And then this person, I found that there are many people who stopped watching when he said very homophobic races or whatever else he may have said. Uh, <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. I rent to more people like that than the Jim Bros. See, that breaks my heart, you know? And just to correct the record here, some people have this perception that Ethan was some sort of red-pilled Republican manospear guy, but then he got corrupted. That's not true. He has always clearly stated that he was left-leaning. So that proves that a majority of his old fans did not care at all that he was a liberal. And that's- I'm confused. He said he wasn't an ally. And like, I don't know how you define ally, but like, it sounds like he's, I'm a little confused. So he's always been progressive, but he's grifting about caring about gay people is what I'm hearing. That doesn't really add up to me, but okay. Not why he lost so many subscribers. When it came to politics, <sighs> I would assume people liked him because he was offering something unique. I think it was more of the issue, like, that he was, he'd be like an obnoxious ass about people disagreeing with him, right? Like, that's what would be more of the issue, not because he's of his political leanings. That wasn't just spewing off the positions of a team, but because he's an extremist who's trying to pan. <laughs> he pro clutches about homophobia and transphobia, then defends Crowder and Trisha to make his point. Yeah, it's kind of a rough play, brother. Tough call. Enter to an extremist audience now, he has to try and describe that as a bad thing. Yeah, I don't think you can make the argument that he panders to an extremist audience anymore. He just, oh, okay, I'm fucking, my little asshole's, my little asshole's gonna fucking erupt. All these just spawn at the same time, I'm gonna fucking die, I hate this game. I used to be this enlightened centrist around the time we started the podcast. I used to appeal to the same kind of men that they're appealing to now. And I, I can't speak for them, but what it did to me is it kind of started warping me and changing me to cater to them until I came to the point where I realized that I was encouraging and fostering a community of really horrible people. First of all, if I don't know if how much that's true. I feel like kind of the same in his like SJW arc, but I feel like he's, I feel like Ethan's kind of balanced out decently now. So if anyone ever says enlightened centrist in a way that indicates that's a bad thing, that is a huge red flag. So just to be clear, like obviously, I don't know if I'm a centrist. I'm more left leaning, but there are people like Boogie Two Nine Eight Eight who are like legitimate fence sitters. Those are like your enlightened centrists, right? Those things actually exist. Of course, lefties took that and ran with it, and it was like anytime you have like a balanced, nuanced take, all of a sudden you're an enlightened centrist, and it's like a slur to them now. Um, and obviously, Ethan's using it in that context because he was on his like lefty, the two lefty arc. But again, I think he's pulled back, like from what I've seen. So he doesn't interact with Hassan anymore. He doubled down when it came to his uh, Israel-Palestine, uh, you know, take. He doubled down when it came to his capitalism take. Like, you know. Because that person most likely has a severe <clears throat> case of political brain rot, and they're most likely either alt-right or far left. And I'm starting to realize that that's actually a good thing. I think mass psychosis is good. And other people don't. But I think there's something nice about a group of people who believe things no matter what. No matter what the facts are, it's good to have a group of people completely impervious to any logic or outside information. I think it's good. I know this might be a surprise to some, but there are some people out there who aren't addicted to Twitter who couldn't possibly care less about the 5,000th partisan left versus right debate, and not everyone is interested in being in that state of mind 24-7. What's going on in Washington? How much does that affect your day-to-day -day existence? It's very little. But for some people... Well, no, it doesn't. But also, like, just to be clear, like, local politics do affect your day-to-day -day quite significantly, so you should probably vote in those elections and be more active in those. They're going to affect you more than your, like, federal, you know, shit going on. ...comes uh, an enormous portion of the real state of their mind. It, 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 it takes over most of their day-to-day -day consciousness, where yeah. they're consumed with it. And it and that has a lot to do with, um, did you guys hear me fart? Oh, no. That has a lot to do with all, like, the online information constantly blasting into people's brains. So comes a thing they're cheering for or they're rooting against and, and then you know your, your life revolves on something that you have very little power over so if you can at the very least just take a second to even try and understand why someone would want to be a centrist or apolitical in today's political climate i'm sorry to say it but you most likely have a very unhealthy obsession with politics and that's how you end up like ethan but it's like nobody's even talking about any real issues Everybody's just accusing each other of actually being a rapist like has this gone too far i told you, you <laughs> things have not changed with that Everything's rape and grooming now on the internet. Conservatives want to fuck kids, straight up, boom. Conservatives want to groom their children, both literally in the way that you mentioned, like they want to- They want to fuck them. Do the, yeah, do the child grooming <laughs> rapes. They want to fuck the kids. They do. 100%. Yeah. I think that that's a that seems like a joke um, about how conservatives are constantly calling trans people groomers. Um, and gay and trans people groomers. And so he's saying, well, that's what they want to do to their own kids. So, again- you could say it's poor taste, and that's perfectly fine, but it's interesting that you wouldn't bring up that context there.
when you're like, you know, I don't, I mean, seemingly pretending to care about trans and gay people, you don't have to care about them. I don't get, I mean, I care about them because I jerk off to them, right? That's my only motivation for caring about gay and trans people I like to masturbate to them. But, um, yeah, interesting. And also tries to do this thing where he pretends like he's not a hypocrite because he's just changing. But sometimes a hypocrite is just a man in the process of changing. I mean, that could be true. Sure. And I don't think that it's ever too late to change for the better. Now, obviously, it's totally fine okay. and normal to change your opinions over time. However, when people have financial incentives to change their opinions, the opinions need to be viewed under a different light. Sure, I guess. But I mean, couldn't you argue that since you have a financial incentive to hate, not like Ethan, that maybe this video is corrupted by that? A perfect example of this was when Sneeko changed his opinion on Andrew Tate. I got the baguette, I got the jet. It's true, but no, of course he hates of us. Course, but it's just an amazing. I got a jet. I got a. See, this on, I don't know, man. Like the, these self-help dudes are just a little are too full of themselves. Like, why are you yelling about your jet on a podcast? A few moments later, people will text me like, "Oh, so you just think like you're you just like oh you just like have money and you're you think you're so good looking and smart and fun, you, you think you think you're the man, right?" And like. Yeah, bruh. Damn, got him. Yeah, I do. The first clip is from before tape blew up. The second clip is from after. And guess what Sneeko did after tape blew up? He literally he became Tate Jr. Became the dollar store version of Andrew Tate and modeled his entire life. I understand. So you were mocking Ethan for making fun of Andrew Tate. I mean, excuse me, for Sneeko getting banned. But now you're taking the stance that Sneeko's bad. I don't know, understand. Like, yes, yeah, Sneeko deserved his ban, so I'm not understanding where that criticism even comes from. After the guy for more than a year. He didn't just get banned because he's red pill. He got banned because he was being incredibly provocative on the internet saying wild shit. Call me Taco Tate. Stop calling me Taco Tate. That's offensive. That's racist, actually. Bro, anyone who says that, you cannot be in my stream anymore. I don't fuck with you. Opie, thank you. Should be Chopstick Tate. So, did Sneeko truly change his opinion over time? No. no. Just like Ethan, he- uh, Yeah, I think he did. I don't think that Sneeko is not an intelligent person that has any uh, thoughts, feelings, or perspectives of his own. He literally copies other people's uh, perspectives around him. That's all he does. He grifted his way to the top. He's, he's, uh, he's unironically just looking for friends. And, like, he's looking for people that he can, like, uh, he, can, he can be around and with. Like, that's pretty much, I think, all that Sneeko is. He's desperate to be part of a group. And he found his group. And he's happy with that. So I guess God bless that. Top of his team. What does the G in top G stand for? Top grifter. Where else does Sneeko learn his tricks from? <laughs> w joke. <laughs> And I'm bringing up Sneeko specifically because these guys are two sides of the same coin. They both used to be well-respected individuals who clearly thought for themselves, and they both actually had- that's, I don't know if that's ever been true with Sneeko. Sneeko was a young person on the internet. I'm almost guarantee you that he was copying what other people were saying at the time around him that came off as like um, intelligent and enlightened in some capacity. I could be wrong about that. Ethan, I could see as somebody that's more genuine and intelligent. I actually wouldn't doubt that Sneeko was fucking parroting uh, Ethan in some capacity. I don't really know, but- had a lot of success doing so, but they both ended up taking the easy way out and they sold out to their teams for monetary gain. This show is about rational thought and gooning, baby. It's about cutting through the bullshit, okay? The Whether you're on the left or the right, this is not a politically affiliated show and it never has been. We're about cutting through the bullshit and getting to the heart Bullshit. of something. My channel and a lot of you who I think relate to me, you're always on the come up. You're always thinking about getting more money, power, respect. You want to move up in the world. And anybody who's really trying to move up is wasting their time involving themselves in politics. And look, I'm sure these guys are making more money than they ever were back then, but money does not mean anything if you have to sell your soul to get it. And for those viewers out there- Did this get released right when they took a break? Oh, I don't know. Is Ethan actually on his break now? <laughs> Is that Was that intentional? Because I remember he announced the break and then he didn't stop streaming. He talked to Fresh and Fit almost immediately. Oh, I guess um, responding to the allegations. What the fuck does that even mean? Let's get to some stuff. Oh, okay. I don't really care. Let's just clickbait. I give a shit about that. Um, all right. I guess he finally, because I, I remember, I guess he kept going. Remember I watched whatever. Okay. Maybe this, maybe that was like intentional. Uh, okay. There, who do value authenticity and integrity in those which they choose to support in their free time, it's impossible to follow or support someone best, like Ethan or Sneeko because they're now both extremely radicalized and they've both previously admitted on video that they know that's wrong. So how am I radicalized? I mean, how does he think you migrated to the opposite side of the political- Radical doodle. 
go spectrum. Well, yeah. he didn't opposite, migrate to the opposite side. He obviously just went a little bit more to the left than he should have probably gone. Uh, we've, uh, again, we've always said the he releases every time he takes a break. Yeah, that's true. Didn't they? Didn't like they do that last time? Jake Doolittle didn't the last time he took a break. Jake Doolittle released something. Same stuff. Like, and we've always been transparent about it. I think so. We have. I mean, I've been a lot more open about it, like, obviously, in the past year. Maturing and becoming a grown-up and an adult. I don't know, man. I feel like there's really been nothing new to criticize Ethan for lately. Um... <laughs> These videos are fucking so dumb and boring. Like, I don't know. I feel like, because uh, I make a lot of content. Obviously, I react to stuff. It's very easy. And there's times where I'll react to something because, like, there's nothing else to talk about. I feel like that this is what this video is. It's like, oh, there's nothing to talk about. What if we just did Ethan again? Okay. You know what I mean? It's like, okay. Do you obviously start to talk more about politics? <sighs> there's a massive difference between politics. Turkey time cried watching this. <laughs> what did Turkey Tom say watching this? And culture war BS. And a majority of the time, Ethan's political commentary is nothing but culture war crap. Something has caught the world's eye. What was that we must debate is, here on, on this stage? What was Tom Dark's perspective on this? He apparently watched this video. Was it on his live or anything? Definitely not. Oh, welcome to the internet. Holy fuck, dude. What is this guy doing? Jesus Christ. <sighs> this guy's streaming for nine fucking hours? Oh my god. Me. Pity anyone who gets in the ring with him. There is a lot of maybe later. There is a I'm not gonna lie. This guy even fucking this guy is this guy even gonna react, dude? What is he doing? One N word pass. Don't say it, Tom. Spread the word. Don't say right, everybody, it. Everybody, go drop a like on the video. Gonna link it below. Don't say it. Uh, you guys, just, you guys should check it out. Why are his teeth so white? That's why he doesn't get hit in traffic. Uh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. What does he say? <laughs> okay, it's freezing now, so I'm over it. I've, I've, I've lost interest. Which does governor he didn't even finish watching the video <laughs> why was he bored of it i gotta we gotta see it through my boys that's the only reason why we're finishing it andrew cuomo have a nipple piercing if i ever have to stoop this low <sighs> for content i'd rather just go back to shilling used cars again you kind of are stooping a little low for your content yeah when you're this obsessed with culture war topics to the point where you're a 40 year old straight man talking about another Damn. man's nipples at one point or another you are going to lose your mind i hope i'm talking about someone's nipples at 40 brother that sounds great Preferably another man's nipples, nippy booze. Why not, brother? Who gives a who gives a darn? There are all sorts of interdimensional forces in the universe and multi dimensions. Yeah. So there's like bad aliens. There, I agree with this, by the way. I need to manipulate our development. Right. Because a high level, <laughs> exactly. Ethan is actually so radicalized nowadays that he even went on to make an entire show strictly about the culture war with the Alex Jones of the left. Did this guy try to like stay relevant with Ethan shit? Like left the left the friend frenemies is over. They had a falling out. So he's not like this would have this would have went well this video maybe six months ago. That's probably what happened is he started working on this like months ago and he's like fuck, <laughs> I, I can't fuck. But a lot of this is pretty outdated. Hassan Piker, what is the leftovers? Listen, information is moving too fast to make these types of videos, bro. I've had enough of you guys complaining that I you don't want me to talk about politics, so I went and made a whole fucking show about it. But the spirit of the show is not serious policy debate. It is bringing righteous justice to these bags. That's it. Okay. Just I, clowning I mean, on idiots. Okay, so you're literally creating the liberal version of Louder with Crowder? Wait a minute. What are we? Own those reactionary fascists, guys. Let's see how that turned out after one major geopolitical conflict. Oh, okay. I discuss everything, but I do want to say make something. I don't think that you could bring this up and say he's gone too far left and like maintain that leftist that he's he's grifted he's gravitated grifted <laughs> he's gravitated away from that. So clear at the top of the show here is that I've seen a lot of people expecting us to come froth and argue and, our, and our friendship is going to end. The show is going to end or something like that. And that's I'm sorry to disappoint you. It guys. did end. It's Hassan's a piece of shit that doesn't respect Ethan's friendship. He was just using him. That's very clear to me. He didn't defend him when like people were bullying Ethan on like sub uh, his own Discord. So thank you so much for the five dollars apocalypse. People are cowards for dropping hit pieces when nature goes on break. Can't wait for his response. He called it. I doubt that he's going to respond. What's to respond to? This is probably the most the biggest dog shit video I've ever seen in my life. Like I'm not even an Ethan Glazer. Like I people I criticize him all the time. People keep people cried. Literally, people cried at me because I criticized his conversation with Fresh and Fit because I said that optically he didn't come out of that looking particularly good. Like he didn't, like it was just kind of a clown festival and he could have like pushed back in better ways and he was like a little unprepared. People are like, oh, oh, you're this, but okay, whatever. Disagree with me all you fucking want. I don't give a shit. But like, I don't, I'm not, like, I don't actually, I don't dislike you. I say it all the time. I want to like this guy. But like, I don't fucking glaze this guy. And this video is dog shit. Like, I would be fine if I was like, oh, yeah, good criticism, good criticism. But this video is just fucking poop.
It's a, it's a, it's literally poops, a poop of poop. Guys, but that's definitely not what we're planning on doing here. It's not. Gonna no, I have to finish the reaction, bro. We have 20 minutes left. I'm fucking. I'm. This is content, dude. I'm getting the content. Out. I'm a fucking content grifting machine, dude. Are you kidding me? Happen. People <laughs> saying rip leftovers. Um. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. Yeah, probably. It's not gonna happen. If you don't know Hassan Piker, God bless your heart. I'm gonna cover him soon. But just the fact that Ethan went out of his way to start a podcast with Hassan should tell us everything you need to know about how disingenuous Ethan's political grift is nowadays. Maybe. I think that Hassan is very charismatic and handsome and Ethan might have actually looked at him and been like, wow, this guy's so smart. Hassan's very confident. He says things like he knows what he's talking about. So I don't fault people for falling for it. It's funny because he's rapidly falling off, which is very funny. Very, especially since he made fun of me for being fat, which was really mean. Apparently, he's still not over it. <laughs> no, but uh, well, he did. But I was just kidding about caring about that. Um, but yeah. It's funny. Hassan's entire career revolves around the fact that he preaches socialism from his $9 trillion LA mansion and his full-time job is literally just stealing the work of others, aka exploiting the working class, while also sitting on his ass and claiming to be an on-the-ground journalist. And gooning. If it's between me going live and giving you 10 hours of on the ground. That would be funny if Gabe like reacted with him to it. <laughs> 10 hours of reporting from the ground. From the ground, dude. Uh, from it, the it, ground, it, a.k.a. reading Twitter posts that are unverified sources of information. A critical moment at a critical time uh, versus not going live that day just so I can go on Pierce Morgan and fucking yell oh, at him. Jesus. I think it's selfish of me. You can't go online when you talk to Pierce Morgan for half an hour, guys. It's impossible to do. What the fuck? I work so hard to take the Piers Morgan route. Hassan is an outright fraud. This is a bipartisan issue that most people agree upon. And at the very least, we can all admit that if Hassan was someone that Ethan disliked in any possible way, he would tear the man apart at every single opportunity for exactly what I just said. Yet, Ethan went on to start an entire Culture War podcast with this absolute fraud. And we have to Got ask him. ourselves, why did he do that? Money, 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 money. He probably thought that he was a good person. Money, 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 mother- Leftovers was literally the left-wing equivalent of Andrew Tate and Alex Jones co-hosting Infowars. Repetitive, partisan, culture war nonsense that sucks to watch for the average person out there who doesn't have political brain rot. Yet, this guy has the audacity to ask how he's radicalized. So much of that building. America deserved not to I'm saying it. Another thing which I find to be incredibly hypocritical about Ethan's political grift is the fact that Ethan and his two companies accepted about half a million dollars worth of PPP loans during PP. the pandemic, which were then forgiven by the government. Now, I don't understand why that's an issue. If you didn't know, Ethan is one of the wealthiest YouTubers on the entire platform. We're rich. Well, I believe that, like, didn't he pay his employees through the entire pandemic and everything? That's what that was for. I don't understand your criticism. No. You are bougie as fuck. You're the bougiest. I think you're the richest person I know off YouTube. Which is good for him, but I find this to be incredibly hypocritical because he often pretends to advocate for social programs for the working class. Oh, this guy has actual fucking brain rot, dude. <laughs> I don't understand the criticism here. Like, uh, what the fuck are you talking about? Just to be clear, like, my issue with Hassan, and, and well, first of all, Ethan is not as extreme as Hassan. Ethan is like a, Ethan believes in like millionaires. He's a capitalist. He just thinks there should be better social programs to help protect people. I agree with that. Okay. I think that they should tax rich people more money. Ethan should be taxed more money. He's not as quite as extreme as Hassan, though. But I don't understand like how it's hypocritical. He had a whole like one of one of the conversations he had with Hassan was about how he like defend is defending capitalism just with a little more social reform. How does this make him some kind of a hypocrite? Talking about stuff like universal healthcare, I don't think that people should have to pay for insulin. You know, I don't think people should be incarcerated uh, for nonviolent crimes. I don't think that prisons should be owned by private companies and be profiting off prisons. I think universities should be free or head or damn near close. You know what I mean? Yeah. I believe that um that there should be like a, a universal basic income from people uh, who, as we automate the I world, like, I like UBI. I like that concept too. More and more, you know what I mean? It's just only natural. There's gonna be less jobs. I think we got. I think what I'm interested in is like the welfare of everybody in, in the country, and especially people on the bottom side because the ones that are gonna need the most help coming up. You know what I mean? On the so. surface, it sounds commendable, right? But sure. based on his actions, he doesn't actually care about any of that at all. What do you say? Like, does he not vote that way? What could he? Feel? he could do his vote in that direction. You see, PPP loans were funded primarily by taxpayer money. And once those loans were forgiven, the taxpayers were once again left <laughs> to cover those costs of that loan forgiveness. Dude, I can't, I honestly can't believe this video is getting worse. Okay. So just to be clear, you're aware that Ethan pays taxes, right? I'm just asking that question. Like, listen, again, uh, I think that rich people need to pay more taxes. Okay. I don't think that there should be as many incentives and stuff, right? I, I get it. Less write-offs, whatever, probably for rich people. But him taking loans during like the worst pandemic of our fucking time <laughs> to pay his employees doesn't really matter to me. This is like not a point. This is just desperate. This video gets worse and worse.
through the taxes that we pay. So that literally means that taxpayers funded his loans initially, <sighs> and then we also covered the cost of that loan again yeah. through our taxes when the loans were forgiven. Yep, and that's true. It was a pandemic. It was wild. It's the same thing as all of us getting individual money. And although in the grand scheme of things, $500,000 obviously isn't a lot to the federal government, the fact of the matter is every single person living in the U.S. today has less money in their bank accounts because of multimillionaires like Ethan who unnecessarily accepted these loans, which were then forgiven. You think that these are the, these loans are specifically the problem? Okay. You're fucking Jesus Christ, man. What the fuck? You think that these loans are what did it? <laughs> okay. And regardless of the taxpayer aspect of it, this guy was literally a full-time podcaster at that time. It's not that expensive to host a podcast. He took those loans for his business, his, like Teddy Fresh business. What are you talking about? And if it is that expensive for anyone to run an online podcast, that's a choice, not a requirement. Plus, there's the fact that Ethan's income actually skyrocketed during the pandemic because obviously more people were online. That's crazy. I, mean, I think he paid more taxes, too. And watching more ads. And in addition to the extra ad revenue they made during the pandemic, the more eyeballs the show gets, the more Teddy trash makes. So Ethan's pockets were not negatively impacted in any possible way, shape, or form from the pandemic. Okay. And I'm no economics expert, but to the best of my knowledge, nobody needs a loan to make more money. So if you want to advocate for social programs, I can certainly appreciate the <clears throat> compassion. More power to you. I am. Like I, I remember he like shut when they had to shut down for COVID, like his factories, they continued to pay the workers as is as usual and kept going. It's probably what those loans were for. This is like so pro clutchy. It gets so it gets worse and worse as time goes on. This is so stupid. Not here to debate policy, but what you can't do is publicly take money directly from the working class twice, then turn around and verbally pretend to advocate for the same people that you stole from when we all know for. But he didn't steal. It was given to him so that the economy didn't collapse. Like what? Like I agree that businesses need to pay better. And more taxes i 100 percent agree but that doesn't mean that they don't need support through like the most uh, like the worst pandemic of our generation like of our time like the like <laughs> that was like a, a very unique oh, i hit the wrong button it's a very unique situation so what the fuck are you talking about in fact you didn't need any of that money then nine months later buy a four hundred thousand dollar rolls royce cullinan that is just disgusting you are just yeah terrible guy just fucking rotten inside bro Run. Vile, man. And speaking of vile, Ethan is also racist, in my personal opinion, which is... Op I don't care. I, good. I hope that he's incredibly racist. I don't care anymore. I'm completely fatigued on this video. This video is so stupid. Obviously very hypocritical, given the fact that he cries about anti-Semitism at every possible turn, even when his own friend... He could use more black people on his show, though. I will agree with that. ...say something positive about Jewish people. I like the stereotypes of, like, their noses. I would like my son to have Moses' nose. It looks so nice. It's nice and big, and I like it. I agree with that. I like... Uh, that's fair. But in a good way. <laughs> I'm being so serious. Don't, I don't I say I love your nose. Yeah, I mean, that that is a deeply anti-Semitic trope. But I love... So, like, there are physical characteristics for anybody, just to be clear. Um, it doesn't necessarily make it racist or anti-Semitic to bring up its existence, you know? Like, it's not... Yeah. And liking that feature is not a big deal. Of the nose, I do. I love but it. There is mine really is like a, a Jewish nose. Mine looks like yes, a. Yes, there is. I, there is a Jewish nose, and like I'm Jewish. Like there's a Jewish nose, and I find it attractive. And my wife isn't Jewish, but she has a nose that like I find attractive. So like it's it's like a unique. So I don't know, <laughs> but okay. It's an issue when you start demeaning that person based on that person. Like if you're like, oh, well, black people have like different hair than white people. There's nothing racist about saying that. But then if you started to like you know say some wild shit about it. Then it becomes racist, right? Like, there's a difference between pointing it out. There's, the, there's what is the intention of pointing out the particular thing? If she's pointing out like a particular characteristic because she finds it attractive, that's not a disrespectful thing to point out. So, like, little, Ethan seems to be uh, crying a little too much about this, but rabbit, a little frog, not a rabbit. Rabbits are cute. Mine is a frog. I don't think that there really is a Jewish nose. Well, you wrong. don't have one. Exactly. Okay. So, like, that's he's an just upset that he didn't get the Jewish nose. Anti-Semitic trope. You say this is a comedy <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I thought so, but apparently <laughs> that's an anti-Semitic trope. There's dozens of clips I have saved showing what I believe to be Ethan being racist, but let's just focus on a few of them. Yeah, probably the N-words that he throws out there, huh? Examples for brevity. You know what's crazy? I grew up in the suburbs of, of Los Angeles, Ventura. Yes. And I grew up, I almost, I don't think I've ever known a black person. Really? What? I know it's fucking Yeah, I, that makes sense to me. I I grew up in a place where <laughs> my school was like 30% black people. It's so scary. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That, but I'm just, I've never been in a situation in my life where I've been in close proximity with black people. I've never known a black person. Are you I feel like that's a lot of, of people on the left have never like met a black person before. And people on the right too. I feel like most white people just haven't met a black person. 
My mom used to work with black and Hispanic people. She worked at White Castle. I met a lot. Uh, and I went to school with them and stuff. So that's why I'm better than all you guys, because I'm down with the curl, baby. Friends? Yes, I'm serious. Like, all through elementary school, high no, school? No, I swear to God. This guy grew up in California, not Utah. So to me, that sounds like a choice he's made. And even if he did... Are you just pretending that there's no like segregation in California? Like, what? I live I live in a very white area in Long Island right now because it just I just happened to live here. That's it. It's nothing. I didn't do it on purpose. I married my wife, and their her house happened to be out here, her mother's house, and we rented from her mother. But I grew up in a different area where there was like more black and Hispanic people. But like, it's not like a choice. <laughs> I don't think he chose to not interact with black people. I mean, nobody like chooses to start interacting with other people. You kind of grow up in whatever setting you're surrounding that you're in, but okay. Hypothetically grow up in Utah. YouTubers are in general incredibly diverse. So for him to be a fully grown adult what? with white hair who's never known someone who has skin that's a different color. Are YouTubers that diverse? I feel like for the most part, it's a lot of white guys at the top, you know? Is his is at the very least a huge. Well, there's actually like there's just different like there's like a, there's a pretty robust black community and stuff on on uh, like YouTube and stuff, but they tend to like everybody's a little bit segregated people kind of stick to their own you know it's not like i'm not saying it's a good thing i'm just saying that's just what happens like you know you see like your kai sanats and your and your i speeds and stuff and you know then there's your eight your your um aiden rosses you know he's also down with this world of course but you know you see <laughs> there's different communities of different people you know flag they're like these huge black dudes and they're all strapped they're all black there's like strapped and i'm just saying they were, every single one of them was black okay. i don't even i don't even pay attention you know, to call or anything color. if there's eight dudes on security <laughs> and they're all black i think that's worth noting I just noticed their suit. They're all wearing suits. They're all wearing suits. Yeah, no, they were super professional. That was nice. And uh, I mean, they're all like six five black yeah. dudes. Yeah, yeah, that's terrifying. Yeah. Is a six five? <laughs> He's so stupid. Black dude scary more than a six five white dude? No, is it supposed to? Um, well, <laughs> I mean, if no, it's the height maybe that will scare you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How do I get out of this? Get out of this. <laughs> he's doing here is projecting his internalized racism onto others. Probably. He yeah. He seems like he's a little ignorant. Everybody's got a little ignorance. I think they're acknowledging it is a first step, baby. Thinks that because he's personally racist in his own mind, that others think the same way. Is a six five black dude scary more than a six five white dude? If I were to take eight six foot five guys from Iceland who are all I guarantee you that this guy making this video is like a scrawny little fucking white guy that's afraid of black people and he's just like pretending that he's not. I'm by the way, I'm not afraid of black people. I love black people. Black people love me as well. My point is, is that you like I understand the fundamental concept of having like uh, ignorant thoughts and projecting those onto other people. And then getting older and being like, oh, wait, this is an ignorant thought I'm having. Like, okay. There's not a single black person in my audience that thinks I'm like the most virtuous person that doesn't have any, um, like any, anything in me. Like, I understand, like, I'm just aware. Holy fuck, this guy's got a bunch of shit coming in. Come here, you fat fuck. You know, I'm aware of some of my biases and that's why I'm able to become a better person. That's why I'm better than all of you. Because I am aware of my bias. Everybody has ignorance. Black people have ignorance against white people. White people have black people, blah, 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 blah. They're all over the, the, the place. They're all back and forth, left, right, up, down. And, you know. They're all over the place, brothers. Uh, there's nothing wrong with having it. As long as you work against it, my players. Exactly. Black people love Papa God. That's fucking so true, dude. That's so true. That's so true. <laughs> <laughs> Act wearing all black and strapped, they would still be scared. I will say he seems to have a, a thing against black people like Abin Preach. I'm a little upset about that, dude. Free Abin Preach, baby. The situation he's describing being scary is just not in any way exclusive to a specific skin color. I don't remember. The I will say I had a black friend and uh, he lived in Florida. He was another creator. And he's like, yeah, you probably shouldn't come here. In my town. Because <laughs> they're not going to like you because you're white. I was like, that's fair. You know, that's fair. You know, he was, uh, you know, he was a cool guy. I said, that's fair, brother. You know, what are you going to do? You know, it is what it is. What's this? Context, but I think what I was trying to do is highlight my, I was almost trying to admit my, how I racially profile, like how I, I feel like people do that. Obviously that came off bad. I mean, yeah. Yeah. He's being honest here. So it's fair. It's bad. But I, I think I was just trying to own to the fact that I do racially profile. When Will Smith slapped Chris Rock at the 2022 Grammys, Ethan claimed that it wasn't possible to defend Will because he was embodying the stereotype of an angry black man. A lot of black women feel like it's reifying stereotypes about us being loud and masculine, aggressive and ratchet and things like that that are just not great because we have to combat those stereotypes okay. every day. A few minutes later. Are you worried about stereotypes? I've heard black comedians <laughs> and actors and activists right. Acknowledge uh -huh. there's this trope about like the violent black man, right? He can't control his temper. Right. Definitely, definitely. He's a violent black man. And it's that they say that this is a harmful stereotype. So how the f right. can, can people defend Will who seems to be embodying that, that stereotype? Like you're, you're changing out one stereotype for another. How can you defend? Sorry, I just want to replay this conversation for a second. 
kill because he was embodying the stereotype of an angry black man. A lot of black women feel like it's reifying stereotypes about us. Okay, so I'm almost certain that he's talking to a black woman about this topic. And I feel like this would be the person to talk to. Like, oh, you know. <laughs> so he's talking to a black woman about a complicated um, race issue. How is what he's doing wrong? If she brought up the angry black man stereotype and then he's like, okay, if you said that, then like, wouldn't defending him actually perpetuate that stereotype and make it... What he's saying isn't bad. I don't, I don't understand. I don't really understand the issue. Um... I don't understand how it's racist. I feel like he's not like in the wrong here. He's not being disrespectful. He's talking to a black woman about black issues. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Definitely. He's a violent black man. And it's that they say that this is a harmful stereotype. So how the f can, right. can people defend Will, who seems to be embodying that, that stereotype? Like, you're, you're changing out one stereotype for another. How can you defend Will? He's a human being who is universally loved and appreciated. Bro, Will Smith walked up and slapped Chris Rock. You can't defend him in the in this moment. What is this guy talking about? By almost the entirety of the U.S. population for about 30 years before he made one terrible mistake publicly. Will Smith. People's defense of Will wasn't, hey guys, you made a mistake, leave him alone. It was what he did was okay and justifiable. This guy's legitimately disconnected from fucking reality. This guy's weird as hell, brother. Uh, not too season, but I'm black. And one thing that stood out to me about Ethan was his appreciation for black art and culture, despite none of his friends sharing that. That's fair. I don't know what that is. What is he like, rap or Waffle House or something? What is he like? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just being stupid. Just smack the shit out of me. It. it literally boils down to the fact that humans sometimes get angry. No, that's not what the the conversation absolutely was not that at all. The conversation was what Will did was okay from some people. I didn't see a single person saying, you know, I think that was really inappropriate what he did, but I also understand he's a human. It was all either he was bad or he was good. And there were plenty of people defending him and saying that what he did was okay, and it wasn't okay. It was a bad thing that he did. And they were, like, trying to, like, use race as a shield for him to justify his bad behavior, which is inappropriate. What the fuck is this guy talking about? And sometimes humans do stupid things after 30 years of being close to perfection. If you want to criticize him for that mistake, you're more than welcome to do that. But what you can't do is deduce the entirety of someone's career to a stereotype based on one singular incident. If he didn't. What are you talking about? He's having a discussion with a black woman, clearly, about like about the, all the dynamics. And this guy's a fucking idiot. I'm pretty sure this guy is like a fucking super lefty moron that has no idea on like or understanding about anything he believes. He just says what he he he's literally just says what he has. Like, I'm pretty sure that this guy just says whatever um, people accept in his community. I don't think that he has like any level of like nuance or intelligence about like any topic. What the fuck is this guy on about? If that's the game we're playing, why don't we all just judge Ethan only by his extensive history with doing blackface? Because just like okay. every other non-racist person, Ethan has also done that as well. Black Ethan wasn't saying that he did it because he was an angry black man. He was saying that the people defending him. Weren't they just feeding into that trope? It's not really, it's not even a hot take. It's fucking lukewarm. Face, I mean, uh, that some people would say blackface is just a joke, right? Wow, man. I mean, it's face, just a joke. Face, face, face. Just a joke. Now, obviously he was trying to be edgy and he thought doing this provocative video with a charcoal face mask would get him views. But I did some digging <coughs> and I found this now deleted tweet from years ago before Ethan dropped his blackface video, which reads, when she says she only dates black guys, which is interesting to say the least. Again, there are so what? many more examples of this I behavior. What does that mean? Only date oh, okay. That I have saved that I could maybe revisit at a later date. So I probably wouldn't put too mad up on the screen there if we're talking about, <laughs> but okay, whatever. It looks like a phallic object. A little eight-year-old girl and a big giant. Oh yeah, the Patrice oh, Wilson or not Patrice Wilson? What am I saying? Is that a different black guy? I don't know. But this was kind of fucked up. He kind of ruined this guy's career, I think. Like every time you Google him now, like weird shit comes up. So I agree with this one. Black man, looking in on her, man. It's like Blackzilla. This guy's got a weird fantasy, dude. Fucking Blackzilla is wild. Blackzilla, it's the little eight, <laughs> eight-year-old white girl oh with blonde hair. Likes it. But we do have to keep this somewhat concise. So to me, the smoking gun evidence in this case scenario is You have to keep it concise. This video is two hours and ten minutes long. What the fuck are you talking about? Ethan just straight up admitting to having prejudices. I know I'm not racist. I know I have prejudices, right? Yeah, that's a total what a mature thing to say. I'm not racist, but I do have prejudices. Um yeah, okay. If you want to define everything as racist, that's fine. We all have prejudices, like even you do. And if you don't, either you're not going to admit it or you just don't know about it because you're not intro uh, introspective enough. We all have prejudices, man. All the time. What are you talking about? That's why I fucking hate Italian people. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I always tell my Italian friends that I hate them, though, when we talk because it's funny to me. But okay. 
I'm working on it. I have prejudices. I think most people have prejudices yes. that I'm aware of and working on and stuff like that on it. I have prejudices. I think most people have prejudices. <sighs> Asserts consciousness on racism just because he's personally racist. No, like, I think everybody has prejudice. What are you talking about? Like this guy is, is, is a stinky little fuck. Yeah, everybody has like a prejudice, and that's like and not acknowledging that prejudice is what dry, creates like legitimate racism. Not understanding that, like not being aware of that. What is this guy talking about? This guy's so dishonest. Holy fuck! That I'm aware of and working on and stuff like that. You know, yeah. not racist. I don't think so. You know, I'm a, I can even admit that. You know, at, yeah, same here, bro. At times, I think and do racist things, but same here, brother. Only because I'm ignorant and it's something I'm working on. Or it's fun. You know, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. If you admit on video that you have prejudices, <sighs> then in the very next sentence, you admit to thinking and doing racist things, then you are just racist. There's okay. not really much of a nuanced discussion. So probably the most honest thing Ethan's ever said. This guy's fucking virtue signaling over. It's actually incredibly funny. Discussion to be had here. And as someone who has personally had to deal with actual racism throughout almost every step of his career online, he- Why? Is this guy actually black? Turns around and is openly racist to another group of people. Which I'm so confused. Who's the one that's racist? Be had here. And as someone who has personally had to deal with actual racism throughout almost every step of his career online, he turns around and is openly racist to another group of people. About other, him, Ethan. Which one is incredibly hypocritical to progressive values and two perpetuates another cycle of racism when realistically this was something that was supposed okay. to stay in the 20th century. I have a dream. My Hell no, brother. Take racism into the 30th My century. My poor little children Will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of that. Dude, the fucking virtue team is actually making my penis so hard right now. Holy fuck. Skin, but by the content of their character. 75 years later. Is a 6'5 okay. black dude scary more than a 6'5 white dude? So with Based. all of that being said, has Ethan genuinely shifted his perspective over oh the years? Or is this all just strategic alignments with... Sh no, I think it's pretty genuine. I think that obviously like everybody else, there's hiccups to be made along the way. But it seems like he's genuine. Again, especially after the capitalism debate he had with Hassan. And his Israel Palestine debate with his son. I think that he's genuine. I think that he's a pretty genuine guy. Um, and just like all of us, we sometimes shift like a fart in the wind. Shifting norms. Well, if you look at Ethan honestly and objectively, it's nothing but strategic alignment. He yeah, I mean, I just don't think that you're the type of person that has the emotional intelligence to parse through that information personally. I just like you seem like a like, short. You seem like a either you're probably a very young person that's very disconnected. You probably don't have like a particular. You don't really go outside a lot. You probably don't really know a lot about the real world. You're probably not very grounded. You're a YouTube creator that doesn't really have any like. Um, a robust anchor in the real world and you're making these prescriptions and you think i don't really think that you know what the fuck you're talking about personally like i just like i i think uh but okay hey fuck me in the ass right he criticized cancel culture and far left extremists fuck back my in balls. The day when it was more popular to do so i don't understand this concept that seems to be most i mean almost entirely prevalent on the like extreme left side where they protest conservative or not even conservative people they disagree with and they shut it down yep. to the point where well conservatives would do the exact same thing too if they had the power to do that you know like what happened you can't even give a speech and to me that just seems like you're amplifying that's why they're like trying to fucking burn books and shit like get rid of books out of particular schools some of them i understand are reasonable but most of them are just not it's just crybaby bullshit but well, they're trying to like cancel De uh, uh disney <laughs> because they make gay movies and shit their message like it happened recently with like milo he went to berkeley and these people write it and, yep. shut it. and i don't personally agree with a lot of stuff that he says but by going there and shutting him down and giving him all these headlines and stuff you're just gonna have more people listening to him the second time around then as soon as it was no longer financially rewarding for him to follow that same ideology he instantly went on to become the far left extreme i don't think that's what it was i think 2020 was insane and things went really crazy and far and people were like there was a lot of energy there's a lot of yelling and it like had a big impact on people trying to do what they felt was the right thing and then people kind of like like you know let their breath out and went oh, and they're like holy shit you know and they re they restructured Extremist. usually on reality shows like if you watch the bachelor all the guys are like Retard! Oh my god! Whoa! Did you say that? <laughs> it's a bad word. You shouldn't say that, but it's funny that he let it slip. <laughs> the reality is, Ethan's transformations track. <laughs> <laughs> listen, dude. I have. I, listen, I. I have that problem too. Sometimes, all right. I try not to say these bad words in in, in uh, off the stream, you know. And sometimes they slip, and uh, you know, it's just you don't. You just have to. You, you know, you, all you could do is try harder. All you can do is, is do a little more, is be a little better, you know? Flawlessly, with which online trend is the most profitable and socially rewarding at the time. And at the very least, that should make everyone question whether his transformation is coming from a place of genuine conviction or if they're merely strategic moves. Okay. Cool stuff, man.
Now that I've brought you up to speed with some of Ethan's transgressions of the past, I think it's time that we move on to his illustrious oh future. The question is, what does the future hold for someone like Ethan Klein? Well, probably just going to continue to make more money um, and have a successful podcast. <laughs> Whether you like him or not, that's pretty much where we're at, so he's gonna stay the exact same. It's not that he refuses to change, he's certainly changed. The main issue here is that he refuses to handle any sort of actual criticism that he considers to be even remotely negative. As we can see here from this now deleted Reddit post, which reads, disappointed with the censorship I'm seeing on here, which was immediately followed up with a 30 day ban from the subreddit. Based, I wonder what was in the video, the thing that, that justified the ban. Maybe they just did it because they're sensitive or maybe there was a reason, I don't know. But this person narrating the story is not very uh, trustworthy, so. Obviously, not all criticism is valid, and you do have to moderate online communities to a reasonable extent, but they do this to almost every post on the subreddit speaking out against Ethan, and they also do this same thing to the paying members in their chat. And if criticism Peace is Lord. met with censorship and deflection rather than reflection 99% of the time, it begs the question, does he even want to get better? As I mentioned earlier, Ethan vaguely responded to Gokunaru's video about him in 2018. I thought they had a conversation about it. And in that video, he admitted to being guilty of a uh, lot of the things Gokunaru accused them of. What people have been saying about me recently, that I'm a hypocrite, that I prioritize money over everything else, that I've thrown friends under the bus, that I'm ignorant and poorly informed, and spread misinformation, that I'm arrogant, that I cannot handle criticism, and that I've used people. Um, and let me just say this. And that you never sent me that free shirt, bitch, you fucking piece of shit. Okay, for the record that I am guilty of all of those things. And that sounds fantastic verbally, but as I've clearly demonstrated in this video, <sighs> he hasn't actually corrected any of those problems. In fact, he's gotten ex- You talked about audience capture and then immediately showed us an instance of him not appealing to audience capture. You kind of flarked this up. Exponentially worse. Is it worth it to become a YouTuber? Probably not. Like I got extraordinarily lucky. If you could be a successful YouTuber, sure. Like I do very well financially. But if you can't, um, if you can't, and like you know it's not i mean if you it's not bad it depends on what you do i guess i don't know uh it's, it exists <laughs> and almost all of oh, those wait, things and it's been almost two i mean i enjoy it a lot it's a very easy job i'm just saying it can be difficult to get to that point you know thousand days since then w words are seriously win. like you can have all the wisdom and say all the right things but it's it, it's it will go out one ear and out the other. It, yeah. it is, it nice. is wait. One out goes out one ear and out the other, baby. I'm actually fucking shitting and farting. It, is no, it means nothing in the face of actually living an example. Though realistically, there's only two ways this goes down. On one hand, Ethan can continue churning out quantity over quality content that clearly- He's still making money. Like, you know, you can criticize all you want, but- he lacks the spark, charisma, or really anything reminiscent of his early days on the platform, and he'll continue to expose himself for the absolute fraud that he is, which could potentially see his viewership dwindling due to the repetitiveness of the content and its lack of substance, value, and quality. Or, on the other hand, it's not like the alternative is much brighter. Stepping away or significantly changing his content would mean confronting the very fraudulent identity that he's carefully crafted and built online over the past few years. He can finally drop the act, and his true self might even show itself again. Whatever that true self even is at this point. It's a choice between continuing with a formula that will at one point or another lose steam aside from the core fan base, or venturing into the unknown and risking everything he's built. It's a lose-lose. He got himself into the worst situation through pure ego, and I'm just telling you, everyone's gonna hate his guts with peace and love. Also, I'm pretty sure he's actually just a really shitty guy, and as more people turn on him, there's gonna be lots of, like, hit pieces that are gonna come out, ex-significant others, uh... <laughs> It is a little ironic, but sure. Ex-employees, shady business dealings, uh, it's all going to come out as people dislike him more and more, especially the conservatives. And I'm just telling you, man. Who is he this, talking about here? This is it. This is the end of, of a good guy, Ethan Klein. Because no matter what in the world he does or says, he's put himself in a position where he has to continue to go live four days a week for four hours a day. And because he's so fake and Isn't that 16 hours? I thought it was three days a week, like three hours a day. So hateful, he's just gonna continue to expose himself more than I or anyone else ever could. You can't fake it, you can't fake anything because the camera catches every lie. Which is why I tell my clients, it is better to be yourself than pretend to be something you're not. You see, in this beautiful world that we happen to live in, there are good guys and there are bad guys. Obviously, it's not always black and white, and most people That's racist. Will fall into the gray. However, given the amount of evidence in this case scenario, I think it's more than fair to say that Ethan falls into the bad guy category. But Ethan is I don't think he's a bad guy. <laughs> okay 
isn't your typical bad guy. Ethan He's just a flawed individual like me. I don't know, like everyone else. Maybe I'm projecting too hard, but... ...is the bad guy who acts like the good guy, the wolf in sheep's clothing. And that, my friend, is the most dangerous type of individual in this world. That's the type of man that will steal, cheat, and lie his oh way to God. the top. And once he's there, he'll do and say just about anything to stay. Oh Manipulating my. narratives, exploiting vulnerabilities, lying on video, making fun of the dead, weaponizing childhood trauma. It's all nothing but evil. Weaponizing childhood trauma? What the hell does that mean? Under the guise of virtue. So, although I typically approach criticism with a mindset of empathy, this is the exception. I hate this bastard. Not even. Far more than a little bit. He is the worst human being in <laughs> I'm reading a comment and somebody's like, I'm really happy you stopped saying, let's get this party started. <laughs> because <laughs> it annoyed him and he's like i i think uh he's like i thought it was like his desperation to, to do a catchphrase just to be clear i don't need a catchphrase i have incredible okay you guys tell me what my catchphrases are and then i start saying them more i say let's get this party started because i'm just trying to get let's get this party started like let's start it up baby let's just get going it's not a catchphrase it's just something i say i am 34 years old and i talk like a 34 year old like i'm an old man i say cringe shit let's get this party started baby Thank you so much for the five dollars from Killstorm SH. Papa, I didn't see an episode of Kick or Keep with you and Boogie on the same panel. I, I bet he knows who you are and would be terrified. He knows who I am. I don't think he'd be terrified. I'm trying to get me on that podcast. I have no interest. My conversation with Boogie would never be constructive. Um, I don't have a desire to what talk to this person and berate him for a half an hour or an hour. That would because that's what would happen. I don't like him. I think that he's a fundamentally very bad and manipulative person that has every opportunity to change and he refuses to do so. He manipulates his friends. He manipulates people, uh, his relationships. He, he, manipulates, he manipulates all of his relationships. He refuses to just work more by working more by like, that's all he would have to do. He, I think he's a shitty person and like he knows it. He knows that he can stream one hour a day and make it substantially more than he's making now by doing some form of something. Uh, that guy Nux gave him content ideas to do. He refuses to do it. He refuses to do anything at all he's lazy and he knows it and he wants to be lazy he wants to fail and he wants to pretend that he's going to take his own life um so that he can guilt you into helping him without him explicitly saying i want to uh, i need help he wants you to like offer it to him he's a shitty person and like there's not he knows that he's shit there's nothing constructive about it so the only thing that would happen was what like what are we gonna what's gonna change he's gonna continue his pattern of behavior of like you know playing like of acting like a fucking fool and pathetic I don't like there's nothing constructive about talking to him about anything. He's a loser. Um and like I'm not like you know, and anybody who might like the way that I talk to him or about him uh in a one-on-one -on -one setting that would follow me, I don't think would be a productive follow cuz that's not like the kind of person I am. I think that I'm reasonably empathetic. But when it comes to Boogie, I have no patience left and like just do it already. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's where I'm at. So it's just like, that's where I'm at, man. Like, so it's not, it's a, the, the way I feel about him is generally unique to other people. Right? Um, what's, what's the, what's the, what's constructive about it? What is, what's, con what's constructive about it? You know, he thrives on attention and like, you know, obviously doing videos about him gives him attention, but like, at the end of the day, it's just like we probably should just stop giving him attention. I don't know. He's just a gross person. He's like legitimately there's nothing redeem there's and there's nobody on um YouTube that I've ever interacted with that I would say has no redeemable qualities. Even people I don't like. I can go. I understand why this I I, I get this person. I, this person has a redeemable quality. Boogie's the only person I've ever seen with no redeemable qualities. He's a parasite. He's just a nasty, shitty person, and as mean as you think I am, he's meaner because he takes advantage and sucks the soul out of people around him. Like that's that's where we're at, right? So what what what's the you know what's the productivity? You know, that's where I'm. That's kind of where I'm at. That's true, Myron. Too, you're right. You're right. Myron, you're right. You're right. Myron, too. Damn, I'm bald as hell. I shouldn't have done that rant looking bald. I forgot that I was bald today. All right. Somebody edit the hat on. <laughs> Fuck. I look like an asshole. 
Uh, yeah, let's just continue. You will ever meet. You get within a mile of his presence. Wrap your arms around yourself Jerk to protect your soul. Oh my God. He is Cain. As I've always said, when that someone so shows scary. you who they are, you should believe- That was so scary what he said. That's scary. The black on the screen scared the shit out of me. I'm just kidding. Believe them. And Ethan has been exposing himself for who he truly is behind the facade since 2016. The signs have always been there, and people still gave him the benefit of the doubt. And I think that he's been given a pretty fair shake in the grand scheme of things. I appreciate that, Killstorm. Here you go. There's your parasocial kiss, guys. Now buy my merch. I'm just kidding, I don't have any. People have certainly afforded him much more charitability than he gave to people like Jake Paul or any of the other creators who he lambasted back in the day on his own channel. Even today, the most common way I see people refer to him is just as a hypocrite. Ethan isn't just a hypocrite. <sighs> that is a very charitable understatement. Hypocrisy. 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 Hypocrisy doesn't even describe what you are. He is a hypocrite. He's a liar. He's a scammer. And he's ugly as shit. He's racist. He's homophobic. Wait, he's what? a grifter. And most importantly, he's certainly not any better than any of the people he criticizes or tries to cancel. What He's much better than Leafy and Pearl. I'll say that. Pretty, um, it's, yeah. Whether it's Leafy, Colleen Ballinger, David Dobrik, um, Keem. It's hard to be worse than Keem's heart. Vosh. He hard to be worse than Vosh. He is just as bad, if not worse, than all those people. So wow, what I'm saying is crazy. that if you look at the totality of his behavior, like I obviously have, the man is absolutely <laughs> indefensible. Listen, I, I've never been on this side of an argument where I'm so clearly right. And it's not even debatable. Okay. <laughs> like, it's, it's actually quite amazing to me to be in this <laughs> position. It's to it's just come out here with no humility <laughs> and say, I'm fucking right and you are wrong. wrong. Same, dude. I'm never wrong. Obviously, hindsight is 2020. Nobody could have predicted what's happened to Ethan over the past few years and how bad it's truly gone. But when I look at the way he acts now and how comfortable he is outright lying about things which are verifiably false on video, it does make me question whether or not Ethan was ever even that cool, rational guy that he originally presented himself as on the, the H3H3 H3 Productions channel. Man. Or was it just a carefully curated facade to fit in with the times? The truth is, as always, yours silver? to decide. One thing's for certain, the so flame brutal. that used to drive what made bronze. the original H3H3 content content so special has now been completely extinguished by what Ethan has become. Ethan, if you're watching this, I just have one last message for you. Love yourself. That's all I gotta say. If you look in the mirror and hate yourself, love yourself. Yes, you should love yourself now. Yes, you should. Love yourself because you're the only person you're stuck with for the rest of your life. So why not, right? If you like this video, I know you'll love this one about Ethan's friend, iDubs. He's had one of the worst downfalls in all of YouTube history, just like Ethan. Or maybe this one about Sniper Wolf on the screen right now. If you like the video, like it. If you dislike it, dislike it. If you want to support the channel, you can become a member. And aside from that, I hope you all have a wonderful day. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a hiss in the comments. Thank you. Yes, very good. Yeah, this video sucked, man. I'm just going to be honest with you. It was just fucking terrible dog shit. <laughs> I guess it could have been worse, though.